The Bloodline System. Chapter 979, Acquiring the Vest. Chapter 979, Acquiring the Vest. Endrick breathed in and out profusely as he paused for a bit. According to my calculations, moving another step forward should cause another of these creatures to swoop down from above and try to eat me. Endrick analyzed internally. They get larger with every advancement. I might not be able to overcome this one with the amount of energy I would have to spend to move forward and block it at the same time. At this point Endrick had decided. Moving forward would be more detrimental than rewarding so he paused at his current position. His eyes lit up with a silver and bluish glow as he stretched his hand forward. Zwi, Zwi, Zwi. Invisible figures with the exact body structure with that of Endrick. Phased out of his body and speedily began charging forward. There were about seven of them and they were all unaffected by the weird energy the vest was discharging. However it looked like they couldn't escape the senses of the creature swimming in the body of water in the skies. Fui, fui, fui. Multiple skyscraper-sized creatures dived down from above with wide-opened mouths full of sharp teeth each the size of a truck. They were all aiming for the seven invisible space clones. Endrick had just sent forth. Since these clones were not affected by the discharge of energy, they were still able to move fast and about three of them outran some of the creatures. The other got devoured in an instant before the creatures moved back upwards. The others that were still dashing forward were being chased by other creatures but the distance between them and the vest was only about a hundred feet so they managed to make it. The instant the first one to arrive before the vest jumped to grab it. The vest discharged a greenish energy that blasted across the vicinity. Bang. The first clone got hit and disappeared instantly while one of the other two hid behind the other one who ended up taking the rest of the blast damage. Endrick had already stretched his hand in front of him so the moment the outburst of energy reached his side. It got blocked by his telekinetic barrier. Now only one was left out of all the clones and this particular one was commanded to grab the vest at this moment. At the same instant the clone leapt to grab the vest floating in mid-air. Another gigantic creature was was descending with immense speed. Now it was a battle of who would get to the vest first. Fortunately. The space clone hand made contact with the small energy barrier surrounding the vest before the creature got to it. Endrick sent some energy forth. Causing the clone palm to phase through the barrier surrounding the vest upon contact. Just as it made contact with the vest. The creature arrived downwards and swallowed the entire vicinity up. Original the vest would be unaffected by this and would still remain in the same spot despite the creature haven swallowed the entire vicinity up but this time when it began to ascend the vest was nowhere to be found along with Endrick's clone. Gildian City. Within an enshrouded layer of purplish fog two figures could be seen standing in a particular area. This area had lots of holes on the ground all shaped in a rectangular format. This area was covering to less than a thousand feet of space and all these holes looked freshly dug out with more than ten thousand of them here. This explained things. Red Shadow voiced out as he stared at the holes. They have been infecting corpses. Gradier Xanatus said with a look of understanding. The high numbers they had been facing all these time were all dead infected that had somehow risen from the grave due to the ashy infection. One would have been able to tell that these were initially corpses but in this age, Corpses could be well preserved to the point they wouldn't even look dead. They would just look like they were asleep. If these infected had looked rotten with very bad flesh and hollow eyes one would have known they were initially corpses but that was not the case since corpses were now well preserved. The only similarity between infected and corpses was their ashy looking skin but one could not attribute that to corpses since even living people that had been infected would look that way. The numbers of people who died in Gildian City on that fateful day were numbers in tens of millions. Gradier Xanatus said with a contemplative look. And so far we've only dealt with around 100,000 of them. The number of people living in Luchin City is not even up to half of the people that have died in Gildian City. Red Shadow voiced out as well as both of them stared at each other. They're looking to revive all the dead with the ashy infection. The numbers will be more than enough to overrun Luchin City and overpower the officers on the wall. Gradier Xanatus said with a low tone. That's if they have not already revived them. Red Shadow voiced out. They keep sending thousands in batches like they want to keep us preoccupied with those ones. 
they haven't revived them all yet we have to head to every single cemetery within Gildian City and find the culprits before they achieve their goals. Gradier Xanatus stated. The GPS and communication devices don't work this deep in the city. How do we find the location of the cemeteries? Red Shadow asked. Gradier Xanatus didn't answer. Instead he moved towards a particular footstep on the ground. You also have a traceback ability right? He inquired. Chapter 980, Handing the Cure Over. Author's Note, Unedited Chapters. Yes. They must believe we're coming with reinforcements. The pilot answered with a slightly disturbed tone as the aircraft began to lower. Well. I am the reinforcement. Gustav said internally as he stared at the holographic display of the city view from above. Most of the streets were empty but there was a certain part in the city that was swarming with people trying evacuate. The aircraft landed in a particular part of the city where the MBO officers were being deployed. Upon getting off, the officers around noticed that only Gustav was getting off the aircraft. It's just a single person. One of them voiced with a tone of confusion. We requested for more reinforcements. How could only one person be sent? Another one voiced out from the side. Who is even the person that? While another one was voicing out they spotted Gustav's face properly. Officer Crimson. They all voiced with surprised tones as they spotted him. Gustav didn't even act like he heard all of their complaints earlier and just walked towards the entrance of the building the officers had been getting deployed from. Did the higher-ups send him here? This was the thought on their minds as they followed after Gustav. The scientists on this case. Where are they? Gustav asked. One of them responded and led the way. Minutes later Gustav was standing in a small laboratory room that looked like it was created in limited timing. So you're saying this is a cure for the normal ashy infection? A middle-aged looking woman with white scaly face held onto the sample Gustav handed to her with a look of disbelief. Yeah. It's left to you guys to use this and create a new cure that would work against these new psycho-infected. Gustav responded. How do we know it's authentic? We have to test it out first. She voiced with a doubtful tone. You can do that if there is a normal infected around here. Gustav stated. There is none. We'll have to bring this back to the underwater research facility and test it properly to be sure it can be cleared for human use first. She said while placing the sample on the laboratory table. Sure if you have enough time for that. From what I've heard. The number of infected keeps increasing by the minute and who knows when the entire city would be overrun. Gustav said while turning around to leave. You can foolishly decide to take so much time to clarify its authenticity or you can trust someone who has saved the world before and start working on another cure as soon as you can. Gustav began walking away at this point. The eyebrows of the scientist in charge furrowed after she heard this. A look of hesitance could be seen on her face. The choice is yours. Gustav's voice trailed off as he got out. The lead scientist stood in place for a few minutes unsure of what to do while the other scientists around stared at her waiting for her decision. We will begin working on making a cure that will affect the bloodshot infected right away. She voiced out as her face lit up with a look of decisiveness. Gustav arrived outside the building and towards the left he could see a massive gate where lots of citizens were standing in front of. This was several hundred feet towards the left and these citizens were looking to leave the city but things were quite difficult. Even those who had been allowed beyond the gated were still there waiting. Evacuation was an almost impossible task due to the sensitivity of the situation. Other cities were not willing to open their borders to people from the city due to the infection scare. So far everyone knew the ashy infection could be passed from just contact alone. Gustav could count no less than a hundred thousand people waiting around to get evacuated and so far not even a single aircraft had left here unless it was from the MBO. Aircrafts had mostly been coming in. Carrying troops with them and medical supplies. There was also a massive citadel where people had also gathered in which was said to be impenetrable for those who were unsure of if the MBO could protect the borders from being infiltrated by the infected. This citadel was created especially for emergency situations and would sink underground if the situation got out of hand to protect people better. However the citadel was completely filled and mostly important people were allowed in. 
those who were unable to get in before it filled up were trying their best to get evacuated which was also an impossible task currently. That wall is strong. Gustav's eyes were currently gleaming with a red and golden color as he stared at the walls surrounding the city. He already knew it was created by a mixed blood but then he noticed the sturdiness was very close to that of the iro silk. However it was better structured since it was hard to use the iro silk to form a straight wall. It would always be spiky and people would not be able to stand on it like this. The city also had a barrier surrounding it within the walls so the security protocols put in place was really top notch. Officers standing on the walls could not even get back into the city unless they broke through the barrier or asked for permission for a part of the veil to be lifted. Officer Crimson are you joining them at the top of the wall? An officer suddenly voiced out from the side. I just might. Gustav responded. Please we need your assistance. The officers could use as much help as they can get. The officer voiced out. Sure. Not a problem. Gustav nodded slightly as he stated. Before I do that. Has anyone seen Gradier Xanatus? Gustav asked. Major Gradier Xanatus has left the protection of the walls in our hands till he gets back. The officer responded. Gustav's face shone with a bit of confusion as he heard that. Get back from where? Gustav inquired. Chapter 981, Protecting Luchin City. The officer then went on to explain everything that had happened here within the last few days that were explained to him by the officer at the counter within the MBO tower. Gustav already knew about the whole thing being a conspiracy and how they found one of the people who was most likely responsible who ended up committing suicide to cover up the deeds. It was also known that there are others involved who are most likely infected people and controlling them as well. What Gustav had no idea about was the situation of Gradier Xanatus and Red Shadow who had both jumped off the walls and headed towards Gildian City. Gustav was a bit surprised that they would infiltrate the city on legs which meant they would have to go through thousands of infected. This way was risky since they could get infected themselves. Oh so they also wanted to cut down the numbers of the infected in the process. Gustav figured out their motive. While they could not use any transport to get into the city due to its contagious state, they could still get a jet that could travel very high above the decimated city and drop from above. If they had done this they wouldn't have been able to cut down on the numbers of infected. Which direction did they head in? Gustav asked. The West Well area. The officer replied. Gustav turned to face the west at this point as his eyes zoomed in on the wall that was hundreds of miles away. Lightning Blitz has been activated. Thirds. Gustav streaked across the air like a lightning bolt appeared over a hundred miles away from his intially position. He activated the ability two more times and in just two seconds. He arrived atop the west side of the wall. The officer who was standing at his initial position had a look of awe after Gustav had disappeared from this place. He had expected they would use a hover car to get there but he just got a call on the communication channel that someone had just arrived on the west side of the wall. With the vehicle it would still take them around 5 minutes to get there but Gustav had gotten there in only 2 seconds. Officer Crimson. The officers who were initially alerted when a light bolt suddenly turned into someone now became calm when they saw that it was Gustav. The barrier surrounding the city could be left easily but getting back in was the problem. Now that Gustav was outside the barrier, he could forget about going back in the meantime. On Gustav's sides, multiple officers could be seen standing in place as their eyes were focused on the ground ahead. They're not attacking at the moment. He muttered underneath his breath. We just finished dealing with a set an hour ago and even lost some of our men. One of the officers said to Gustav while pointing at some dents on the wall. Any patterns? Gustav asked. Besides the fact that they sometimes come in hordes every one to two or three hours sometimes. I don't see any. The officer responded. That in itself is a pattern. Gustav muttered. And they all vary in abilities with some being sturdier than others. The officer began explaining again. Tell me something I don't already know. Gustav said internally. They didn't really have any new information for him since Gustav already knew these things. What he wanted to know now was where all these infected were coming from. God eyes has been activated. Gustav's eyes zoomed across the forestry region beyond the wall. 
scaling past hundreds and thousands of destroyed infected corpses scattered across the place. You guys didn't find a way to disintegrate the corpses. Gustav voiced out with a tone of urgency he looked across the place with god eyes. The amount of ashy corpses he had seen shook him a little. No officer crimson. The bodies no longer move after receiving a specific amount of damage. The officer beside him voiced out. You fools. Gustav stated causing the officer to be taken aback. Unless their bodies are completely destroyed they will always come back. The only reason the corpses might not have regained life at the moment must be because the culprits want you guys to lose your guards. They will most likely control them to regain life based on the time that favors whatever they're plotting. Gustav voiced out lengthily. The others in the vicinity had awestruck expressions as they stared the corpses scattered all over down below. Gustav felt the culprits must be planning to take them by surprise and bring these ones back to life at the same moment they sent another massive horde here. Gustav's eyes suddenly widened in realization as he thought of something. Corpses. He muttered underneath his breath. Officer Crimson. The officers by the side called out his name with a tone of urgency but Gustav was currently lost in his own state of realization. They're making use of the corpses in Gildian City. They're infecting corpses. Gustav's expression was that of realization as he figured this out. Officer Crimson. One of the officers called out again. Causing Gustav to be pulled out of his reverie. Gustav could feel the trembling of the wall at this point and looked up ahead. God eyes has been activated. His sight phased past the trees and grasses as he spotted another horde of infected headed towards the wall. This time they seemed to be coming from every direction. Grr. The corpses that had been taken down initially began to vibrate as well. The ones on the wall who were able to spot this realized that Gustav was accurate with his words earlier. As Gustav retracted his vision he voiced out. There's no less than 200,000 of them heading this way. Their eyes all widened in shock as they heard that. 200,000. Are you sure you're not mistaken? We're only around 10,000 on this wall. Voices of panic could he heard all around. Chapter 982. Gustav takes command. Author's note. Unedited chapters. 200,000. Are you sure you're not mistaken? We're only around 10,000 on this wall. Voices of panic could he heard all around. Gustav only voiced it out low but it had already spread across the wall quickly from the others who were exclaiming in shock. At the same moment Gustav leapt into the air with his hands outstretched. A milky colored glow appeared on his arm as he stretched them out. Thoom, thoom, thoom. Balls of milky colored light shot out across the place and landed on the ground up ahead. The instant they landed on the ground, they expanded intensely disintegrating the surroundings and everything they touched. The corpses that were about to rise were disintegrated as these balls of light expanded and even got rid of the trees and vegetation across a radius of 3,000 feet. The officers who were standing on the wall were hyped up by this sudden attack of Gustav that had just practically incinerated the environment. Focus on destroying them completely and leaving no body parts left. Gustav yelled out as wings sprouted out from his back. The others on the walls let out a battle cry as attacks began to fly forward. Those who had fire-based abilities or practically any bloodlines with abilities similar to disintegration began working on making sure the beaten down corpses of the infected were gotten rid of. They had began sending attacks out before the infected even arrived hundreds of feet before the wall. Gustav flew forward as a reddish-hilted katana with electrifying arcs swimming around it appeared in his grasp. The infected were still rushing forward with speed and some were now around 500 feet away from the walls. Gustav raised the katana as he arrived at a particular spot in the air and swung downwards with intensity. Burr. A massive red arc traveled downwards with intensity and left a gigantic gash in the ground upon making contact. The ground trembled intensely as cracks appeared all over the ground began sinking in even more. A deep gash-like pit had been left in the ground from this attack. That covered a distance of more than 4,000 feet. This pit created from Gustav's attack was at least 150 feet deep and it had surrounded this part of the wall. Around 500 feet ahead. The infected who were rushing forward without thinking began to fall into the pit Gustav's attack had created. Aim your attacks towards the pit. Gustav yelled out. 
The officers on the walls let out a battle cry again in response as they began firing attacks at the pit ahead. Gustav didn't stop there. He flew towards the west side and performed the same action again. Leaving very wide gash-like pits on the ground several hundred feet before the wall. He yelled for the officers to aim their attacks there as the infected began to fall in. This slowed the infected down by a whole lot as the ones with normal human size fell in. While they kept falling in. Numerous attacks ranging from fireballs to bluish energy balls. To lightning bolts to dark energy strikes. Landed in the hole making all sorts of explosions to ring out. Some of the other infected who had mutated to the point where they were even more massive than a tree were able to scale over. Swivey. A massive ash-colored hand suddenly phased past Gustav's left as he moved to the side to dodge in mid-air. Gustav slashed the katana upwards in response causing the immensely long arm to get cleaved in two. It let out a toxic ashy-colored gas at the area Gustav cut off. Causing him to dive upwards with speed. Numerous more hands were flying upwards from below causing Gustav to dodge repeatedly as he tried to escape the toxins. Using energy discharge would be good in this situation but it would affect the wall too. I can only use attacks that don't cover a large radius. Gustav thought internally as he peeked downwards. He spotted the infected which had no less than 27 arms protruding from his body. He flipped repeatedly in the air as he dodged more of the arms before diving downwards with speed. Gustav swung his katana towards the right as he descended to a point. We. Another reddish arch slashed forward. Ripping the tree-sized infected in two and even destroying tens of infected behind. Greenish balls of toxin began flying towards Gustav before he could dash upwards again. Gravitational displacement has been activated. Gustav suddenly stretched his left hand towards the side. Causing the green balls of toxin to start flying back in the direction it came from. It blasted through multiple infected as it arrived back in the mouth of the infected who spat it out. Boom. The head of the infected got blasted to pieces. Bang. Gustav landed on the ground and looked forward. The entire vicinity was crowded with infected to the point that he couldn't even see spaces in between them as they hurried forward with bloodshot eyes. Bang. Boom. 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 Explosions rang out across the place as the attacks from the officers atop the walls kept landing and destroying hundreds of infected. However even with the number of infected they were destroying by the second. It still looked as if the swarm of infected were unaffected. The sheer numbers that were left made it look like their efforts were in vain. Gustav hand tightened around the katana as blood flowed down his right hand. Might be the best time to make use of that temporary energy doubling card. Gustav said internally. The system wasted no time in in using one of the cards Gustav had gotten as a reward according to his will. A 224 hours energy boost card has been activated. Host energy will be two times as high for the next 24 hours. I'll have to keep the katana back in my storage device after this attack. Chapter 983, Clearing a Horde. Power boost has been activated. 500 EP. Gustav moved the katana to the side as he prepared to swing it. His muscles expanded intensely that it even showed through his uniform. As the infected closed in. Gustav finally swung sideways with intensity. Fuige. A gigantic reddish arc carrying tremendous energy suddenly blasted forth as the ground trembled violently from the sudden outburst. Boom. The ground split open in Gustav's position as the residue energy from the attacks affected the grounds in every area surrounding him including behind. The reddish arc was so gigantic it had stretched out to cover no less than half of the area surrounding the walls. Even before making contact. Some of the infected were already getting ripped to shreds by the intense energy it generated. The officers on the walls watched from above with their jaws loosened as they saw the intense destructiveness the attack was wreaking on the surroundings. In just an instant. Over 10,000 infected were cleared before the arc thinned out and disappeared. The entire area had been turned into a pitfall as the ground caved in from the attack despite Gustav's attack not aimed at it. Currently Gustav was floating in the air due to the land caving in from his attack. Gustav's arms had exploded but he managed to keep the katana back in his storage device before they fell into the pit that had been created. He was flying armless as he stared at the destroyed surroundings. 
only dark and caved in ground could be spotted for as far as the eyes could see. He had practically cleared the first horde of infected who were way ahead of the others. How is he so powerful? I'm a echo rank but even I can't do that. I can't even spot any of the infected right now. The officers on the walls behind all had looks of astonishment as they looked downwards. There were only a few kilo ranked officers on the walls and they were the ones who were managing to destroy 50 of these normal looking infected with every attack. However the more powerful infected were difficult to take down with a single attack sometimes especially when they were also aiming at the wall with their own attacks. Some MBO officers had already been been hit by attacks which proved just how dangerous those ones were. The southern side of the wall was still being attacked by the infected who had branched to that side but the ones in the western side had practically been completely cleared for now. Go assist those on the southern side. I'll take care of this place myself. Gustav voiced out as he flew upwards to have a better view of the environment. The MBO officers on this side of the wall who were no less than 2500 began to move towards the south side after hearing what Gustav had said. There was no doubt he could hold his own in the meantime since currently there were no infected in sight. The ones on the south side were having it difficult because the numbers had tilted after some of the infected moved towards that side when they sensed the outburst of energy. On the southern side of the wall Gustav had also created a pit in front but it had been filled up already. Some MBO officers who Kolf fly could already be seen in the dark sky raining down attacks on the infected that caused the entire vicinity to quake. Gustav breathed in as he made use of God eyes to peer forward. The rest of the horde behind were already closing in on the wall again. There were no more trees or vegetation in the vicinity as everything had been destroyed from the initial attack. Lightning blitz has been activated. Gustav suddenly disappeared as he turned into a streak of lightning and reappeared hundred miles away instantly. The infected who was charging forward had not expected to suddenly see someone appeared before him but then he noticed Gustav was armless and lunged forward. A pair of arms suddenly pushed out from Gustav's entirely empty shoulders as he reached out and grabbed hold of the infected head. Time to go back to the land of the dead. He muttered as he squeezed. Bang. The head of the infected bursted open like a watermelon that was smashed with a sledgehammer. Gustav had found himself in the midst of the infected again and all of them were lunging for him. Gravitational displacement has been activated. Energy discharge has been activated. An outburst of reddish energy suddenly blasted out from his being. Boom. Gildian city. How do they keep evading us? Red Shadow asked as he looked around the vicinity only to see holes all over the place. If we had a way of pinpointing all the locations of cemetery within Gildian City it would make things a whole lot easier. Gradier Xanatus voiced out as he inspected the place. Now we're only retracing their steps and it's making us slower in catching them. Red Shadow voiced with a sigh. They had been on this for up to a day now and they had no idea about the situation of Luchin City since they couldn't communicate back to them. Due to what they had found out recently they knew Luchin City was in real trouble. If the culprits were gatekeeping some of the infected just so they could gather them in large numbers and send them all at the same time. Luchin City would definitely fall due to the high number of corpses. We need to find a way to pinpoint all of the scene. Gradier Xanatus suddenly paused as he sensed something. Did you hear that too or it's just me? He said with a low tone. I heard it as well. Red Shadow responded with his eyes depicting confusion. That voice. Gradier Xanatus muttered as he stared at Red Shadow. It's the kid. Both of them stated at the same time. Chapter 984, It's the kid. That voice. Gradier Xanatus muttered as he stared at Red Shadow. It's the kid. Both of them stated at the same time. They both had looks of confusion and disbelief mixed on their faces. They were not hearing the voice from their ears. Instead they were hearing it within their minds. Gradier Xanatus. Red Shadow can you hear me? Gustav. Is that you? Red Shadow asked internally. Yeah. How are you doing this kid? Gradier Xanatus questioned within his mind as well. It turned out a kind of mind link had been created where Red Shadow and Gradier Xanatus could hear each other and converse with Gustav as well. I'm currently at the borders of Luchin City. Battling the hordes of infected. You came here. 
Red Shadow responded with a tone of surprise since he recalled Gustav stating he was busy with something. Yes I came to help out. I had to stay because the numbers increased by a whole lot and it's getting difficult for the officers deployed here. Both of them had looks of urgency as they heard that. It turned out things had gotten worse after they had left just like they assumed it would. I figured something out. The infected beings sent here are corpses from the cemeteries in Gildian City. Gustav voiced internally. We know about that already. Gradier Xanatus said in response. We're currently trying to retrace their steps so we can find them before they revive every single corpse here. Red Shadow explained. It's proving difficult because we can't navigate the way to the cemeteries ourselves without a GPS. With the bad visuals and toxic energy in the air. Gradier Xanatus also added. So you guys just need a way to pinpoint the locations of every cemetery within Gilladian City right? Gustav asked. IIT would make things a whole lot easier if there was a way we could do that. Trying to retrace their steps will take more time and who knows. We might already be too late before we find them. Gradier Xanatus replied. Come all right. Wait to get the signals. What signals? Gradier Xanatus questioned internally but this time there was no response. Red Shadow noticed they couldn't communicate with one another in their minds anymore which meant the link had been disconnected. How did the kid even do that? Luchin City is at least 600 miles away from our position. Gradier Xanatus voiced out with a confused expression. Red Shadow couldn't answer this since he was also unaware of how Gustav pulled such a feat. He asked us to hold on so I guess he's about to try something again. Red Shadow stated. Both of them knew very well that Gustav never failed to amaze them so they decided to hold on for a bit to see what he was about to pull off again. Back in Luchin City. Gustav had just landed from the sky again and sent rumbling waves across thousands of feet. Destroying the vicinity. Hundreds of infected were ripped apart with body parts flying in every direction as he moved forward. Atomic disintegration has been activated. Purification. Gustav voiced out as he stretched his hand forward causing milky light to shoot out. Every body part in the vicinity was disintegrated in a couple of seconds and Gustav peered forward once more while activating God Eyes. They're still more than 10 minutes away. The faster ones will arrive within half the time. Gustav voiced as he retracted his sight. We. He leapt into the air as wings sprouted out of his back. I need to be quick with this. He voiced as he stared in the direction of Gildian City. Far ahead he could see the purplish fog that enshrouded the city. You'll need to be very high in order for any computerized to work since it's Gildian City. The system voiced in his mind. How high? Gustav asked. Almost if not space level high. The system replied. Gustav subconsciously sucked in breath as he heard this. He looked upwards and suddenly blasted further into the skies. Boom. A sonic boom was created as he headed upwards speedily. The winds pushed Gustav's hairs to the back as they swimmed from across his sides from the intensity. While Gustav was flying high, he was also moving forward so he would be directly above Gildian City when he reached his desired height. High enough. Gustav asked internally as he kept flying upwards. Still need about a hundred miles or so. The system responded. The instant Gustav heard this response he activated an ability. Lightning Blitz has been activated. His body turned into a streak of lightning as he ascended further in the sky. Cutting across a hundred miles in an instant. The instant Gustav reappeared high in the sky. He paused his ascent. Wow. Gustav exclaimed as he felt the laws of gravity began to affect him. He was at a point in the sky where he knew misbalance could cause him to start floating into outer space uncontrollably. The wings on his back were not functioning properly at this height so he activated hover to balance himself. It was currently nightfall in this part of the world but Gustav could faintly spot the sunlight on the other side of Earth at this height. He could see the curvature of Earth as well which was blocking the sunlight at the edge while the moonlight was still further upwards from his direction. This wasn't the time to admire space since he was here for an important reason. A device similar to a tab appeared in Gustav's hand displaying a map and pinpointing several spots. Gustav stared at it as he noted these places that were pointed out. He was currently floating far above Gildian City staring at the places on the maps that had been pointed out by the device. 
initially Gustav had spoken to Red Shadow and Great Ear Xanatus through mental manipulation. He knew they were somewhere within Gildian City but of course no one would have an idea of where they were precisely within the city. Chapter 985, Helping Out From Space. Even if anyone knew of their precise location, Gustav couldn't head to them because he had to join the other officers in protecting the city. He just needed to talk to them so he could pass on the information he knew about the corpses. He had no idea if they were aware or not but he knew it was worth the try since this would potentially save them a lot of time if they didn't already know. He had made use of one of the temporary bloodline enhancement cards he got as a reward from the system for finishing the one-year quest. After using it on the mental manipulation bloodline, he was able to spread the range of his mental perception. He just needed to keep speaking in the minds of every life he encountered while spreading out his mental perception and based on the response he would know if the mind belonged to the people he was looking for. Fortunately he found them and was able to pass across his message which all led to this moment. He wanted to help them in pinpointing the locations of the cemeteries within Gildian City. It was impossible to use computerized devices in Gildian City so he had to come all the way up here just so he could use one to mark out the cemeteries on the map. Gustav proceeded to keep the tab that pinpointed these locations and activated God Eyes. God Eyes has been activated. His sight zoomed down with speed as he locked in on one of the cemeteries. This was the precise location where Great Ear Xantus and Red Shadow were situated. A spherical-shaped purplish orb suddenly appeared out of nowhere in front of him. The orb which was gleaming with bright lights and reddish lightning-like arcs swimming around it suddenly began to descend from the sky with speed. Fu is. It dropped at an insanely fast speed. Heading in the same direction Gustav had his eyes on. Despite the purplish fog that enshrouded the city, Gustav's sight was still extremely clear from this height while he made use of God eyes. It's been almost two minutes now. We really don't have time to waste. Red Shadow said with a tone of impatience. Yeah but it's Gustav. He's definitely up to something and I'm sure we'll be seeing in a few. Great Ear Xanatus stated in response. Immediately after Great Ear Xanatus finished saying that a head-sized glowing orb suddenly fell from the sky. It took them by surprise but in the next instant it stopped falling before it made contact with the ground. It floated upwards and stopped right in front of Great Ear Xanatus. It paused in mid-air after arriving in front of him. Great Ear Xanatus turned to glance at Red Shadow with a, I told you so look. They thought they would be hearing a voice next or something but instead the orb began moving. Fui. It turned to head in the southwest direction. Causing them to give chase. Gustav who was far above. Was not just leading them to a cemetery but leading them towards the cemetery where he had spotted some people doing shady deeds. He wanted to be quick with this so he could get down back to Luchin City before the next wave of infected arrived there. The orb was moving very quickly and both of them gave chase. They were both very quick so it wasn't a problem even when the orb was moving at a speed of 2000 feet per second. About a minute later. They noticed they were closing in on a particular location and Red Shadow could sense the presence of living creatures. We're here. Red Shadow voiced out as they closed in on a particular area. We have to head forward subtly at this point. They must not see us coming. Great Ear Xanatus also voiced out as he suddenly paused his movement. Botu of them stood behind a particular tree as they stared at an area up ahead which had broken down fences erected around it. The orb had also stopped moving at this point and was about to turn around. Thanks kid. Great Ear Xanatus was unaware of whether Gustav could hear him or not but he still voiced out. The orb turned around at this point and began to speed back towards Luchin city borders. Far up in space. Gustav noticed he had finished playing his part and took his eyes off the area he had sent Great Ear Xanatus and Red Shadow in. He had left them to take care of the rest since he knew just how capable they were. He had to still worry about the side of the city walls he was protecting. Damn it they're close. Gustav suddenly voiced out with a tone of urgency as he spotted the infected heading towards the west side of the wall. At this same moment. Hover has been deactivated. Hover got deactivated after its activation time finished counting down and now it went into cooldown mode. Gustav began to lose his balance in space due to this and quickly activated his flame's death ace mixed breed bloodline. 
sprouting massive batwing from his back. However even with this he was barely able to stabilize himself since being in Earth atmosphere was a lot different than being in space. Gustav knew if he headed down at this point. The infected would get to the wall before he did so he focused intensely at this point even with the bad stability. His orb flew speedily in the direction he wanted and in a manner of seconds it was already tearing through the ranks of infected from behind. Gustav waited for a bit till it arrived at the area he wanted it to before stating in his mind. Detonate. In the west area of Luchin city walls. There were barely any officers standing in this part since Gustav had sent them to assist the others on the south side. However. A dangerous situation was currently brewing as large numbers of infected were heading this way. Chapter 986 Perfect Timing. Author's Note. Unedited Chapters. However. A dangerous situation was currently brewing as large numbers of infected were heading this way. They had closed in on the walls in the west area and the number of MBO officers currently manning this part of the wall were very few. They were already making calls on the communication channel about the impending doom. The other side of the wall was also facing difficulty with the numbers of infected attacking so it had become quite a dangerous situation with barely any officials to spare. Some were already heading towards the west side as quickly as they could as they heard the voices of urgency from the officers there. The officers on the west side were trying their best to keep the infected away from the wall but the ones that had already closed in on the walls were extremely quick and quite sturdy. Even with the others heading towards the west side of the wall it was looking like it might be too late as a few of them were only 10 feet away from getting to the wall. All of a sudden. Boom. A massive explosion rang out from hundreds of feet beyond. Sending destructive shockwaves across the vicinity. The purplish with reddish waves of energy mixed in ripped the creatures in the vicinity to shreds. Even reaching the walls. HHBB. The walls trembled intensely as the residue energy slammed into it. The officers struggled to keep their balance and fortunately no one fell over but they wondered where such destructive attack had come from. Thousands of infected were destroyed in an instant and those who had closed in on the walls had their body parts sprayed all over the walls. About three massive infect had managed to escape the destructiveness of the wave due to their sturdy bodies and began to climb the west wall. The officers there quickly got to work and began sending forth destructive attacks downwards. A whitish shell grew out of one of them, covering his upper body as he climbed up. The attacks kept bouncing off this particular infected as he climbed upwards. The officers gritted their teeth and one of them leaned over the wall with a black cords reaching out of his body. These black cords looked metallic were each very long in length and kept stretching out. Stabbing into the sides of the wall and lifting him. Multiple of them pushed forward. Pinching onto the shell of this infected with the intention of lifting it. Suddenly a part of the shell opened up and the infected climbing up reached out with one of his hands to grab ons of the cords. Before the officer could react in time he was pulled forward and found himself heading towards the mouth of this infected which was wide open. His eyes widened at the sheer strength of this infected which had taken him by surprise. Chomp. His head was cleanly bitten off in the next instant as the infected flung him towards the ground next. The officers atop the walls had not expected the current situation and began hurling down attacks as much as they could but at the same time they were holding back so as not to damage the wall. They were all standing on the wall afterwards. Since they were focusing on this one. Two other infected were climbing up with ease. The officers who sent attacks towards the others were barely able to hit them due to their speed. The sturdy one suddenly leapt upwards with speed crossing over 1,000 feet across the wall in an instant. The officer's eyes widened as they spotted the infected above the wall, falling from the air towards their standpoint. At this same instant, a loud ripping sound reverberated across the air. It sounded like the sky was being ripped open. These. One of the officers who hadn't reacted in time was about to get his neck bitten by the 13 feet tall infected that had suddenly leapt across the wall. However a streak of lightning suddenly appeared in front of him and transformed into a young man with dirty blonde hair. Get lost. His thunderous voice rang out as his right hand which was tightened in a fist shot forward with intensity. Bang. Shockwaves spread across the place as a might punch slammed into the side of this infected face. Fweeish. The force of the punch sent him hurling back in the direction he leapt from. 
At the same instant Gustav did this. He leapt forward while stretching his hands to the side. Atomic disintegration has been activated. Two large atomic blades appeared in his grasps as he fell across the air. He spotted the other two infected climbing upwards and flung the atomic blades in their direction. Fi. Fui. The blades accurately tore right through the foreheads of these infected causing them to lose balance as they fell through the air. Gustav who was falling across 3,000 feet stabilized himself and arrived right below the infected he had just punched. This chapter is updated by Allnobelfel. Com. Bam. He landed right atop him and made use of gravitational displacement to increase their fall speed and mass. Bang. A cloud of dust blasted across the place as the grounds once more trembled from the impact of Gustav landing right on top of this infected. Another crater had yet again been formed on the ground and three infected could be seen within. The officers atop the walls began sending down attacks as the other two who were speedily climbing over the wall earlier had finally been stopped. These two were not dead yet despite Gustav's attack but after the bombardment of the officers atop the wall they were blasted to smithereens. Stop attacking. Don't hit Officer Crimson. One of them yelled out after noticing the area of impact was awfully close to where Gustav had landed. As the dust cleared up Gustav looked down and saw that he was standing on a shell instead of a body like he expected. To his surprise this shell was very sturdy and even with such intense landing. It didn't have more than a few scratches on it. Chapter 987 Doom City The infected being protected by the shell suddenly began moving at this point and lifted Gustav off him. I really don't have time for this. I should destroy you now. Gustav stated as he sent out another fist the instant the shell was lifted. At the same moment the infected who was more than two times Gustav's height reached out to block Gustav's fist. Bang. He got sent flying across the air and did a flip once before landing on the ground to balance himself. Zish. The infected still slid back by a few feet more before finding stability. The creature made a weird shrieking sound in the next instant as it lowered its hand. This one is definitely stronger than the others. Gustav noticed that his punch was barely effective against it. Besides that it seemed like this infected had higher intelligence than the others as it didn't just try to jump in and attack Gustav foolishly. It even knew how to block an attack. Something which the others had done. We can assume there won't be more like this in the coming hordes. Things are going to get more difficult. Gustav analyzed. Gustav dashed forward at this point. Swoosh. Despite how sturdy the creature was. It was still no match for Gustav's speed. Grab. Gustav grabbed it by the neck and leapt into the air. Bang. He slammed the creature into the ground as he descended from the head. However it had managed to shield itself with this shell again and remain undamaged. Gustav's hand was now stuck underneath this shell that had covered its upper body with the exception of its shoulder. Getting stuck there. The creature made use of this opportunity to attack Gustav by swinging its hands forward. Enough. Gustav's eyes glowed a dark red as claws protruded from his hands stuck underneath the infected shell. Three his. His claws ripped right through the head of the creature. Dividing it in two halves. The creature still had life in it even after this and still tried to stab its hand through Gustav's belly even after the attack. Bang. It was like its hand hit something ten times sturdier than steel as Gustav remained unaffected by the hit. He forcefully pulled him hand from under the shell ripping a bit of his hand off in the process. His hands healed very fast as he reached out to grab the creature's arms and rip them from their sockets. Atomic disintegration has been activated. Purification. Gustav voiced out as a bright milky light enveloped his entire figure. The others on the west wall saw that Gustav had finally dealt with the infected and heaved a sigh of relief. They hoped there wouldn't be more infected like this that would be difficult to deal with but they had no idea what reality had in store for them. With the number in hordes increasing by the hour. Who knew what they would encounter? There are more heading this way. One of them yelled out from above the wall. Gustav turned around at this point and leapt upwards. Thum. The earth vibrated as he traveled across 2,000 feet in an instant before landing on the wall. Gustav turned back around to look forward. God eyes has been activated. We're going to need more reinforcements. Gustav voiced out as he spotted the horde heading in this direction. 
We've been asking from the tower but they said this is the number of officers they can deploy at the moment. That we have to make do with these numbers. One of the officers voiced out. PFFT with these numbers. The city is pretty much doomed. Gustav voiced out with a light chuckle before his face went back to looking serious. The officers that heard this were overcome with a look of dread. They recalled Gustav had mentioned the number of infected headed towards the wall when they were still miles away. Gustav was accurate about the numbers which made them realize he must have seen the numbers headed here at the moment and decided the city was doomed. There are only two ways out of this now. Those two find a way to avert this crisis by dealing with it on their own end or we evacuate the city right now. Either way. With the numbers approaching this city is pretty much toast. Gustav said internally. I need one of you to head back into the city and convince those in command to find a way to evacuate the city right now. We might be able to hold the number for some time but they will eventually break through this defense. Gustav said with a tone of urgency. This chapter is updated by Allnovelfel. Com. Evacuation right now is. One of the officers was speaking when Gustav cut him off. I know. Just try to make sure it happens. If not. This entire city will turn into an infected territory. Gustav stated. The officer who looked like young and dark with curly white hair nodded in response before heading towards the south area of the wall. He flew upwards as he sped up. Trying to accomplish the task Gustav gave him quickly. Well if they chose not to listen I might as well just destroy the entire city. Won't let the world be jeopardized because of one city. Gustav muttered with an undisturbed look. He didn't really care much about the state of the world but for the people he cares about. He had to care which was why he didn't care about destroying everyone here so long as the people he cared about were unaffected. He was glad Red Shadow and Gradier Xanatus were currently not here so he felt he was in the clear. The officer beside him who heard him mutter all had looks of disbelief and internally hoped Gustav was joking about destroying the entire city. Some of them even doubted he had the power to do so even though this was a small city. Hopefully they wouldn't have to find out whether Gustav was capable of that or not. Are you ready to battle mixed breed and mixed blood infected too? Gustav asked as he deactivated God Eyes. Chapter 988, A Mix of Infected. Author's Note, Unedited Chapters. Are you ready to battle mixed breed and mixed blood infected too? Gustav asked as he deactivated God Eyes. What? The officers exclaimed with looks of disbelief as they heard that. Why do you think I said the city is doomed? Gustav voiced out rhetorically. It turned out Gustav had spotted ashy-colored creatures that were not humans within the midst of the infected. So far with the situation of the infected. There had never been a case of infected mixed breed reported. So far it had been humans. Slarkovs and a few mixed bloods that had been reported infected. Mixed bloods had a bit of resistance within them which was why they couldn't easily get infected but humans and Slarkovs who were more normal could easy get contaminated with the ashy infection. The few mixed bloods that had been infected were immediately taken care of killed because they were more of a threat than human or Slarkov infected. A mixed blood infected would have their bloodline abilities boosted and even evolved at times with the state of their bodies changing. They were way more stronger. The one Gustav had just killed earlier too was a mixed blood infected. Who knew how many mixed bloods died on the day Gildian city was destroyed? The situation was about to get real worse with even mixed breed infected entering the fray. Gustav didn't really see any way out of this situation without the city getting run over. However if Red Shadow and Gradier Xanatus were able to find the culprits. Maybe they would find a way to take care of this situation. Bang. 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 The sounds of collision rang out across the vicinity as a heated battle between six people played out. Two were on the same side while the other four were their opponents. They each took care of two opponents and it looked like even when they were outnumbered they were still winning. Hiya. One of the opponents who had magnetic-like armor on his body yelled out as he formed a massive fist with it and sent it hurling down at the masked man who was facing one of his comrades. Red Shadow spotted this attack and quickly grabbed hold of his opponent as reddish footprints appeared all over the place. One of the footprints that was behind a large boulder blinked twice and he suddenly appeared in that spot with the person in his grasp. Bang. 
He slammed the opponent face into the boulder the moment he appeared there while the massive metallic fist hurling down earlier slammed onto their initial position. The armor-like blue helmet covering his opponent face broke apart, revealing part of his face after he got smashed into the boulder. Red Shadow spotted the feminine face bleeding within the space in the helmet as he figured out he had been fighting with a woman all this time. Don't treat me as a woman. Fight me fairly without holding back. She voiced out as she noticed the look of realization in Red Shadow's eyes despite his masked face. Bang. Red Shadow's fist suddenly slammed into her gut sending her hurling across the air. Bam. 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 She slammed through several trees due to the impact from his punch. Never said I'd hold back. Red Shadow muttered underneath his breath. Immediately after saying that he made a side dash. Dodging another fierce attack. Boom. A bluish streak of energy charged past his side as the other opponent covered in black metallic armor charger crazily towards him. On the other side. Gradier Xanatus kept dashing from side to side as he dodged the attacks of the two he was fighting against. Every single opponent here had an armor-like helmet covering their faces and they were also clad in technology suits with different purposes. Gradier Xanatus had never seen such high-class suits that could contend against the power mixedbloods except in the MBO. And even within the MBO one would need to be a mixed blood before they could use such suits but he surprisingly couldn't sense any bloodline energy coming from this bunch. He could have ended this sooner but he kept dragging out the fight to be sure he wasn't mistaken. With these technology suits, they would be able to challenge Echo ranked mixed bloods and there was a high possibility of them winning. Hiya. One of them yelled out again as multiple laser blades flew out from his technological suits. Gradier Xanatus leapt upwards and these blades followed him like they had locked onto him. At the same moment one of the appeared right behind him like he teleported and joined both hands before sending a conjoined fist hurling down at Gradier Xanatus in the air. Gradier Xanatus moved to the side even in mid-air and reached out to grab something. A staff appeared in his hand and began gleaming with a dark purplish light. Gradier Xanatus waved this as the air clearing the laser blades flying at him in an instant. As he fell from the air he raised his staff with intensity and slammed it downwards the moment he made contact with the ground. Boom. A massive shockwave spread out, slamming heavily into the one on ground. He got tossed across the air as even the trees in the vicinity cleared from the destructiveness. Bang. He got knocked out the instant he slammed into a rock hundred feet behind. The one in the air had a look of anger as he charged downwards to engage Gradier Xanatus. In a part of Luchin City within a large building, a brown-skinned young MBO officer with white curly hair could be seen engaging in a serious banter with some men clad in MBO uniforms. With the way their uniforms looked, it was obvious that they were high-ranking officers. We cannot do that boy. One of them voiced out. This city will be overrun by the infected soon. The curly white-haired officer stated with a tone of frustration. Says who? The officers on the wall are more than capable of preventing that. The officer on the left with only few strands of hair on his head voiced out in response. Chapter 989, Officer Full is Sentimentality. Officer Crimson asked me to pass this message across. He says there is no preventing what is coming. If you want the people to survive you have to evacuate everyone. The curly white-haired officer said once more. Officer Fola. While I understand that this is a message from Officer Crimson. You must understand that evacuation right now is simply just impossible. The other officer with a glowing green colored hair said with a regretful tone. You guys don't understand. The lives of everyone is at stake here. This has to be done or. While Officer Fola was speaking again. The officer interrupted. No I do understand but the other cities will not open their borders to anyone from this city and the government is trying to prevent any possible spread so they're allowing it to happen. Evacuation is truly an impossible situation even though this is a request from our savior. The officer with a glowing green hair stated. Officer Fola had a look of defeat on his face as he heard this. He turned to the side to look out the window and down below he could spot thousands of Luchin city citizens standing outside a gate with downcast looks. They're all gonna die and get turned into infected. I don't think you two understand the severity of the situation. Fola started speaking once more with a decisive look. 
he wasn't ready to give up yet in trying to convince these old farts to get the people out of here. If the entire city becomes a city of the infected it's gonna be worse for the world and the culprits who had orchestrated this whole thing would have won because they will have more infected to control which means they could head to other cities with a larger army. He voiced out. The two had contemplative looks as they heard this which made Officer Full a face lit up with a hopeful expression. I'm afraid it's still not possible. His hopes were doused with a bucket of cold water as he heard this response from one of the two high-ranking officials. If this city ever gets taken over, the higher-ups will give the command for it to be blasted off the map which means everything will be destroyed including the infected. The officer explained while placing his hand on Officer Fuller's shoulder. The only way to save this city is by preventing the infected from breaking through. He added. This closing remark made Fulla feel as though this was an impossible situation. With the way things were, the city getting taken over by infected was inevitable and evacuation was impossible. It really looked like an hopeless situation. He turned to stare at the people waiting outside once more. Is this how lives are gonna be lost under my watch this night? He gritted his teeth as he tightened his fist with a feeling of powerlessness rising from deep within. He left the building a while later to return towards the wall. As he passed the front gate, the people all stared at him with respectful but tired gazes. He tried not to look at anyone as he moved forward. Huh. He noticed someone tugging at the sleeve of his uniform and turned to the side. Officer. My mum says we're all gonna die is it true? A beautiful blue-eyed girl who looked no older than six years old voiced out with an innocent tone. Officer Fulla felt his heart tighten as he stared down at this girl. A flashback played in his mind as he squatted in front of her. No. Nobody is dying. He forced a smile as he responded. The MBO is going to protect everyone. He added causing the girl's face to lit up with a smile. Mother. The girl voiced out as she turned around with a joyful look and began running towards a young lady behind. I told you the MBO would protect us. They're heroes. She voiced out as she ran into the embrace of the young woman who looked quite tired. Officer Fola turned around at this point and tightened his fist. I will protect this city even if it's the last thing I do. He decided internally. At this same moment, loud blasts began to ring out in the direction of the west. It was fleeting since the distance from here to where it was going down was far but it was obvious that some crazy battle was going down. It has begun. Officer Fola muttered as he leapt into the air. A bluish aura-like glow surrounded him as he blasted across the air with immense speed in the direction of the west. The west wall. Boom. 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 Sounds of explosion rang out as multiple officers could be seen below on the ground fighting against the infected that had gotten close. The ones on the walls were hurling down attacks at the other infected behind causing the entire vicinity to tremble with different types of powerful attacks. Some officers who were flying were handling some infected who also had flight abilities and it was proving to be a difficult battle despite only having gone on for about five minutes. Deep within the ranks of these infected Gustav who was clad in a coat of flames charged through their midst as he ripped infected to shreds one after the other. He was aiming for the weaker infected as he dashed across the place ignoring the stronger ones to cut down their numbers faster. However while doing this he was also irking the more powerful infected to get them chasing after him. He knew dealing with them would take a longer time so he evaded their attacks while making sure they continued chase. His fist tore through the chest of another infected as he proceeded to leap upwards with his arm within it. Boom. A black energy filled ball landed on where he had just leapt from causing an explosion to ring out. Gustav proceeded to fling the infected his hand stabbed through towards the other infected who had sent out this attack. Hover has been activated. He floated in mid-air as he joined his palm together with his eyes glowing an ominous red color. Chapter 990. Red Shadow's Impatience. Author's Note. Unedited Chapters. Hover has been activated. He floated in mid-air as he joined his palm together with his eyes glowing an ominous red color. Gravitational displacement has been activated. A radius of more than 3,000 feet instantly trembled as a strange and powerful energy caused the ground to sink in. The infected in this area all felt great pressure upon their shoulders as they fell to the ground. Some of them got turned into meat paste as the pressure smashed them into the crumbling ground. 
the more powerful ones managed to hold out as their legs sank into the ground from the pressure which decreased their speed by a whole lot. Some infected who were intially flying dropped crazily and Gustav made use of this opportunity to attack intensely. Sprint has been activated. His body turned into a blur as he bolted across the battlefield while wielding the atomic blades. Slash. 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 As his bolted across the area. All that could be seen was brown and white lines. Ashy colored bodies were being ripped to shreds wherever these brown and white streaks passed. Gustav's speed was quite insane as he tore through hundreds of infected in a manner of seconds. One of them flew down and landed behind him as he finished ripping another one to shreds. An encompassing dark wings made of gas spread out from this infected as Gustav suddenly found himself trapped within this place. The infected who looked like a dried corpse with a large hole in its chest and forehead lunged at Gustav after trapped him here. Gustav swung his atomic blade at the infected which ended up slicing it in half only for its body to rejoin after Gustav's arm had gone through it. The flame's coat around Gustav dampened a little due to this infected trapping Gustav's arm within itself. Hike. The creature opened its mouth causing a tornado of black fog to shot out of its mouth. Energy discharge has been activated. Gustav activated energy discharge causing a wave of red energy to blast forth from his figure. Boom. The creature as well and the attack it had just spewed out got blasted backwards with intensity. The entire vicinity was getting corroded in the process of their battle and Gustav could feel his skin melting. This dark cocoon he had been trapped in was unaffected by his energy discharge. The attack had bounced off it. Zing. A transparent head-sized item with a mysterious glow within. Appeared behind Gustav. Can you leave this place? Gustav asked. Fizz. Good. Go wreak havoc on the enemies. Gustav voiced out after a brief pause. The floating circular shaped item flew out of the enclosed space with ease causing the infected to show a little expression of disbelief since it still had a bit of intelligence compared to the others. Gustav stared at the creature who had gotten blasted quite some distance away before speaking. I will be destroying you now but I only sent it out there because every second counts. Gustav voiced out before charging forward. Swoosh. Miniature black hole has been activated. Swirling dark and purplish streaks formed above his right palm as an intense suction force was generated from it. The instant it slammed into the infected. It got ripped into multiple pieces before getting sucked into the small baby head-sized black hole. The black hole disappeared in the next instant and so did the dark encompassment. The instant the environment was revealed to Gustav after the encompassment disappeared. All he could see around him were corpses of infected scattered across the place. Bang. 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 The sound of smashing and explosion rang out up ahead. A 20 feet tall robotic-like creature could be seen charging forward and pounding the infected it came across. Energy cannons protruded out of its body as it shot destructive beams all across the battlefield. This was none other than the sacred jewel which had taken the form of a gigantic bot to fight the infected just as Gustav had instructed it. Gustav wasted no time in dashing forth once more as he began to engage the infected while trying to avoid their toxins. The entire area was still not close to being chaos-free. They had barely dealt with 5% of the entire horde that had just been sent out. The entire place was teeming and crawling with them and it was only a matter of time before the MBO officers would expend their energy completely fighting this horde if the MBO did not send in more reinforcements. Gildian City. Tell us how to stop this. Gradier Xanatus voiced out to one or the four who were tied together before him. We're not telling you squat. One of them with blood rolling down his forehead stated. I could get the information out of you but I'm giving you a way out from getting more hurt than you already are. Gradier Xanatus voiced out as he stood in front of them. We really do not have the time for this so if you four want extreme measures then so shall it be. Red Shadow's eyes glowed up shining through his mask and giving him a menacing look. Even if we were to tell you anything there would be no stopping what is to come. We're already at the final phase. The lady tied up among the group of four stated. Diora. Keep quiet. The one who spoke earlier voiced out once more. It doesn't matter BJ. Diora voiced out in response. You know all I have too. 
do is get rid of your helmet completely for you to inhale toxic gas that would leave you dead in moments. Red Shadow voiced out as he squatted in front of the one who kept trying to be stubborn. If you do that you lose your only source of possible information. BJ responded with an undisturbed tone. Okay. Red Shadow stated before suddenly stabbing his hand through BJ's neck. His hand was gleaming with a red color that made it intangible so he didn't physically stab into BJ's neck. You're about to find out one of the reasons I'm called Red Shadow. Red Shadow stated as he pulled out something from the neck of choking BJ. Chapter 991, Separate Tasks. A red figure was pulled out of BJ's body and in the next instant. BJ's body fell limply like he had passed out. The red figure in Red Shadow's grasp was an exact replica of BJ except for the fact that it was reddish. It looked like it was made out of pure energy and wasn't physical but Red Shadow was able to hold onto this figure with ease. The eyes of this red figure was widened as he stared at Red Shadow lifting him above the ground. I know you lots don't really care about death. Red Shadow voiced out to the reddish figure as he recalled one of them they caught earlier who committed suicide. I won't give you death no. I'll just condemn you to a state where you have to follow me around for eternity in a state of existence and an existence altogether. Red Shadow's voice was getting deeper and scarier as he voiced this out. It was currently around 3 in the midnight and the moon shining down had Red Shadow's shadow displayed on the left side of the ground. However. Even his shadow was currently red. Great Ear Xanatus had no idea what was happening at the moment but he could sense a dreadful energy from Red Shadow. Is he using an ability that he normally doesn't make use of? Great Ear Xanatus wondered internally. While he was a little concerned. He believed Red Shadow could handle this so he stood at the sidelines ready to pop in if things ever went out of hand. All right enough of the explanations. Do you really want to have a taste of what I mean? Red Shadow stated as eyes began to appear within his shadow that had turned red. All of these eyes looker tormented and they had no idea what exactly was going to happen if Red Shadow went through with what he was talking about but they knew it wouldn't be anything pretty or interesting. Please. Please. The red replica of BJ began begging. He was in a kind of spiritual energy form so he could sense the dread way more than others. He could hear the other souls crying out from Red Shadow's shadow so he knew whatever torment they were facing wasn't something he would like to experience. I'll give you one last chance. Red Shadow voiced out as he stepped forward and put the red figure back into BJ's body. In the next instant. BJ opened his eyes and let out a loud breath as his expression turned into one of panic. Red Shadow's glowing eyes calmed and his shadow returned to normal as he spoke once more. Now let's try this again. Who are you lots and what is your objective? About 30 minutes later Great Ear Xanatus and Red Shadow could be seen standing in front of this tied up bunch with looks of contemplations. Are you saying the last one amongst all? Of you is currently undergoing the task? Great Ear Xanatus inquired. Yes and by now he should be done or almost done so whatever you try to do right now won't change anything. Luchin City will fall. BJ said with a strong tone of warning. How do you locate the cemeteries? And which cemetery is the other person performing this task? Red Shadow asked. Even if we tell you how it doesn't matter. You can't get there to stop him in time. One of them voiced out. I will not ask again. Red Shadow voiced out as his eyes glowed red ominously. It's in our suit. It's not hampered by the toxicity of the environment. Diora voiced out. She proceeded to explain how it worked and how they could use the suit to head over to where the last one was. Red Shadow and Great Ear Xanatus stared at each other after hearing this. I'll take one of them with me. Will you take care of the others? Red Shadow stated. I'll get the others to Luchin City and circle back with one of their armors. Put an end to this if you get there on time. Great Ear Xanatus voiced out. Both of them had an understanding that only one person had to go from this point and since Red Shadow was obviously the quicker one of the duo this role automatically fell on his shoulders. Red Shadow proceeded to grab hold of BJ and pulled him from the ropes. You're coming with me. He voiced out before opening a cross-shaped red portal and throwing him in. Red Shadow jumped in immediately afterwards and the portal closed up. Activate confinement. Great Ear Xanatus stated while tapping onto a watch on his wrist. Zin. 
Solid glowing pink bars appeared around the other three. Surrounded them and formed a small cell with them within. Great Ear Xanatus went on to grab hold of the bars and lifted it with all three of them inside. Boom. He leapt across the air in the next instant. Heading in the direction of Luchin City. As he headed back he recalled what these four had disclosed. It turned out they were a group sent here by an unknown force with the objective of infecting every single corpse in Gildian City with the new Ashy infection variant. They were initially six. One had committed suicide. They caught four and the last one was busy with a separate task that would definitely cause the destruction of Luchin City. They were able to give said instructions to the infected and once those instructions had been given, they couldn't be taken back. Right now the infected trying to run over the city were given this primary instruction. Even th. How they had caught some of the culprits. The set of instructions couldn't be reversed. Red Shadow had to make sure he stopped the last one before the instruction could be given or it would spell the end. According to the four they caught. There were millions of infected in the same area as the last one waiting to be given instructions but that wasn't even the worst part. There was something else too. Chapter 992, The Upcoming Danger. Author's Note, Unedited Chapter. According to the four they caught, there were millions of infected in the same area as the last one waiting to be given instructions but that wasn't even the worst part. There was something else too. The group had opened up about trying to revive an ancient mixed breed that was plenty times powerful than a kilo ranked mixed blood. Usually mixed breeds would be way stronger than mixed bloods even if their level was similar in terms of how one would categorize mixed blood strength. This was an ancient mixed breed that had died centuries ago and it was very powerful when it was alive. Almost at its prime. No one would go out of their way to preserve the corpse of a mixed breed like the way humans. Mixed bloods and Slarkovs were preserved so it was a wonder how the corpse of this ancient mixed breed wasn't disintegrated yet. The group explained the creature was really powerful when it was alive so it would still take about a hundred more years before its corpse could be disintegrated. Red Shadow didn't know much about the creature they were talking about but Great Ear Xanatus knew just how much of a danger such a creature would be when it was reawakened and turned against them. It taking order from the last one of them would spell the end for Luchin City. This was the most crucial aspect and Red Shadow was hoping he'd arrive in time before any instructions were passed down. The millions of infected already stored at a part of Gildian City waiting to be given orders were also a massive threat but Great Ear Xanatus knew that with his rank he could ask for more reinforcements. The MBO would be willing to send more for his sake but with the ancient mixed breed being added to the fray. The amount of reinforcements they would need to take it down will not be able to arrive on time before the city was run over. Great Ear Xanatus leapt repeatedly across the air as he carried the three culprits back with a worried expression. The best option would be to call more in the moment I arrive back. Great Ear Xanatus decided he would call for more reinforcements the instant he arrived back at the wall. Another thing was bothering him about this whole thing. How do they have mechanical suits that can work even within the toxic city? Even the MBO barely has any. He wondered internally as one more thought appeared in his mind. And how are they all Slarkovs? Not even one mixed blood or human. The last one was also a Slarkov. Great Ear Xanatus didn't understand why but he felt there were bigger things at play here than they could see in the meantime. Red Shadow who had tossed BJ into the portal earlier was speeding across a grassy path that seemed quite elevated. NBS. P. Swoosh. A reddish blur could be seen as he made his way down this elevated path. A small mountain could be seen up ahead and he could sense presences from beyond the mountain. Usually he would slow down so as not to alert the enemy but time wasn't on their hands at this point so his thought was to jump in first and think of the situation afterwards. Boom. He leapt across the air while still carry BJ. Are we here? Red Shadow questioned. Yes. Just right beyond the mountain. BJ answered with a look of fear. Good. Red Shadow muttered as he landed on the small mountain. He proceeded to look forward at this instance and could see an expanse of land up front. Everywhere would look deserted which was normal but this particular location looked fresh compared to the rest. The area was quite silent and dark but Red Shadow Eyes instantly spotted what he was here for. In this expanse of land a large army of infected could be seen lined up in front. 
Their ash-colored skin was quite clear from the top of this mountain along with their red bloodshot eyes but unlike the others. They weren't making any move. They just stood there without making a sound. Red Shadow slowly stepped forward as he observed the entire vicinity. Traps. Red Shadow said internally as he noticed something after stepping forward to a point. Won't be wise to alert the enemy until I spot them. He said internally as he looked around. No matter where he looked. All he could see were tons and tons of infected scattered around. He could even spot mixed breeds amongst their ranks. This is definitely more than a million infected. He said internally. The situation was quite dangerous as he couldn't find the last culprit who had been given this task. Where is he? Red Shadow asked BJ who was kneeling beside him. He should be somewhere on the east. There's a small hatch that leads underground. BJ responded. Red Shadow turned to stare at the east. Taking note of the area he was supposed to head in. BJ was still tied beside him but he knew bringing him along would be a stupid decision as it would slow him down so he decided to confine BJ to this mountain. Red Shadows phased out of his shadow and proceeded to clinch onto BJ's shadow leaving him unable to speak or move. That should do it. Red Shadow said internally before turning to stare at the east side again. Whish. His body suddenly blurred as he disappeared from his standing point in the next instant. Boom. An explosion rang out in his initial position and Red Shadow had appeared about 50 feet towards the left. That was close. He muttered as he squinted his eyes. He couldn't see or sense the presence of anyone but without a doubt he sensed something at the last second which was why he bolted to the side. He suddenly sensed danger on his left and charged forward again. Boom. Another explosion rang out causing rocks to be blasted to smithereens. There's someone here. Red Shadow honed his senses to the max as this thought appeared in his mind. Chapter 993, Taking Ultimate Combination Up the Notch Truly there was someone here but this person was currently invisible and had their presence completely erased. This was such high grade erasure of presence that even someone of Red Shadow's caliber could only sense when the attack was close to hitting him. He couldn't see the attack or the culprit however he was very sure there was someone here with him. Looks like I didn't need to go to him. He came to me instead. Red Shadow thought as he leapt backwards. Boom. Another explosion rang out where he was standing a while ago and he began to dash around the place with speed. You made a grave mistake coming to me before doing what you had to do. Red Shadow voiced out as he kept running in circles speedily at the top of this mountain. Boom. 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 Explosions kept ringing out as he charged across the place. Red Shadow suddenly stopped after a few more explosions and stood in place while closing his eyes. There was no response when he spoke earlier which meant whoever was here didn't want to expose their current position by saying anything. As Red Shadow stood there without making another move. There was no attack for a bit. Then all of a sudden. He felt a bone chilling attack only an inch away from making contact. He suddenly opened his eyes in this same instant which was gleaming with red ominous light. A portal suddenly appeared behind him as he turned around. The attack was swallowed up and in that same moment. There. He muttered as he bolted forward with immense speed. Bang. His fist slammed into an invisible force. Causing a loud sound of collision to ring out. A small flicker of light appeared in mid-air. As it seemed to be moving in an arc. Red shadow leapt in the direction of the flicker which was traveling off the mountain. Luchin City. The front of the walls surrounding Luchin City was littered with the corpses of the infected as the battle between the MBO officers here and the infected was still very heated. Lots of infected had been destroyed during this time but this wasn't without casualties on the end of the MBO as well. Some really strong mixed bloods infected made things difficult and to add to all these there were mixed breed infected here as well. Currently there were many MBO officers on ground and in the air as well. The ones who could use long-range attacks stayed on the walls while the ones with abilities that could only be used properly in melee combat were on the ground fending off the infected. Gustav was currently half-naked with his chest and multiple parts his body exposed due to this battle. He was covered. In ashy goo and even with that he still charged forward ripping. Slicing and destroying one infected after the other in a very speedy manner. No matter how many they killed it seemed like the infected were never ending. 
he would destroy many only to find himself getting surrounded by another group in a manner of seconds. Now the issue wasn't with strength but with endurance. Would the MVO officers be able to hold out till every single infected were wiped out before they ran out of energy? Gustav couldn't count how many infected he had killed at this moment. All of a sudden. Twee. 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 Wowie. Numerous sounds of flapping wings reverberated across the vicinity. With the high volume. One could tell that the sound of wings flapping was coming from multiple sources. Every single officer all across the walls looked up as they were overcame with a feeling of dread. Up above a massive horde of infected mixed breed could be seen flying towards the wall. It was currently around 5 in the morning and the moon was still out yet the sheer numbers of the infected mixed breeds casted numerous shadows across the land. The sky was completely covered up due to their massive numbers. Each of these mixed breeds were the size of a truck and they had armor-like brownish covering on most parts of their bodies with massive eagle-like wings. Their facial structure was like that of jackals but more menacing with sharpened teeth and blood-red eyes. God eyes has been activated. Over 50,000. Gustav was instantly able to count the numbers of these infected mixed breeds in the sky after activating God eyes. With the amount here Gustav knew that without taking things up the notch the barrier would be broken in no time and the city would be overrun. Combination has been activated. Bloodwolf plus mutated boar plus demonic bunny plus Sabrina serpent plus flames death ace. Gustav activated ultimate combination at this point. Mixing up more than six mixed breeds at a time. His body transformed rapidly as an unbearable and powerful aura that made him unapproachable spread out from him. The infected all around were unable to approach for some time. Not because they didn't want to but because they just couldn't. All within a particular radius from Gustav were trapped in place by the powerful aura. Silver scales had appeared on Gustav's body as he grew out six pair of horns on his forehead. He reached a height of 12 feet as he grew bulkier and muscular all at the same time. His eyes were gleaming with multicolored lights due to the multiple streams of abilities he had access to that had also been boosted. A radiating scarlet glow appeared at the tip of his middle horn as the energy coming from his frame caused the vicinity to tremble. Gustav had never combined so many transformations at the same time. It was so intense that he felt he might have overdone it. 5000 EP. The amount of energy points gone in one transformation left him speechless. This ultimate combination wasn't one he could keep for long or he would be drained of energy. However the situation demanded he took things up several notches or this would spell the end for the city. Gustav looked up with a menacing glare at this point. Spotting the thousands of mixed breeds in the sky closing in on the wall. Tremble. He stated with a deep tone. Chapter 994. Lone battle against 50,000 flying infected mixed breeds. Author's note. Unedited chapters. Gustav looked up with a menacing glare at this point. Spotting the thousands of mixed breeds in the sky closing in on the wall. Tremble. He stated with a deep tone. A powerful surge of transparent energy phased out from him. Spreading across the vicinity. Thousands of the infected mixed breeds in the sky instantly felt weakened and dropped from the air like flies that insecticides got sprayed on. Gustav didn't even bother lunging forward. Jurin. The glow at the tip of his middle horn brightened up even more like it was building up energy. Grr. The ground began to tremble extremely to the point to the extent the walls quaked as well. But as if this was not enough. The city within had started experience a minor land quake. In the next few moments Gustav let go of the energy he had built up. Thhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
the energy began to die down after a few moments and smoke began to phase out of Gustav's horn. One could tell he had made use of a lot of energy to perform that attack but it was extremely potent as it had wiped out more than 10% of the infected mixed breed coming from above in an instant. A cloud of dust had spread out over an expanse of 10,000 feet due to Gustav's attack. His area lacked good visuality due to this but he could see well. However, nor wanting the MBO officers behind on the ground to start getting picked off one after the other by the infected Gustav decided to do something. Fui. He waved his hand to the side, causing wind to spread out from the sheer intensity of his physical strength. The wind cleared out the dust that had covered the radius of 10,000 feet. The officers on the walls were still staring in his direction with an expression of disbelief wondering how he just pulled off such a powerful attack. They had spotted his transformation from afar in the violent energy it spread forth. There was no doubt that Gustav was the most powerful MBO officer present on this battlefield. Handle the infected on land. I'll take care of the ones in the sky. Gustav spoke normally but he had a kind of energy that caused his voice to be transported clearly all across. Every single officer on the grounds and the walls heard him clearly. Hiya. Hiya. Loud battle cries filled with motivation was heard after Gustav voiced out. Gustav had lifted the spirit of the MBO officers especially after they had seen what he could achieve with just a single attack in this form. Thum. Gustav blasted off into the sky in the next instant to deal with the mixed breed infected. Zwi. In that same instant he had already arrived before a group. The Jiko Hakai Katana appeared in his grasp once more and he held it tightly before swinging sideways. 3. It looked like the sky was cut in two as a dangerous red arc phased out of the katana after he swung it. Thousands of these infected flying mixed breeds were instantly disintegrated into nothingness as Gustav's right arm popped out of place and nearly got ripped from the joints. This attack had dealt with thousands because of how powerful Gustav was in this form but it took its toll on him as well. An outburst of wind generated from this attack had nearly blown the officers off the wall which made Gustav fly further forward so no one would be affected by the residue energy. Gustav passed the katana to his left hand as his right hand healed and swung it out once more. After thousands of them were erased from the skies once again he proceeded to pass the katana to his right hand and swung out again. Fui. 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 Gustav kept passing the katana from right hand to left hand and from left hand to right hand. At this point Gustav was abusing his regenerative ability but he didn't care. He would do whatever it took to make sure none of these mixed breeds arrived at the wall. After doing this a few more times the entire sky was nearly cleared. Gustav had to stop now because with every forceful swing he was depleting a lot of energy. If he kept it up, he would run out of energy in a few more seconds. Even maintaining the ultimate combination was draining and he would have to deactivate it in a few if he didn't want to run out of energy. Gustav seeing that only a few thousand were left. He kept the Jiko Hakai Katana back in his storage device as his left arm healed up. Fui. He charged forward across the sky like lightning arriving in front of one instantly. Grab. Gustav grabbed this one by the head and ripped it in two with his bare hands causing whitish goo and body parts to fall from the sky. While it was falling Gustav sent forth a milky colored ball that disintegrated its body parts. Gustav wasted no time in heading to the next after completing that deed that took him no more than a second. The flying infected mixed breeds surrounded him at this point with the intention of eliminating him. However even with the use of their wings, Gustav's speed was just too much for them. Chapter 995 Gradier Xanatus's return. Gustav had already arrived in front of another two and proceeded to make contact. Loud bone crushing sounds could be heard as Gustav squeezed both heads to the point where their skulls were smashed in even with the protective armor covering. Dawawush. His body blurred once more and he arrived on another side where he punched through the gut of one of the mixed breeds before proceeding to send a charge of energy through its insides, causing it to blast to pieces. One second Gustav was here and in the next second he had already destroyed more than 10 mixed breeds with the help of his physical strength. However they were still more than a thousand so even with the way Gustav was speedily slaughtering them. They had managed to gather around him. 
Gustav clasped his palms together as he noticed he had been completely covered by these mixed-breed. Boom! A massive shockwave spread across the place upon contact which sent the thousands of mixed-breeds surrounding him flying backwards. As the shockwaves pushed them away, Gustav stretched out his right hand. Fui! One of them that was spiraling across the air backwards suddenly paused. Gustav pulled his hand forward and the mixed-breed began flying towards him. Bang! Gustav punched its head off the instant it arrived before him and proceeded to speed out once more to deal with the rest. In a few minutes more, less than hundred of these infected mixed breeds were left. Ultimate combination has been deactivated. The energy surging around Gustav began to reduce as his body transformed back into its original look. At this point Gustav looked a bit fatigued but they were only less than a hundred so he was sure he could handle this in no time. Energy. 13,000 90 thousandths. Gustav could see that he had spent a lot of energy points since this battle began. He decided to utilize the rest to the best of his abilities. Hover has been activated. He had to activate Hover now that he had deactivated ultimate combination. Swoosh. Swoosh. He flew towards the rest as atomic blades appeared in his hands. Slash. Slash slash. While he took care of the rest. The battle on the ground was getting even more heated without Gustav's contribution. Since Gustav had been dealing with the infected mixed breeds in the sky, the other officers had been dealing with the ones on the ground. Officer Fola had arrived on scene since and joined the others in fighting back the infected as well. He had a bloodline related to energy accumulation which he could use in so many different ways. Him joining the many other MBO officers had helped to keep the invasion at bay but the situation was still looking quite hopeless. At this point there were lots of casualties and the MBO officers had seen their fellow comrades die and turned into one of the infected on this battlefield. With the number of infected still approaching, it looked like no matter how much they killed, they would never end. Gustav had initially counted the numbers heading here and was able to tell that there were over a million and with this battle ongoing for hours now, they had not managed to clear up to 40% of the infected. Gustav had given them moral by slaughtering up to 50,000 infected all by himself in a manner of minutes but this moral was slowly dying down as the number of causality on the MBO side increased. Their numbers had dwindled from over 5,000 to 3,000 in the hours they had been fending off these infected. It was a good ratio compared to the number of infected they had gotten rid of but with the MBO not sending reinforcements at the moment. The lower their numbers the harder the battle becomes which would result in more casualties at an even faster rate. This situation was becoming exceedingly dangerous with every passing seconds. Kirish. Cries rang out once more as some other MBO officers fighting beside Fola were slaughtered. Fola quickly dashed in that direction and proceeded to get rid of the corpses with an energy bomb before they could turn into one of the infected. His breathing was heavy at this point and he was nearly out of energy but he still kept battling against them. He had become more crowded by the infected after some of the ones besides him got slaughtered and he had to deal with them swifter than before. I won't let the city be overrun. He said internally as he sent another ball of energy into the mouth of a mixed breed causing its internals to implode. Suddenly a mixed breed with insanely quick speed appeared from behind while slashing with its claws. Officer Fola had good reaction speed but was nearly mauled. He managed to grab hold of the infected mixed breed paws. Causing him to slide backwards due to the intensity. It was a struggle as he held them in place and tried to fight back but before he knew it. He had been surrounded by the infected once more. His eyes widened as they lunged at him and were only an instant away from sending him to the afterlife. All of a sudden a massive outburst of energy slammed into the infected circling him causing them to be blasted to pieces. He gasped with a confused look as a boulder-sized rectangular structure came falling from the sky. Bang! It landed directly on the infected mixed breed in front of him, turning it to meet past. In this instant he noticed he had been saved but what he saw within this rectangular structure surprised him. The rectangular structure was more like a mini prison with glowing bars and there were three people within. He was still staring with a confounded look when someone landed behind him. Are you okay? A familiar voice rang out. He turned around and spotted Gradier Xanatus. Yes sir. 
He quickly responded with a respectful expression. If you're exhausted, take refuge on the wall. Great Ear Xanatus said as he turned around and sent out a punch which caused shockwaves to spread across the place. Chapter 996 Arrival of Reinforcements Authors note, unedited chapters. If you're exhausted, take refuge on the wall. Great Ear Xanatus said as he turned around and sent out a punch which caused shockwaves to spread across the place. But sir, I need to help out. Fola voiced out in resistance but Great Ear Xanatus quickly cut him short. You're almost out of bloodline energy. Take refuge on the wall. All have called in reinforcements they will be arriving soon. You won't be any good to anyone if you die here. Great Ear Xanatus stated. Officer Fola was taken aback for a second before he nodded and replied respectfully. Yes sir. After saying this he leapt into the air and flee back towards the wall. Great Ear Xanatus looked up and could see several ripped apart bodies falling from the sky. Before they made contact with the ground they were hit by a ball of milky light that caused them to start disintegrating. Gustav. Great Ear Xanatus voiced out as he spotted the person responsible for that. Boom. 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 A 20 feet tall robotic looking machine could be seen sending forth explosions that wreaked havoc across the battlefield. Great Ear Xanatus couldn't recognize this technological mixed blood machine especially since it didn't have the MBO emblem on its back. Who's writing that? He wondered internally but in that same instant. Bam. Gustav landed on the ground up ahead sending out another shockwaves across the vicinity that caused multiple infected to be blasted backwards. Great Ear Xanatus. You're back. Gustav voiced out as he turned around. You're. Covered in their ashy substance. Great Ear Xanatus said with a look of concern as Gustav moved towards him. It's fine. I'm immune. Gustav didn't feel the need to hide this from Great Ear Xanatus so he voiced it out. Great Ear Xanatus' face displayed a look of relief after hearing that. Who are these? The orchestrators? Gustav asked as he spotted the glowing cage behind with three people within. Some of them, yes. Great Ear Xanatus responded. I'll fill you in at the top of the wall. Great Ear Xanatus voiced out as he picked up the cage. There's no time. I can't leave them to handle it on their own. Gustav voiced out as he hinted at the battlefield. Reinforcements are arriving in a few. They'll be okay. Great Ear Xanatus stated as he leapt towards the wall with the cage in his grasp. Gustav pounded a few more infected before lighting himself on fire to get rid of the ashy substance all over. The source of this content is. Calm. He proceeded to turn around and leap forward. The wall was at least 3000 feet away but he arrived above it in nearly an instant. Gustav landed atop the wall and moved to where Great Ear Xanatus was standing with the culprits. Where is Red Shadow? Gustav asked. Great Ear Xanatus had a look a troubled and urgent expression on his face as he began narrating how things had gone after Gustav helped them locate the culprits. A few minutes later Gustav had a look of understanding as he moved closer to the cage. Great Ear Xanatus had finished narrating how Red Shadow and him had to split up since he had to bring these ones back while Red Shadow had to find the last person. He had also mentioned how the current amount of infected they were currently fighting against was nothing compared to the amount that hadn't been given said instructions yet. Gustav calculated based on what Great Ear Xanatus disclosed and realized the infected that waiting to get sent out was at least six times more than the infected they had spent the entire night fending off. The casualty number had climbed and it would even be worse if this amount was to be sent out at the same time. Currently MBO reinforcements were arriving one after the other in the hundreds. Also more than 70% of the infected had been erased at this point so the reinforcements arriving were a great help in holding the line without Gustav's input. No matter how many reinforcements the MBO sends out next. With what Gustav had heard about the creature they were trying to revive with the infection. The city would be lost unless they just decided to blow everything to bits. The MBO had the power to end everything at this instant but since preserving lives had always been the priority they still had to try and protect all the citizens living here. If they decided to be extreme. All lives here would end. Have they told you guys everything they know or we still need to hound them for more information? Gustav voiced as he moved closer to the cage and stared at the people within. There's no time to try and get more information from them at the moment. 
We've gotten what we need for now. Great Ear Xanatus responded. I need to head back into Gildian City to help Red Shadow. He added. He had taken a little longer than expected to arrive back at the wall because he took a stop once he arrived at an area where he could make use of communication tools. He had to explain to the higher-ups that the situation here is worse than they thought and gave them some minute details. It took some time to get them to send the amount of reinforcements Gradier Xanatus had requested. Bam. 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 Currently over 300 robotic mixed-blood machines with experienced officers within were landing from the sky all across different places in the battlefield. More powerful officers were arriving as well and the current number of infected were being dealt with at a quicker pace with the amount of reinforcements arriving. Over a thousand AI bots were also being deployed from a massive aircraft that had just arrived in the sky. It seemed having a high rank in the MBO was truly noteworthy seeing how much reinforcements was being sent due to Great Ear Xanatus' request. In just a matter of minutes more than 10,000 reinforcements of different kinds had arrived from the MBO and more were still said to be on their way. Boom. 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 Explosives were being dropped on the infected that were still alive from several aircraft as well. Chapter 997 The Fall of Luchin City. Authors note. Unedited chapters. In no time. The infected left were only small in number and would be completely erased soon. However even with all these Gradier Xanatus was well aware that. Should Red Shadow fail. All these reinforcements would only be delaying the inevitable. The fall of Luchin City and all of its residents too. I'm coming with you. Gustav stated after Gradier Xanatus voiced out his intentions of heading back just in case Red Shadow needed help. No. I need you to remain here and man the wall. Gradier Xanatus said while shaking his head. Gustav turned to the left to stare beyond the wall. There's already more than enough reinforcements on ground to handle the current number of infected here. Gustav voiced in response. Still. It'll be better if you remained here and take command of the officers. If things end up going bad I'm sure you will be able to hold the lines till I return. Gradier Xanatus stated while tapping onto Gustav's shoulder. I'm faster than you. I'll get to him way earlier than you can. Let me come with you. Gustav replied with a resilient tone. He felt since they were on a topic of time and speed. It would be best for him to go with or even go alone. Fair point but Gustav. Gradier Xanatus was about to refuse again when Gustav sensed something. Wait. He voiced out with a tone of urgency. Huh. Gradier Xanatus uttered as he noticed Gustav's odd expression. Hover has been activated. Gustav suddenly ascended into the air with extreme speed. Gradier Xanatus didn't have the ability to fly but he had a flight device strapped to his feet. He activated it and flew up as well. Kid is fast. I guess he wasn't wrong. Gradier Xanatus thought as he tried to reach Gustav's current height in the sky which was quite difficult. What's wrong? Gradier Xanatus voiced out as he reached Gustav's height in the sky. He failed. Gustav answered while staring downwards with glowing golden and red eyes. What? Gradier Xanatus voiced out with a tone of disbelief. He failed to stop it. Gustav repeated with a grave tone as he turned to stare at Gradier Xanatus. The millions of infected are on their way. He added causing a Gradier Xanatus to be overcome with a feeling of dread. What about the mixed breed? This question slipped out of his lips as his face shone with an intensely troubled expression. I don't see any. Gustav was responding as he turned to look downwards. Up ahead once more before suddenly turning silent. He could spot a gigantic figure over hundred miles ahead within an uncountable swarm of infected. This fit the exact description Gradier Xanatus had given him earlier. It's coming as well. Gustav confirmed as he retracted his sight. This city is done for. He added. Twenty minutes ago, Gildian City. Now there's no way you will be able to give out any commands. Red Shadow voiced out as he sighed in relief. In front of him now was a man in dark and silver technological suit. He also had a slightly cracked helmet put on and some red shadows could be seen connected to his. They were currently at the foot of the mountain red shadow bound BJ2. Behind them the hordes of infected which numbered in the millions could be seen. It turned out this was the last culprit and Red Shadow had managed to bind him here after defeating him. 
the technological suit he currently had on was so advanced it made him invisible and completely erased his presence earlier on which made things a little difficult for Red Shadow. However with Red Shadow being a seasoned veteran in the field of completing dangerous missions, he managed to use his experience and sharp intuition to bring the last culprit down. Cough cough I see and I was so close to completing the last phase too. The man in the suit voiced out with a few coughs. You have amassed quite the number of infected. Tell me. Red Shadow squatted in front of him as he spoke. Will they ever move without a command? Red Shadow inquired. They won't. The man in the black and silver suit responded. Good. Where is the corpse of the creature you plan to revive? Red Shadow asked. The last culprit was unable to move his body but his eyes shifted to the side. Revealing that he was staring in a particular direction. Underground over there. Red Shadow voiced out as he turned to stare in the same direction. How did you manage to? The man in the suit was speaking when Red Shadow interrupted. We got the rest of your comrades too. BJ told me there was an underground space in that direction. Surely you must have seen that I have him bound up there just like I did to you down here. Red Shadow added. The last culprit had a look of defeat as he stared down. Red Shadow stood upright at this point and turned around to stare in the same direction. You're the last one and luckily I was able to get you before you gave the command. Red Shadow voiced out once more as he began taking steps forward. Who said I was the last one? The man in black and silver suit suddenly voiced out. Red Shadow paused his footsteps at this point as a sense of foreboding washed over him. What do you mean? Red Shadow eyes squinted as he questioned. Who said I was the last one? His lips curved into a mischievous smile as the man in black and silver suit repeated the same question. Red Shadow's eyes suddenly widened as he turned around to stare forward. Swoosh. The instant he sped forward a loud voice spread forth from invisible loudspeakers. Trample upon the lands and overrun the next city you ECOUNTER on your way southwards. Swoosh. Red Shadow had gotten into the underground entrance and was speeding down a tunnel way but it seemed like it was too late. Destroy everything in your path. Regardless of what it is and await further instructions upon OVERRUNING the next city. Chapter 998 Doom Arrives. Bang. A loud blast suddenly resounded across the area as the speaker stopped making sound. Red Shadow had gotten hold of the person who was responsible but the deed was already done. Currently the millions of infected on the surface had began to move according to the command they had been given. Bam. 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 Numerous feet trampling upon the ground reverberated across the vicinity as these infected charged forward. The ceiling of the underground area trembled repeatedly as dust drizzled down. Within a space with multiple technological equipment and holographic screens all over. Red Shadow held onto the neck of a lady with silver-colored hair. She was also in technological suit but underground she didn't wear her helmet since this space was untainted till Red Shadow broke through it. Gurgbull. The underground area trembled intensely as a loud crash was heard from underneath. Red Shadow didn't need to see before he knew that the creature that was being kept here was getting out of the underground area. Red Shadow could feel indescribable and domineering energy from the creature as well as its gigantic size. Stop this right now and ask them to come back here. Red Shadow voiced out as his eyes turned menacingly red. I'm afraid I cannot do that. She responded. Kerch. Red Shadow tightened his hand around her neck causing some sounds to ring out as her trachea nearly collapsed from the inside. It wasn't a request. Red Shadow stated. They won't. Lee. Ten. Un. Till. They. Ha. Bay. Calm. Pleaded the task re. Quired of them. She said while grimacing in pain. Red Shadow had heard this before so he knew she wasn't completely telling a lie or telling a lie at all. Still do it before they all get away. He stated with a sharp tone before letting her go. She landed on her feet and dropped to her knees as she coughed repeatedly. Looking up. She spotted Red Shadow's menacing glare and quickly jumped to her feet. The technological suit almost covering her entire figure completely. Expanded. It covered up her neck and reached her chin area before stopping. Come back. Her voice traveled far and wide across the vicinity as she spoke with a calm tone. 
Gradier Xanatus sent his senses out and to his expected disappointment. There was no response from the infected charging towards Luchin City. Again. He knew it would be of no use but he was holding on to a last string of hope that the millions of infected would listen and Luchin City would be saved. Come back here. Desist from O-V-E-R-R-U-N-I-N-G the city. She yelled out once more but to no avail. Red Shadow's eyes were laced with disappointment and frustration as he sent out a fist. Bam. The silver-haired lady got sent flying and slammed into the wall before passing out. Red Shadow proceeded to grab her and sped out of the tunnel. On his way out he spotted a massive hole that had spread across the ceiling within the tunnel way. Red Shadow leapt out through it and could already spot the millions of infected heading towards Luchin City from the back as they even trampled upon one another. A dark and gigantic figure towering so tall that it reached the sky could be spotted as well. Shit. Red Shadow couldn't help but just curse as he spotted this. It turned out he had been fooled by BJ and the others. They mentioned only one person was left but it was actually two. A male and a female. Red Shadow was unable to sense the last person amongst the culprits due to her staying underground. The person he was fighting earlier who he thought to be the last person and also the person who would give the command was just the one surveilling the environment just in case. He had managed to delay Red Shadow and gave his partner just enough time to make the commands. Now there was nothing that could be done to stop these infected with a mixture of mixed breeds. Mixed bloods. Humans and Slarkovs. They may have caught the culprits but right now the situation was like winning the battle while losing the war. Red Shadow proceeded to drop the last lady with her partner and bound her in place as well. Red Shadow was unbothered about transporting them at the moment. He could come get them later since there was no escaping his shadow restraints especially when they were all Slakovs. I need to at least deal with the big one before it gets to the wall. Red Shadow said internally as he created a portal in front of him. Zechahinzen. As the flower-shaped portal opened he moved in and it closed behind him. Thousands of feet ahead a red portal appeared far above the sky. Red shadow figure phased out of it and began to fall across the sky. His body was falling towards the head of a towering tall beast-like creature with ashy skin. Thousand rending red shadow seal. Red shadow voiced loudly as a massive red silhouette appeared behind him while he fell. Zwi. Z. 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 Red shadows began to phase out of the silhouettes in the hundreds. As these shadows phased out they mixed with the shadow of the massive creature. Bam. Red shadow landed on the head of the creature with his fist slamming onto its crown. The creature made a low growl that showed it was a little disturbed by the attack but not so much. The creature's head had similarities with that of a bald lion. Its head had curvy horns protruding from every side which made it look like the creature was wearing a crown. It had golden and dark eyes which were up to eight in number with a massive muscular body standing on two legs like a man but extremely furry. It had ashy furs all over with a diamond-shaped object embedded into its chest area. The diamond-shaped object embedded into its chest area was the only part of its body with a different color besides its eyes. Chapter 999 Red Shadows Defeat Author's note. Unedited chapters. It was bigger than three human beings placed side by side due to the creature's massiveness. Four thick vine-like tails could be seen protruding from its rear as well and to top it all off. It was more than 4,000 feet tall. The wall surrounding the city was only 3,000 feet tall yet this creature was over a thousand feet taller. This already spelled doom for Luchin City. With the amount of energy Red Shadow felt from it. He was sure no one would be able to defeat it amongst the officers unless with joint effort. The problem was. With the millions of other infected also approaching the city. Dividing forces to take care of this creature as well as the infected would be ineffective. It would only last for a bit before everyone was either annihilated or the city was forcefully penetrated. Red Shadow decided he would do all he could to keep the creature in place and damage it. At this point one of the massive thick vine-like tails of the creature was stabbing towards its head area where Red Shadow was situated. The shadows he had sent out earlier has mixed with the shadow of the creature and were up to a thousand in number. Freeze. Red Shadow voiced out just when the vine-like tails was close to making contact. Gim. The shadow of the creature suddenly turned red and it found itself unable to move an inch. 
Swarihex. The creature made an incomprehensible sound as it lost control of its body movement. Finding itself trapped in place it struggled to move but to no avail. Red Shadow who stood atop his head had a struggling expression as he bound his hands before leaping forward. He had only managed to stop the creature from moving for a few seconds yet he was already sweating so much as it happened to be a cumbersome task. Red Shadow landed on the nose of the creature and began to gather immense energy as his entire body lit up with a red glow. Hiya! He yelled out as he drew his left arm back to the limit before. Throwing his fist forward at one of the four left eyes of the creature. Bang! A loud sound of collision reverberated across the place as Red Shadow's fist pierced through one of the gigantic left eye of the creature. Although the energy surrounding him dimmed a little his arm was still glowing intensely as he pulled it out of the creature's eye. Kreex. Ashi Goo poured out of its eye intensely as the creature cried out in pain once more. Kreexheek. This time its voive was at least hundred times louder than before add the entire environment quaked intensely due to it. The grounds began to split apart as the creature struggled intensely to free itself from Red Shadow's restraint while its one of its left eye bled a fountain. However, Red Shadow was still not done. Despite sweating crazily, he punched forward multiple more times to make sure he ruined more of the eyes of the creature. Bang! 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 Squishy and popping sounds rang out as he managed to get the rest of the three left eyes which at this point were completely ruined. Great Ear Xanatus's glow had dimmed by a whole lot at this point and he was sweating buckets. His entire outfit was drenched in salty liquid. Great Ear Xanatus was not ready to give in yet despite nearly expending his bloodline energy completely. He reached towards the right and was about to get down in destroying the rest of the creature's eyes. Kaijarl. The creature suddenly yelled out again as its entire body vibrated intensely. Red Shadow's eyes widened as one of the tails of creature suddenly arrived by his side. It was too late for him to dodge but he managed to create a portal. Bang. The thick vine-like tail with crystallized features slammed into the back of the creature's head where Red Shadow had directed the portal to. However Red Shadow was unaware that he wasn't in the green yet. Before he knew it another tail had appeared behind him. Bang! This one slammed directly onto his back. Causing him to collide with the thick face of the creature. Red Shadow felt like he was hit with the full moving force of multiple mountains joined together. To make matters worse he was low on energy so the protective aura always surrounding him had thinned out a whole lot. Bone cracking sounds rang out and Red Shadow found himself slowly losing consciousness as he fell. Before his eyes closed up completely. He felt his figure grabbed by another crystallized tail of the creature. Bang. He figure was flung to the back and slammed into a mountain hundreds of feet away. The gigantic mixed breed infected that had managed to regain control of his body wasn't done with the insect that had just damaged his left eye. It picked Red Shadow up again and slammed him into the ground multiple times with his tail. It still wasn't done with him and flung him into the air before repeated swinging out all of its four tails. Bang! 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 Red Shadow's unconscious body was being smacked from place to place in mid-air by the ruthless infected mixed breed. Bone cracking sounds just kept ringing out as blood oozed out of Red Shadow's orifices in the process of being smacked around. The creature decided it had had enough dealing with the ant that made it furious and proceeded to raise one of its hand to give the finishing attack. Its muscular arm rose up above Red Shadow's unconscious body that was falling from the air and it proceeded smack downwards with his hand like it was dealing with a mosquito. Its massive palm descended with speed and intensity to the extent that before it even collided with the ground. The grounds had already split open from the sheer force. Bang! He slammed Red Shadow's unconscious body into the ground with its gigantic palm. Causing the earth to split apart across a radius of close to a hundred miles. Chapter 1000 Last Line of Defense. After it had finished doing that, the creature proceeded to continue moving. It was unfazed by how it had further destroyed the environment and began walking forward after dealing with the supposed troublesome insect. It was unknown whether Red Shadow was alive or not. A gigantic pit had been formed where the earth had caved in. Gee bam, gee bam, gee bam. The creature continued on its way towards the wall with the other millions of infected surrounding it. They all seemed like ants compared to it. 
despite the fact that some infected were rather massive since they were mixed breeds as well. The disturbance with Red Shadow had caused some of them to get stomped to meet past by the massive creature but with its low-level intelligence it was unconcerned about friendly fire. The main aim still remained overrunning Luchin City and destroying everything that stood in its way. The present. This city is done for. Gustav voiced out as he looked up ahead. Great Ear Xanatus made a low hissing sound as he spread out his senses as well. Do you see Red Shadow? Great Ear Xanatus questioned. No. Gustav voiced out with a worried tone. But I do see holes where the left eyes of the creature were located. Gustav added. He must have engaged the creature. Great Ear Xanatus stated as he began gathering energy. Let's hope he escaped somewhere after dealing that level of damage on the Jisodinum. Great Ear Xanatus added as his eyes turned light blue. The Jisodinum was the name of this creature when it still lived centuries back. It was a guardian of Gildian City back then and was on the side of the residents but right now it could only listen to the command it had been given. Based on what Gustav had heard about it. He knew it was almost on the level of Tabitha who was trapped in the underground dungeons of the MBO camp. This creature would be capable of destroying the entire city itself yet it was being accompanied by an army of millions. Gustav had a bad feeling welling from within but they both knew that going to look for Red Shadow at the moment when they were one of the most powerful forces on the battlefield would reduce the MBO chances of winning against this horde when their odds were already very low. I'll inform the others of the impending danger and request for more reinforcements. Great Ear Xanatus voiced out as he flew downwards towards the wall. Gustav also flew downwards as well but he headed towards a particular direction of the wall quickly. Bang. He landed in front of a chocolate-skinned officer with white curly hair. I need your help. Gustav voiced out. Huh? Officer Fola exclaimed with a look of curiosity. Remember Red Shadow? The masked man with great ear Xanatus when this whole thing began? Gustav inquired. Yes I do. Why? Officer Fola asked. I want you to find him. Gustav stated before he began explaining a few things to Fola about what was coming and what he assumed had happened so far. You think he might need help or may be trapped behind the millions of infected heading here? Officer Fola exclaimed with a slightly disturbed expression. Yes. I'll be battling the infected so I won't have the chance to look for him. Gustav answered. I'll do but how will I get past the tall creature? Officer Fola said with a look of decisiveness and contemplation at the same time. I'll keep it busy. Also. Gustav voiced out as he moved closer to Fola and placed his hand on his left shoulder. Can I trust you? Gustav questioned. Fola had a curious look as he had heard that. Yeah sure. HNM. That's not very convincing but should you leak what I'm about to do to anyone I'll send you to the afterlife. Gustav threatened. Huh. Fola eyes widened as he muttered. Bloodline transfer has been activated. Are you ready to defend this wall to the very end? I. Go out there and send them to hell. I.e. Loud battle cries rang out as the current number of MBO officers on the ground charged forward at the incoming horde infected after Great Ear Xanatus's briefing. He had told them about the incoming wave that was way more than the numbers that had appeared earlier. He didn't give them the exact amount because he didn't want to weaken their moral. Only himself. Red Shadow and Gustav knew the full information about what they were currently facing. There were up to 20,000 MBO officers here presently with more than 10,000 mixed blood mechanical bot from the HMR Warfare Department manned by experienced officers. There were also more than 20,000 A. I bots that had been sent as reinforcements. This made the total force of the MBO officers here increase by a whole lot but this was an army of 60,000 plus going against one of over 6 million all enhanced with a very powerful mixed breed also on their side. The odds were not in their favor at all. Great Ear Xanatus had once more requested for the city to be evacuated before engaging in the battle but the higher ups were still debating on it. They were the last defense this city had and Great Ear Xanatus decided they would try their best to prevent the infected from getting through even though it was looking like an impossible task. Swoosh. Gustav was way faster than Great Ear Xanatus so he had already gone past a lot of the infected from above. Massive bat-like wings had sprouted out of his back as he flew forward with speed and arrived in front of the massive creature. 
ashy goo was still pouring out of the left side of the Jisadinam's face. Now that Gustav was closer, he could sense the energy of the creature better and knew that defeating this creature was not something he could do alone. It swung its hand at Gustav the moment he spotted the insect-like being flying in front of it. Gustav was still able to move to the side in mid-air as he landed on the creature's arm and began running across it. Sprint has been activated. Chapter 1001, Battle with Jisadinum. Read author's note below. Author's note. Unedited chapters. Gustav was still able to move to the side in mid-air as he landed on the creature's arm and began sprinting across it. Sprint has been activated. The creature was aware of the presence on his arm and proceeded to wave its second gigantic hand. Trying to swat Gustav like a fly. Gustav leapt upwards at this time as a gigantic milky colored sword appeared in his grasp. He stabbed the sword forward as his body flew towards the forehead area of the creature. At this same instant one of the creature's crystallized vine-like tail swung towards Gustav from the right. It looked like it was too fast and was already centimeters away from making contact with Gustav when he spotted it. Zwi. Before it could make contact. Gradier Xanatus appeared beside Gustav's with his palm straightened and swung out. Bam. Gradier Xanatus's palm that was covered with a bluish glow. Slammed into the vine causing a metallic clang to ring out. You may be faster but I have better reaction speed. Gradier Xanatus voiced out after repelling the tail. I had it. Gustav stated as the gigantic 20 feet atomic sword stabbed into the forehead of the Jisadinum. The creature made a low grunt as the atomic blade only managed to pierce its forehead for about half a feet. For a creature as large as this. That was barely a flesh wound. Gustav was astonished at the resistance of this creature's body. It was so tough that atomic disintegration found it hard to get rid of its skin even when he used enough force with the blad. Fui. The creature's hand came crashing forward with the intention of slapping Gustav off its face again. Gustav swung forward and placed both feet on the Jisadinum's face before pushing backwards with force. A small flesh ripping sound rang out as his body flew backwards while he pulled the atomic sword out of its forehead. Ashi Goo oozed out of the small wound for a bit while Gustav managed to dodge swing of the creature's hand. He paused after dodging and swung out his arm once more with intensity. The blade cleaved through the creature's wrist area but only cut in lightly. The creature made another loud noise as it swung its arm around while Gustav's atomic blade was still stuck in its sturdy skin. Gustav let go of the atomic sword to avoid being swung away while the atomic sword disintegrated into light particles. However he had underestimated the strength of the creature. Whoosh. Even after letting go. The wind generated from the swing of Jisadinum's palm was so fierce. Gustav found himself getting tossed across the place by a force that was 20 times worse than a tornado. Gradier Xanatus was currently behind the creature and at the moment his hand was swinging towards its neck area. Bang. 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 His palm which was still gleaming with blue light slammed multiple times into the neck of the creature causing loud sounds of collision to ring out. Jisadinum was about to take opportunity of the winds tossing Gustav around and send a critical attack towards him when Gradier Xanatus's attacks hit. While it only felt like a pebble kept hitting him at his neck area. It was nevertheless disturbing. Jisadinum made a loud growl as it reached out to grab Gradier Xanatus who managed to escape its swing by a hair length. Gustav managed to stabilize himself at this point but Gradier Xanatus was in danger. Multiple of Jisadinum's tail was headed towards him from all sides and Gradier Xanatus wasn't quick enough. Bam. Bam. He managed to react in time and slam his palm into three of them. Repelling them. However the fourth one was only inches from slamming into him from above when Gustav arrived before him. Swish. The atomic blade in his hand slammed heavily into the tail cutting halfway through before sending flying in the opposite direction. Yes. I'm still faster and so is my reaction speed. Gustav voiced out causing Gradier Xanatus to chuckle. We might not be able to beat it but stalling it is possible. Gradier Xanatus voiced out as the thrusters beneath his feet blasted out intensely causing him to fly towards the left with speed. The massive arm of the creature had appeared in between both of them in the next instant. Stall it for what? If we cannot beat it. We might as well have lost the battle. 
Gustav voiced out as he flew forward. Stall it for long enough till the world government makes a decision about the fate of this city. Great Ear Xanatus answered as he brought his fist down upon the hand of the creature. Bang. The creature's arm swayed downwards from the hidden Gustav proceeded to stab another gigantic atomic sword into Jisadinum's shoulder. He positioned it so well. It stabbed more than three feet deep into the joint area. Gustav still didn't let go of the blade even after he sensed the second hand of the creature swatting towards him. Hiya! He screamed out as he increased the size of the atomic sword while it was still embedded in the shoulder area of the creature. Juriz. The atomic sword grew from 20 feet long and 3 feet wide to 60 feet long and 7 feet wide. At this point it had stabbed more than 10 feet deep into the creature's body which made it easier since it was already embedded into its body. However at this same moment the other hand arrived behind Gustav. Bang! Great Ear Xanatus arrived in time and managed to stop it from going further as Gustav kept increasing the length of the atomic blade. Gustav's hand trembled intensely as he expended lots of energy while still pushing further. Great Ear Xanatus that had managed to stop the hand of the creature in the meantime was also trembling even while mustering all the energy he could. Are you there? Great Ear Xanatus asked while a groan escaped from his lips. Almost. Gustav answered as sweat dribbled down his forehead. Chapter 1002 Jisadinum uses a familiar ability. Swee. Shwee. Swai. Swee. The four tails of the creature came swinging at them in the next instant and with both of them being preoccupied with what they were doing. There was no way to stop this. Suddenly a muscular lady in orange patterned MBO uniform appeared from above. Kya. She screamed out as she unleashed two fists covered my massive metallic gauntlets while falling from the air. Bang. She slammed into the first tail and propelled herself up with a metallic board that just appeared in midair. Bang. Bang. Bam. She moved extremely quickly. Leaping from place to place as she punched the tails of the Jisadinum away. It sounded like metal was colliding with another metal as her smooth black metallic gauntlets slammed into Jisadinum tails. After the crisis had been averted, Gustav's body T transformed into that of a mixture between the demonic bunny and the mutated boar. This wasn't with the power of combination as Gustav could combine two of his transformations without having to use them. His arms budged intensely as his muscles expanded. He forcefully pushed the atomic sword deeper into the creature as he also expanded it. Kya. He yelled out as he pushed forward while Great Ear Xanatus restrained the second arm and the officer that had just arrived dealt with the tails. Gustav was increasing the atomic sword size to the extent that it had already stabbed more than halfway through the joint area of Jisadinum and it would completely cut through in a little more time. Jisadinum growled with a loud voice as he got tired of these disturbances while also feeling that this bunch were about to deal great damage like the insect earlier. The massive diamond-shaped golden-colored item embedded in its chest area suddenly glowed up. It's about to use it. Disengage. Great Ear Xanatus yelled out. I'm almost there. Gustav shouted out in response as he kept pushing. Disengage right now. Great Ear Xanatus yelled out but still didn't let go of the creature's arm because he knew Gustav would be affected. Gustav could sense a familiar energy as the massive diamond-shaped item embedded in the chest of the creature glowed up but he couldn't put his thumb on the exact source of this familiarity. Suddenly a spectrum of energy traveled from the edges to the middle of the massive diamond energy and in the next instant. Dhuwush. Durinanen. A golden wave traveled forth from the creature. Spreading across the surroundings. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. This wave traveled across the entire vicinity. Surrounding even the army of infected and the MBO officers all battling on the wall as well as the ground. I can't move. The lady who was about to throw a fist earlier voiced as she stood on a metallic board. Great Ear Xanatus also paused in place. I told you to disengage. You mentioned this power. How come it affects even everyone on the battlefield? Gustav voiced out as he also froze in place unable to keep pushing the atomic sword forward. His hand hung on the hilt of the atomic blade as his body just froze in place while every other person on the battlefield ranging from the infected to even the MBO officers paused in place as well. Why do you think the creature is way dangerous than it's supposed to be? This is just one of its overwhelming power. Great Ear Xanatus voiced in response. 
he had wanted them to get far enough so they wouldn't be affected by this power when it was activated. This is. Cosmic superiority. Gustav's eyes widened as he realized why he felt this energy was familiar. Yes it is. The system answered from within. How? Gustav said internally with a surprised look. Who said only mixed bloods or other supernatural aliens were capable of achieving cosmic superiority? Even beasts can achieve it if they're blessed and chosen by the cosmos. The system replied. Ah. Great ear Xanatus made a loud groaning sound as Jusidinum grabbed hold of him. Bone cracking sounds began to ring out as he squeezed Great ear Xanatus in his massive hand. It proceeded to grab hold of the other officer with its other hand as well while Gustav was still hanging from the massive atomic sword still embedded in its shoulder. It seemed to have decided to ignore Gustav in the meantime while wanting to deal with these two first and leave Gustav for last. Within the city they were wondering why the everywhere had gone silent. They had no idea it was due to this massive mixed breed putting everyone including the millions of infected into a frozen state. Gustav had a conflicted expression as he watched the creature slowly crushing both of them in its hand. He was unable to move, channel his bloodline or even use any ability in this state just like the others. There was only one thought crossing his mind right now and that was the only option he had. He had initially decided he was never going to make use of his cosmic superiority since this was not only a battlefield filled with thousands of officers but they would also be affected by it if he was to use it. However there seemed to be no other option at the moment as Gradier Xanatus would meet his end if Gustav decided not to act at this moment. He now understood why Jisidinum was feared and Gradier Xanatus saw it as an impossible mission to win. Let's see whose cosmic superiority is more powerful. Gustav muttered as he closed his eyes. Suddenly. Jurin. A mixture of pinkish and reddish energy blasted forth from his frame the instant he opened his eyes. A cross-shaped glow could be seen in his pupils as the powerful energy blasted forth from his frame causing Jisidinum to step back back in disbelief. Not only was Gustav's Yarki abnormal it had effects that Jisidinum's Yarki didn't have. Jisidinum could feel a weird urge building up from within which caused its knees to nearly buckle. It felt the urge to kneel like it was in the presence of a superior being. However it fought back with its own Yarki. Chapter 1003 Gustav vs. Jisidinum. Author's Note. Unedited Chapters. It felt the urge to kneel like it was in the presence of a superior being. However it fought back with its own Yarki. The wave of golden energy blasted forth from its chest area again trying to battle with that of Gustav's. However. The instant Gustav activated his Yarki. He regained the ability to move. He let go of the atomic sword and slowly elevated as he stared down at the creature. How is he able to move? Gradier Xanatus wondered internally with a look of shock. This was the same as the other female officer as well as the many officers on the battlefield that could spot him. Someone is moving. How is he unaffected? What was that energy he just released? What did he just do? Such thoughts ran through the minds of many officers as their eyes were locked in Gustav's direction. Gustav's Yarki was not taking full effect due to Jisidinum's Yarki clashing with it. Both Yarkis were currently fighting for supremacy however one effect that was prevalent was everyone still standing with the inability to move. The domineering wave of Gustav's Yarki made everyone's feet buckle as they found they falling to the ground on their knees. The infected and the officers were all affected by this but the burning effect was currently not taking place. Let them go. Gustav voiced in a low but very strong tone. The Jisidinum found itself slowly releasing its grip around Gradier Xanatus and the other lady subconsciously. It made a loud growling sound as the diamond item in its chest area glowed intensely and suddenly shot out a golden beam of destruction. Gustav raised both his arms and crossed them to block the beam that had suddenly blasted forward. Iro Silk grew out of his body and made a covering around him just in time. Bang. He had not expected this and was shot thousands of feet backwards upon collision as the Iro silk surrounding him shattered to pieces instantly. Gustav slammed into the east side of wall. Creating a massive hole within. The power of his Yarki weakened after this hit and the Jisidinum regained complete control of itself. It is able to attack with its Yarki. Gustav said internally as he slowly picked himself out of the hole. 
it was as if he had not just taken massive damage. His entire body was drenched in blood and his bones were making loud cracking noises as he slowly pulled himself out. Jisadinam is at the parallel stage of cosmic superiority. The system revealed. That is why it has more cosmic superiority related abilities. Gustav felt it made sense now. However what didn't make sense was how Gustav's Yarki was still causing Jisadinam to nearly submit even when Jisadinam was supposed to be at a higher level. Gustav injuries had began to heal despite how grievous they were but the Jisadinam was not interested in giving him time to heal up completely. Zoom. It had shot out another golden beam. Gustav wanted to move out of the way but he knew that if he did that, the wall would be destroyed along with everyone standing on it in this particular area. Pa. Slapping his hand on the wall. Iro silk suddenly spread out from the point of impact to every other part of the wall. As if Gustav wasn't satisfied with this. His body temperature suddenly dropped instantly and thick frost spread across the wall acting as another protective barrier. Zing. The Jiko Hakai Katana appeared in his grasp in the next instant. He tightened his hands around it and swung in a vertical format. Zwin. A large reddish arc cut across the air, carrying destructive power with it as it headed in the direction of the incoming golden beam. Despite its size being similar to a mountain, the golden beam was at least 10 times more larger than it was. Boom. Both destructive attacks met each other midway which caused a phenomenon where tiny rifts were formed in mid-air for a bit. The reddish arc contended well with the golden beam and even managed to get rid of it to a certain extent but the beam was too powerful. Despite reducing in power it kept shooting forward with intense speed. Swoosh. At this point Gustav flew upwards. Bang. The golden beam slammed into the protective layers Gustav had created before the wall and tore through them. It was finally stopped by the main wall after it had lost more than 80% of its power. However it still managed to blast a hole in the wall. Gustav flew forward. Causing Jisadinam to target him. This way the next attack would not be directed at the wall. The diamond shape item embedded in its chest glowed up once more as it fired more beams at Gustav. Swoosh. 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 F W W O O O S S H. Fortunately Gustav wasn't taken by surprise this time so he was able to dodge every single attack despite its immense size. As he flew in the direction of the Jisadinum once more. He let out more energy from his Yarki. Swish. The waves spread from him once more causing Jisadinum to quickly let out its energy from Yarki as well. Ba A A M M. Both energies clashed once more and began pushing against one another. Everyone in the vicinity felt immensely uncomfortable as the two domineering and irregular energies clashed. The Jisadinum pushed forward as it flung Gradier Xanatus and the other female officer away. It had realized at this point that Gustav was the true threat so it was willing to do whatever it took to get rid of Gustav. It swung its massive hand forward in a bid to swat Gustav downwards. The Jiko Hakai Katana in Gustav's grasp swung out at the same time. Slash. A massive cut was left on the arm of the creature as Gustav flew to the side to dodge the attack. He was still way faster than the creature and so long as it was using physical attacks Gustav was sure he would be able to dodge unless he ran out of energy or was preoccupied with something else. Chapter 1004 Fight Lost. Swoosh. Swoosh. Slash. Slash. Gustav kept dashing across the place as he repeated left injuries on the body of the creature. Jisadinam was slowly starting to weaken from Gustav's constant pushing with the Yarki. It couldn't understand how Gustav's Yarki was so domineering that his own couldn't match up despite how it was supposed to be stronger. Its tails flew from all direction as it kept throwing attacks at Gustav. Gustav proceeded to grab hold of one of its tails after dodging three of the just the tip of one of its tails was thrice Gustav's size. Yet he managed to make contact. He would had dodged but he wanted to test out a theory. Kiyuchua. Sub greater than less than, sub. Jisadinam yelled out as its tail began disintegrating into ashes. This was something atomic disintegration was able to achieve yet Gustav's Yarki was having such an effect. Looks like it still works. So long as I make contact. Gustav noticed as he held his palm forward. One of Jisadinam's tail had completely burned off at this point. 
It grew warier of Gustav after Gustav performed that action. The diamond item in its chest glowed up once more as crystallizing purplish shards began growing out of its skin. It began covering the creature from head to toe which would serve as an armor. Gustav wasn't going to wait around for it to complete this process. He charged forward in mid-air as a massive atomic sword appeared in his grasp. I need more speed and power before it covers its entire body as well as its injury. Gustav thought in less than a second as an idea appeared in his mind. Activating it might take a lot of energy but if it's only for an instant. I won't run out of energy. Gustav said internally. Ultimate combination has been activated. His body transformed speedily as he stretched the massive atomic sword forward in the direction of Jusidinum's left shoulder. Zoom. His figure cut a silver and crimson streak across the air as he instantly arrived before Jusidinum. 3. A loud ripping sound rang out as he directly stabbed through the large tear already around the creature's shoulder. Gustav's whole figure tore through and what was heard in the next instant was a large thump. Bam. Jusidinum's left hand which was more massive than that of a skyscraper fell to the ground. Causing a land quake from its high mass. Grua. It roared loudly in pain as its arm fell off its shoulder. Ashy-colored goo flowed out like a fountain as the creature stepped back subconsciously. The arm that had initially been crystallizing with the purplish shards began to return to normal as its source of power was disconnected. Gustav had finally managed to strike the blow he initially wanted to. With the injury he had inflicted intidally. He was able to successfully sever its arm from its shoulder. Gustav deactivated ultimate combination in the next instant so as to save energy as the massive atomic sword disintegrated as well. Jisidinum swung out once more with its right hand as it noticed Gustav flying towards it. Maneuvering downwards. Gustav dodged and made contact with its arm from underneath. However now that the rest of its body had been crystallized it was unaffected by Gustav's touch that would have caused its arm to be turned to ash due to the effect of Yarki. There was only one part of its body that was not covered by this crystalline purplish shards that acted as armor. Its head. Gustav muttered as he swerved from side to side dodging the more of the creature's attacks. Gustav flew upwards at this point. Surpassing Jisidinum's height in the sky. Fwish. He kept ascending with intense speed till he had climbed a height of over a hundred thousand feet. The Jisidinum wondered what Gustav was up to but with its inability to fly it couldn't go after Gustav. However the creature was well capable of leaping high and it already had the intention of doing so. It still wasn't fast enough as Gustav paused after reaching a particular height in the sky. He turned upside down to face the earth as he activated a skill. Lightning Blitz has been activated. 3. Electric arcs were generated as Gustav's figure suddenly blurred. Zoom. His figure disappeared instantly as a lightning arc cut through the sky and appeared a hundred miles below instantly. Jisidinum who was about to leap upwards to go after Gustav suddenly saw him appear right above him with a weapon in hand. Gustav stabbed downwards with the Jiko Hakai Katana the moment he arrived above Jisidinum's head. Freehan. At the same moment a protective energy phased out of the diamond-like item embedded in Jisidinum's chest. A transparent golden-colored barrier suddenly appeared around Jisidinum's head at the same instant Gustav's blade was about to make contact with its head. Klon. A loud sound of collision rang out as the Jiko Hakai katana slammed into the barrier. A stream of energy that was sent forth from the katana suddenly redirected back upwards. Boom. The force from the energy of the collision slammed heavily into Gustav sending him flying backwards as he spiraled in mid-air repeatedly. Bone cracking sounds rang out as Gustav vomited out a mouthful of blood while still getting blasted backwards from the destructive energy. Jisidinum made another weird sound as cracks appeared all over the protective barrier that surrounded its head at the last second. It ignored that and charged after Gustav's body. Gear. It yelled out as it raised its hand and grabbed Gustav's body before slamming him into the ground. Boom. Massive shockwaves spread out as infected and officers alike were affected by the impact of Gustav slamming into the ground. It jumped upwards and landed on the exact spot it slammed Gustav into. Boom. This once again created rupturing waves as the creature's attacks caused the earth to split apart. A massive crater had been formed where Gustav's figure was slammed into. 
Chapter 1005 I can't lose consciousness right now. The creature didn't seem satisfied and wreaked even more havoc with its last arm. Bang. 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 Sounds of collision rang out repeatedly as it punched and stomped upon the same area. The crater created had spread across more than 20 miles at this point and multiple infected along with MBO officers and even AI bots had fallen into it. Gustav's status was unknown after more than five minutes of repeated pounding but the creature seemed to have been satisfied after doing this continuously so it finally stopped. The whole place once more descended into silence as the creature stood in place with its golden aura getting stronger with every passing second. It looked forward in the direction of the wall that had cracks all over right now with multiple parts having holes. It began stepping forward without releasing its yarki. Its intention was to get rid of the wall now that no one was standing in its way. Including the infected. Stomp. 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 With every movement it crossed more than a hundred feet and was getting closer to the wall. It wasn't in a hurry as it moved but it was still very fast and would get to the wall in less than 10 seconds. Despite only having a single arm currently. Jusidinum would still be capable of ruining the city without anyone to stop it. Gradier Xanatus had repeatedly called for backup since he could still speak even though he was unable to move his body. However. The aircraft that were closing in on the city found themselves unable to move further after reaching the affected areas of both Yarkus. They couldn't attack nor move so it was useless. The Jusidinum arrived a few feet away from the wall in no time and paused for a bit. Just as it raised its hand. It felt a presence from behind. Hey. It quickly turned around as this familiar voice drifted into its ears but the moment it did. Fuuchi. A four feet sword with reddish blade stabbed through what was left of the protective barrier surrounding its head and cut into its forehead. It was merely a needle due to the Jisidinum's large size but in the next instant it burst forth with immense destructive energy. Haya. Gustav yelled out as he poured energy into the Jiko Hakai Katana and pushed forward as much as he could. 3. A blast of crimson light shone forth as the Jiko Hakai Katana ripped through Jisidinum's forehead. Its forehead made a loud sound as Gustav tore further into it and infiltrated the creature's skull. The energy blasted forth into its head wreaked havoc within and in the next few seconds. Z. Jisidinum's golden eyes slowly turned dim as it fell over. Boom. A loud sound rang out as Jisidinum fell to the back. Causing another massive shockwave to spread across the environment. Gustav who was within its forehead was holding his breath as his entire body was covered in brain matter and blood. He pulled out the Jiko Hakai Katana from a wall section within Jisidinum's brain after he confirmed the creature was dead. He stood in place for several seconds despite knowing that he had won the battle because of an unexpected reason. Sub greater than. Sub. Does host wish to absorb this parallel being cosmic superiority? What is this? I can absorb cosmic superiority. Gustav was pleasantly surprised as he saw this notification. Well you've never fought a cosmic superior being so it's understandable that you had no idea you could. The system responded. It didn't make it easy as well. Gustav had to admit that this was the craziest battle he had gotten into. Retract your Yarki. The system stated. Gustav's eyes widened as he realized that his Yarki was still activated. Now that Jisidinum was dead. The full effects of his Yarki would have returned and everyone on the battlefield would be suffering burns. Zoom. He quickly retracted it. Causing the entire battlefield to return to normal as everyone found themselves in control of their body functions once more. I'm almost out of energy. Gustav muttered with a look of urgency. Are you going it's absorb the cosmic superiority or what? The system questioned. Of course. Gustav answered. So long as it helps me to regain a bit of my energy because this battle is far from being over. Gustav stated. Host has decided to absorb this parallel being cosmic superiority. I'm about it helping you to regain your energy. The system voiced with a weird tone. Absorbing cosmic superiority. Huh. What is it? Gustav had a feeling of foreboding as he heard this. His entire figure brightened up with a golden glow within Jisidinum's head as he began absorbing its cosmic superiority. Gustav began to feel weird as he absorbed Jisidinum's cosmic superiority. Hey system what is it you wanted to mention? 
Gustav asked once more with a tone of urgency as he could feel that something wasn't right. You'll be losing consciousness in a few. The system revealed. What? No. I can't. Gustav voiced out with a worried tone as he spread his perception across the vicinity. He could tell that the battle between the Infectfed and the officers had continued after he retracted his Yarki. Sub greater than. Sub. I can't lose consciousness right now. Gustav said with a high tone. There is nothing you can do about it. Do you know what it means to absorb a parallel being cosmic superiority? You're already defying all the laws of the cosmos and this is the greatest defiance of all. Stopping the cosmic superiority from returning to the cosmos so another being might be granted with the blessing. The system explained. At this point Gustav was already starting to get drowsy. No matter how much he tried to fight the sleepiness. His eyelids kept shutting subconsciously. Stop. Absorbing. I. Can. Do that. Later. Gustav listed as he staggered while trying to keep himself standing. I am afraid the process cannot be stopped after it has began. The system disclosed. See you in three days. Gustav. The system added. She. TTT. Gustav cursed under his breath before he his eyelids closed completely and he fell unconscious. Chapter 1006 The Weird Internal State of Jusidinum's Skull. Author's Note. Unedited Chapters. She. TTT. Gustav cursed under his breath before he his eyelids closed completely and he fell unconscious. His body retained its glow after he had fallen face down within the head of the Jisidinum. Ya. Here. Hiya. Outside the Jisidinum's head. Battle cries rang out as the MBO resumed their fight against the infected. Every single person had scorch marks on different parts of their bodies due to Gustav's Yarki before he retracted it. Some infected had even been scorched nearly to ashes since some of them didn't have bodies that were as sturdy as that of the MBO. Gradier Xanatus flew across the battlefield, occasionally hurling down attacks as he charged forward. Gustav. He yelled out as he flew across the air while looking down. All he could see from up here was the devastation caused by the battle between Gustav and the Jisidinum. Earth had split to the point where one would wonder if this was a battle between two beta ranked. There were craters all over the place that extended to even the borders of Gildian City behind. Both infected and MBO officers had lost their lives due to the fight between these two and even the wall that were erected around the city had nearly been torn down completely. Everyone witnessed these two put everyone in a state where they were unable to move throughout the duration of their battle. Gustav who was supposed to be an Echo rank battled with a mixed breed was so powerful in the past and had its power even boosted by the infection yet he still came out on top. An infected mixed breed that was beyond level 100 yet an Echo rank mixed blood won against it whereas Kilo and Delta rank mixed bloods were unable to intervene. Gradier Xanatus had so many unanswered questions running through his mind and one of them involved how Gustav was able to use the same type of power Jisidinum was mostly feared for and even used it in a more powerful state. However even if he had these questions he knew he would never be able to get any answers if Gustav remains missing. The infected were not going to wait or give them chance to do a proper search so Gradier Xanatus took it upon himself to find Gustav. The battle was won but Gradier Xanatus feared it was not without a cost. Especially after Gustav's presence disappeared the moment Jisidinum met his end. The female officer that had initially joined them had gone back to battling the infected. Just because Jisidinum had been unexpectedly taken care of didn't mean the fight was over. Jisidinum was just one part of the threat. The other part was not any less dangerous since there were more than 6 million infected pushing their way forward in a bid to overrun the city. Gustav. Gradier Xanatus yelled out once more as he headed towards the corpse of the Jisidinum. He suddenly recalled something as he closed in on the gigantic corpse in the distance. Sub greater than. Sub. The infected come back to life if their bodies are not properly gotten rid of. He said internally before flying and landing on the head of the corpse. We need to completely disintegrate its body. Gradier Xanatus yelled out to those on the wall. The officers on the walls with abilities that were capable of completely getting rid of Jisidinum's body began to jump down from the wall. Huh. As Gradier moved around its head area. 
he noticed that there was a glow coming from the hole that was created in Jisadinam's forehead. Everyone knew the cause of this hole was Gustav's killing blow but no one knew he never came out of it. Gustav. Great Ear Xanatus spotted the unconscious figure laying within the massive hole on the forehead of the creature. Ashy goo was still pouring out of the forehead like a fountain and some flowed over Gustav as his glowing unconscious body just laid there. Great Ear Xanatus quickly moved in and tried to retrieve Gustav's glowing unconscious body. He lifted Gustav over his shoulder and headed out the hole but then he noticed he was unable to get past the entry point. Huh what is happening? He wondered out loud as he felt himself getting stopped by an invisible force. Great Ear Xanatus put Gustav down and swung his palm forward. He had expected to get stopped by the invisible force but this time his hand moved past the entry point freely. A look of confoundment appeared on Great Ear Xanatus' face as he picked Gustav up once more and tried to make his way out. Zoom. He was stopped by the invisible force once more. Great Ear Xanatus placed Gustav's glowing body down once more and the same result as earlier repeated itself. Unfortunately no matter how much Great Ear Xanatus tried to get Gustav's body out of the creature's head it was to no avail. Sub greater than. Sub. He had even tried creating another exit point but it brought about the same results. At this point Great Ear Xanatus was sure that something was going on and he attributed it to the glow on Gustav's body. He noticed that as time passed. Gustav's unconscious body was crystallizing with golden shards. Whatever is happening to him right now I'm sure it's not negative. Great Ear Xanatus could tell as he scrutinized Gustav's frame. He decided to move out at this point. Do not touch the creature till the glow there has dimmed. After it does. Retrieve Officer Crimson's body and keep him somewhere safe. Great Ear Xanatus voiced out before turning around to head back into the battlefield. The nine officers that had just dropped from the wall to take care of this task had looks of confusion on their faces as Great Ear Xanatus moved further away from here. However a command was a command and they had no right to question it at such a crucial moment when they knew Great Ear Xanatus had to busy himself with preventing the infected from breaching the wall. MBO Camp. In a grassy filled field void of people. I must say you did a splendid job. Chapter 1007. The Gang's Determination. A greenish looking crystal floated in front of a young teenage boy with black curly hair as it glowed repeatedly while a masculine voice was projected from it. I almost died. Endrick voiced out in response. True but you did a splendid job regardless. Husarius stated once more. Acquiring the vest makes 20% of your mission complete. It's a huge leap. Husarius added. I sensed so much power in the vest. Are you sure the dimension you locked it away in will be able to prevent its energy from seeping out? Endrick inquired with a slightly worried look. It will keep it sealed in the meantime. The only thing you should be worried about is getting rid of its residue energy lingering around you. That could potentially cause you to be in great danger. Husarius warned. Why so? Endrick questioned. The lingering residue energy could attract entities from all over the world that have all longed to acquire the best of Dumbledore. A lot of them wield power beyond your comprehension but locating the vest always eluded them. If I wasn't helping. You would have gotten lost in universe trying to find the vest. Husaruis explained. On the bright side. They won't try infiltrating earth even if they sense as is earth is a formidable force to behold but the moment you leave this planet with the lingering energy still surrounding you. You place a target on your back and trust me. These mad creatures will not hesitate to chase you to the ends of the universe just to make sure they acquired the vest. He added. Endrick nodded with a look of understanding as he heard this. How do I get rid of the energy? Endrick proceeded to ask. In another part of the MBO camp a group of nine could be seen standing together in a garden-like area as they discussed. The IYSOP training is starting in two months and we're getting out of camp in a month's time. Angie voiced with a contemplative look. Did every single one of us manage to reduce our term here in camp? Elevora questioned. Yes. E. E answered as he threw a glance at every one of them before smiling. Y'all be showing them who's boss. He added. So every one of us will get to complete a mission at the very least before IYSOP begins. Ildris pointed out. That's great. Gustav has already gotten way ahead of us in MBO ranks. 
We have to close in the gap as soon as possible. Falco stated. My rival is just too powerful. I will give my all to surpass him or close in the gap. Rhea said with a look of determination. Come on guys let's show the world that this generation of mixed blood will be taking over in every aspect. Timmy added. I can't wait. Whatever it takes to be at Gustav's side. Vera said with a dreamy look causing Angie to shoot her an intense glare. Vera didn't care about that and feigned nonchalance even after noticing that. We won't be able to achieve any of that if we don't increase our rank and get even more powerful. Matilda voiced out. Gustav is always working hard and it works for him so we have to work twice. No thrice. No four times as hard if we ever have any hope of coming close to his level of strength. Blade spoke this time. Hey. She might be a puppet but she's right. E. E stated. Sub greater than. Sub. E. E. They all voiced out at the same time as they stared at him. What? Did I say something wrong? E. E asked with an innocent expression. Don't say that out loud. Falco whispered. Anyways I'm suggesting a joint training. No breaks for the next month. Ildris broke the brief silence caused after Glade stared at everyone with a confused expression. We're going to be pushing ourselves beyond our limits. Ildris added. Everyone had a look of determination as they heard that and began agreeing to the joint training. Elevora included even though she had already achieved the Echo rank. Flicker. 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 Within what looked like a hospital ward. The lights suddenly began flickering as a bed with a patient on it started to float. Get a doctor down here. One of the nurses yelled through a communication device as she sighted this scene. The person on the bed had their eyes closed but their hand and toes fingers would occasionally make small movements. Third time in the last three days. He needs another shot. The nurse yelled out through the communication device once more. How is it that even after moving him into the special suppressive room, he is still able to do this? I have no idea just get down here. The nurse voiced out in response. GBBHHLHHBBL. Sub greater than. Sub. The entire vicinity began trembling as the bed in this ward floated further upwards and flickering lights flickered with even more intensity. Be quick if you don't want him destroying the entire building in his sleep. The nurse yelled out once more as the force from this incident began pushing her backwards. Causing her uniform to bloat due to wind. In a few moments a doctor came dashing in with a massive instrument in his hands that was almost too heavy for him to carry. Two other male nurses came in with him and tried assisting as he moved this instrument in the direction of the floating bed. A part of the floor popped out and began lifting them to the height this unconscious patient had attained. Open his mouth. The doctor yelled to one of the nurses as they moved the instrument closer. The instrument which looked like a four feet large funnel was about to open up beneath and empty its contents in the mouth of this patient. At the last second. The patient suddenly opened his eyes. Grab. The doctor and nurses displayed a startled expression as he grabbed hold of the instrument and stopped it from moving forward. What are you doing? He asked as he slowly sat up. Chapter 1008. Charlie City. Author's note. Unedited chapters. What are you doing? He asked as he slowly sat up. He's awake. The doctor voiced out with a tone of astonishment. The nurses had similar expressions on their faces after the patient opened his eyes and spoke. The energy circulating around the place also suddenly stopped. Bang. The bed landed back on the floor with a loud crash. As everywhere returned to tranquility the patient slowly ripped the wires attached to his body to monitor his vitals. Officer Crimson. How do you feel? The doctor asked as the extended floor descended. Me. I'm good. Gusov responded as he looked around. Are you sure? No weird feeling. Ache. Pain or whatever. One of the nurses voiced out. I am okay. Never felt better. Gustav reassured while clenching and unclenching his hands as a test. He could see the worried looks on their faces slowly reduce as he also spotted the instrument in the doctor's grasp. Looks like it's been three days already. Gustav said internally. Have I been here all this time? Gustav inquired out loud as he wondered why they would place him in a medical institution. Yes sir. You passed out on the battlefield in Luchin City and you were brought in by the MBO. The doctor revealed. The battle. 
Gustav recalled the battle with the infected and was overcome with great worry as he wondered how it ended. We have tried our best to keep you under control in the last three days but even as medical practitioners we had no idea if you would regain consciousness or not. The doctor continued speaking. Under control. Gustav voiced with a confused expression as he heard this. Yes under control. Why? You see you've been emitting unstable energy at certain periods for the last three days and during those times you destroyed several structures whilst being unconscious. We had to place you here to repress the energy and even keep you under a medicinal dosage anytime it spiraled out of control again. It has been most stressful but we're glad you've regained consciousness. The doctor explained causing Gustav's face to show a look of understanding. My body must have been adapting to the cosmic superiority. Being unconscious all this time. My body must have been merging the power completely with me to make it entirely my own. Gustav analyzed internally as he stood to his feet. Hold on officer Crimson you just woke up. Where are you going? The doctor asked. Where else? I'm leaving of course. Gustav responded. I'm afraid we can't allow that. The doctor voiced out as he moved to stand in front of Gustav. You're still unstable and innocent people might be put in danger if any of your energy tantrums begin again. He added with a pleading look. I am perfectly fine. Now that I've regained consciousness nothing of the sort is going to happen. Gustav said with a reassuring tone while walking past the side of the doctor. Sub greater than. Sub. They asked me to inform them the moment you regain consciousness. Can you at least hold on till they arrive here? The doctor asked. Don't worry. I'm going to them. Gustav said before dashing out. Foolish. Wind blew across the place as his figure disappeared. The doctor knew well that no one could stop Gustav if he decided to leave which was why the respectful approach was necessary. Not even the suppressive room could hold his power so they knew very well that holding him here against his will was impossible. Inform the MBO of his recovery. The doctor voiced as he stormed out of the room. Foolish. As Gustav dashed through this unknown city he thought. I didn't even ask the doctor where this is. Thum. He leapt into the air in the next instant and arrived above a tall skyscraper. He stared down at the city from this height and in the next few seconds. A figure flew in from the west and landed atop this same skyscraper. He was clad in an MBO outfit and had a weird expression on his face. I'm gonna have to ask you to return to the medical center now. The man with a ice cube-like face voiced out. Hmm. Why? Gustav said while raising an eyebrow. He still had a patient uniform on so his clothes kept flapping due to the wind. Higher up orders. I'll have to consider you in hostile if you refuse to adhere. The officer voiced out as he suddenly unleashed his bloodline energy. A kilo ranked. Gustav noticed instantly. I refuse. Now be good and tell me what city this is. Gustav stated with a nonchalant tone. Sub greater than. Sub. I'll have to use force to return you to the medical center now. The officer said with a serious tone. You know what? Never mind. I'll just get out of here myself. Gustav said as he reached out to touch his left wrist. Hmm. My dimensional bracelet. Gustav muttered as he noticed his dimensional bracelet was no longer strapped to his left wrist. Your possessions were taken away. Now will you come with me or do I have to use force? The officer asked once more. Gustav stood there with a stupefied expression. How did they get it off? My storage device is missing too along with the jewel. Gustav made a low sigh as he placed two fingers on his forehead. Where are they? Gustav asked. The MBO tower in Plankton City. It's at 4,000 miles east from here. The officer said with a tone that depicted there was nothing Gustav could do other than just comply. 4,000 miles east from here. Ah so this is Charlie City. Gustav said with a look of understanding. How did you? The officer was about to ask how Gustav figured it out since he already mentioned he had no idea where they were. You practically revealed it. Anyone with a brain and knowledge would be able to figure it out. Gustav responded while shrugging. I'm pretty sure not just anyone would figure that out from the distance revealed. The officer wanted to say this out loud but kept quiet. Chapter 1009. You should have brought back up. So they asked you to bring me back to the medical facility. Yes. All by yourself. Yes. 
And how do you intend to do that? Huh? Where's your backup? I don't need any backup. Okay. Get lost. Sub greater than. Sub. Gustav turned around to leave at this point. Stop. The officer yelled as he pushed his palm forward. A burst of misty blue energy slammed into Gustav from behind freezing him in place. I'm taking you back whether you like it or not. He said after freezing Gustav in place and began to step forward. No. Gustav stated as he regained control of his movement and turned around. The eyes of the officer widened in shock as he prepared to send out another attack. Tremble. Fui. A burst of whitish energy was sent forth from Gustav as he voiced out. The officer suddenly felt overwhelmed with an indescribable feeling as his knees weakened. Plop. He fell to his knees and nearly bowed as well as he stared at Gustav with a look of disbelief and confusion. You should have brought backup. Gustav stated before turning towards the east. Lightning blitz has been activated. The instant he leapt into the air, he turned into a lightning streak. Threehish. The streak bolted across the air and he disappeared instantly. A few minutes later the officer had regained control of his body and was in the presence of four other officers on the same rooftop. What? You lost him. One of them voiced out with a furious tone. He was too strong. He defeated me with one word. The ice cube headed officer said with a crestfallen look. You couldn't stop an echo rank mixed blood who has only been an officer for a few months after your years of experience. You're gonna make us look bad now. The others voiced with looks of disappointment. We have to find him now. Which direction is he headed in? Another one of them asked. I don't think it matters if we go after him. The ice cube headed officer said. Huh? Why? One of them asked. He's not running away. He's headed to the tower in Plankton City. The ice cube headed officer stated. And how do you know this? The other one asked once more. He wants to get his things. The tower is always swarming with officers so they can take care of him themselves. The ice cube headed officer replied. Even if you're correct we still have to go after him to make sure he doesn't harm anyone. Fushish. A whitish line tore through the air as a figure flew across the skies with immense speed. I've never tried travel by flight. I mean I have but that was in an aircraft. It's truly interesting when I'm flying with my own power. Gustav said internally as his figure kept parting the clouds due to his speed. Well at least now you can keep it up since you have a lot of energy and you're not going very far. The system responded. 4000 miles is pretty far though. Gustav replied internally. Not as far as touring across the entire earth. The system voiced. Gustav. Fair point. Lightning blitz has been activated. Zer. Gustav crossed another 600,000 feet in an instant as he activated lightning blitz. The cooldown had ended so he could activate it four more times before it went into cooldown mode again. This would shorten the distance by another 500 miles. Gustav estimated that he should arrive back in Planktok City in about 30 to 40 minutes time. He had left a huge gap between himself and the officers chasing from behind. What exactly happened when I was asleep? Did I manage to absorb the cosmic superiority completely? Gustav asked internally. What do you think? The system answered with a question. I feel more energized than before. More powerful. It's a odd feeling that I can quite describe. Gustav's face shone with a contemplative expression as he mentioned. To a certain extent you feel like reality can bend to your will. The system stated. Yeah. Something like that. Gustav confirmed. Hee <laughs> hee. It has begun. The system chuckled as it stated. Hmm. What has begun? The MBO tower. Stand down. A man in a red colored MBO outfit commanded through a communication channel. Are you sure sir? They stated that he might still be unstable and needs to be examined for a few more days before he is released. The person on the other end of the communication questioned. It doesn't matter. He is coming here so stand down. Understood. Sir Xanatus. The person on the other end voiced as the dialogue ended. Gradier Xanatus stood in a board room with a few other officers having a meeting. And you're sure he won't endanger the lives of anyone? One of the officers here who was dressed in a high-ranking outfit questioned. What better place for him to be than in the presence of other officers who are much stronger and can place him under control if anything goes wrong? 
Gradier Xanatus said with a casual but respectful bearing. Hum I see your point. All right Major Gradier Xanatus but you will take the blame if anything goes wrong. The generals accepted for Gradier Xanatus's suggestion to not place Gustav in any isolation. The generals had no idea that Gradier Xanatus was mostly doing this because it was close to impossible to keep Gustav in a place he didn't want to be and the whole situation could end up getting messy so he had to take care of things on his own end. Gradier Xanatus sighed in relief after all the generals left the board room. And holographic footage appeared in his line of sight afterwards. It displayed an angle of a recording where Gustav said a word and caused the other officer's knees to buckle. Get rid of this footage. He commanded. Forty minutes later. Welcome back. Gradier Xanatus voiced with a smile as a young man with dirty blonde hair walked into the board room clad in a patient outfit. Gradier Xanatus. You're alive. A smile appeared on Gustav's face as he walked towards Gradier Xantus with two officers by his side. Chapter 1010 Trip Down Memory Lane. Author's Note. Unedited Chapters. Gradier Xanatus. You're alive. A smile appeared on Gustav's face as he walked towards Gradier Xantus with two officers by his side. The officers besides him had solemn expressions as they stood by Gustav's side like they were escorting a prisoner. Leave us. Gradier Xanatus said to the officers. They nodded with respectful look before walking out of the boardroom. Gustav took a seat in front of Gradier Xanatus before speaking. Everyone has their guard up so much around me. Was it that bad when I was unconscious? Gustav questioned. Yes. Gradier Xanatus answered bluntly before leaning on the side of the massive table. Sub greater than. Sub. Your occasional energy disruption was on a seismic scale and even affected the battle during the fight against the infected. He added. Hmm. I guess it must have caused more damage than I expected. Gustav said while holding his chin. Anyways since I'm back now. Everything is in control. Gustav added. I don't doubt that but the higher ups do so in the meantime don't go anywhere without me. They want me babysitting you to make sure no accidents happen. This was the bargain for your freedom. Gradier Xanatus pointed out. For how long? Gustav inquired. Till they've ascertained that you're stable and not dangerous to others. Gradier Xanatus replied. Gustav had a slightly troubled expression as he heard this. On the bright side Gradier Xanatus was someone he was comfortable with or he would have already through tantrums. Don't worry it won't be for long. But you have to be careful about how you use some of your abilities in public. You need to stay out of their eyes for now. Gradier Xanatus voiced out. Hinting at the ability Gustav had used to put the Kilo-ranked officer on his knees effortlessly. Sure sure. My possessions. I want them back. Gustav demanded. You will get them back but first you mind telling me what happened on the battlefield three days back. Gradier Xanatus's face shone a look of curiosity as he voiced out. Don't you have something to tell me first? How did the battle end? Gustav threw in this question as he pedaled back on his seat. Okay we'll trade answers. Gradier Xanatus responded. Gradier Xanatus went on to narrate everything that happened on the battlefield after Gustav lost consciousness. He added the part where he couldn't get Gustav out of Jusidinum's head for over three hours and had to leave him there due to the weird golden glow phenomenon. He went on to explain that it was only after two more hours that the officers managed to get him out and rid the place of Jusidinum's corpse. I could have stolen its bloodline too. What a waste. Gustav thought internally as Gradier Xanatus got to this point. Gradier Xanatus went on to mention how the numbers of MBO officers continued to dwindle without any hope of getting more reinforcements till the next 24 hours. He knew they would all be dead before then so they kept trying to come up with a solution to all this. The MBO officers were running out of bloodline energy. AI droids were getting destroyed and even the mixed blood machines were starting to get overwhelmed by the sheer number of infected in the vicinity. Despite Gustav managing to get rid of Jusidinum it was a losing battle. After losing more than 70% of their forces. There were still over 4 million infected charging through. Red Shadow was found half dead. Gradier Xanatus stated. How is he now? Gustav asked with a look of concern. He is fine. Just like you he was taken to a medical center to get treatment and he is absolutely okay right now. He regained consciousness two days ago and is out of the hospital. 
Gradier Xanatus revealed. That's great. Gustav let out a sigh of relief. The same can't be said about the officer who found him. Gradier Xanatus had a sour look as he got to this point. The young officer. Fola. Gustav asked with a slightly worried look. Yes. Officer Fola made a sacrifice on that day after bringing Red Shadow back. Gradier Xanatus had a reminiscing look as he voiced out. We're almost out of comrades. They're close to breaching the east wall. A voice was heard on the communication channel. We can't send anyone in the meantime. We're barely holding on here too. Gradier Xanatus responded with a worried tone as he heard this. We're going to be done for in a few. Here. Screams of agony rang from the communication channel along with ripping sounds. Officer Fola had just dropped Red Shadow's bloodied and unconscious body at Gradier Xanatus's feet. I'll go. Officer Fola said as his body glowed up. Grab. You don't fool me. I know you're almost out of energy. Gradier Xanatus voiced out after grabbing hold of Officer Fola's arm. I'll go you stay here. Gradier Xanatus voiced out. We really don't have time for this argument sir. Everyone here needs you. You have to remain in command and pull everyone together. Your death will not help anyone. Officer Fola said with a tone of defiance before jumping into the air. Foofwoosh. He flew speedily across the air. Before Gradier Xanatus could respond. Fola flew towards the east side and just as they mentioned some infectved had began climbing up the walls. They barely had officers left in this area. He began attacking the infectved he spotted upon getting here. Boom. 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 Explosions rang out as he used the last bit of his energy to join them in repelling the infectved here. HNNGHH. An ashy goo slammed into his side while in mid-air. Causing him to fall. The infected who had sent forth this attack was blasted to pieces by another officer. Fola breathed in and out profusely as he stared at the large number of infected still charging towards the wall from up ahead. They had covered the entire area to the point where nothing else could be seen besides these ashy-skinned zombies that had refused to die. Chapter 1011. The Sacrifice. I'm out of energy. I have to use it. Fola thought. Even though it won't be enough to eradicate them all. It would give them enough breathing space. He began charging towards the ranks of infected at this point. Everyone head back to the wall. He yelled out as he charged at them. What are you doing? Where are you going? The officers here yelled out as they spotted him running towards the infected. Just do it. Take refuge on the wall. He yelled out once again as he body began to glow up. The officers stared with looks of confusion and disbelief but no one could stop him now. He had already leapt into the ranks of Infectfed and had himself surrounded by them. Sub greater than. Sub. With every passing second his entire body glowed even more brighter. Take refuge everyone. One of the officers shouted out as he realized what officer Fola might be up to. Fola leapt into the air once more drawing the attention of the infected further backwards as he distanced himself from the wall. Follow me you fuckers. He yelled out as his entire body glowed with so much purple light his skin began to melt. After he felt he had left enough distance between him and the wall he finally let go of the energy he had been building up. Die. A wry smile appeared on his face at this moment. Boom. A loud explosion rang out as purplish waves of energy blasted across the vicinity. It was so intense that the infected within a radius of more than 20,000 feet were instantly incinerated. Everyone from the walls had looks of astonishment as they saw tens of thousands of infected disintegrate from the blast that also destroyed the user. Oh. He used his last energy to turn himself into a super explosive. Gustav muttered while holding his chin. Yes. His sacrifice was a great help. Gradier Xanatus responded. How? Gustav asked this because he felt this was not nearly enough to take care of the situation when there were still millions of infected. Some minutes after his sacrifice. Some of the MBO scientists reached us on the wall. Gradier Xanatus explained. Oh. Gustav exclaimed. They had successfully created a cure for the ashy infection from the sample you passed to them. Gradier Xanatus added. Gustav had an astonished look as he heard that. I really thought it would take them longer than that to create a cure. He voiced out. If Officer Fola hadn't made the sacrifice. 
the infected from the east wall area would have managed to infiltrate before the cure arrived. Gradier Xanatus stated. Gustav now understood why the sacrifice was the saving grace. The city would be gone now if Fola didn't do perform that action. To put one's life on the line for people you don't know is already a great sacrifice. Talk more of actually giving your life to protect them. Gustav didn't know how to feel about it but he knew it was a virtuous act. I don't think I can do that. He knew this within himself. No you can't. You're selfish and that isn't necessarily a bad thing since staying alive sometimes requires selfishness. You're not good to anyone dead. The system voiced in his head. But is this what boss Danzo wants me to be? A savior of mankind. Someone that is willing to give his life to protect others is definitely the kind of person boss Danzo would be proud to call his son. Gustav thought. No. That's far from what he wants. Boss Danzo has a sentimentality for lives in general but you're misinterpreting him. He wants you to do your own thing. Stay alive and chase your dreams but not neglect the plea of others if you have the power to help their situation. You've been doing great so far. The system said with a tone of reassurance. Hum okay. Gustav heaved a sigh of relief as he said. Hey. You know. This is actually the first time you've acted so nice to me. Gustav said internally with a suspicious tone. Shut up dimwit. I'm just placing your virgin ass in the right state of mind so you don't ruin things for us. The system stated. And there she goes. Ruining the moment. Gustav said internally. Hey I'm no longer a virgin. Gustav added. You've only done with like once or twice pfft still a virgin. Shut up. Gustav stated before phasing back to reality. So Luchin city is okay now. Gustav asked. Yes. Besides a few renovation and cleansing. The city was saved thanks to the cure. Gradier Xanatus responded. He explained that the cure was transformed into an airborne state by one of the MBO officers which caused it to spread far and wide. The infected began dropping like flies since they were entirely corpse. Those officers who had already been turned. Died completely after getting disinfected. That was how millions of infectfed were returned to corpses and the city was saved. Besides the casualties from the MBO side. There was not a single casualty from the city residents. Hum this is the best possible outcome. I thought it would end way worser than this. Gustav could not help but voice his satisfaction. How did you manage to create a cure sample? Gradier Xanatus questioned. That's a story for another time. What happened to the culprits that were apprehended? Gustav curved Gradier Xanatus's question and asked his. They have been interrogated and we got some information from them. Gradier Xanatus' tone sounded quite bothered as he got to this point. Gustav already knew there was something deeper with this whole situation so he waited for Gradier Xanatus to spill. Watch this. Gradier Xanatus voiced out as he requested for the AI to play a footage. Truruin. A holographic screen appeared in Gustav's front and what appeared was the recording of a person. This person was obviously female due to the tone as well as the long ash-colored silky hair that was spotted behind the helmet-like mask she had on. We are Genzotis. She began speaking. Chapter 1012. Becoming a Parallel Being. Author's Note. Unedited Chapters. We are Genzotis. She began speaking. Her voice had been auto-tuned so it was one couldn't identify her real voice. Our aim is to eradicate the mixed bloods and generally any supernatural being that exists on this planet. In the past the world was less chaotic with just the humans and Slarkovs living on the earth but ever since the menace called Mixbloods came into existence things change. We shall once again bring the world back to the ages of no supernatural abilities and nurture a world where only technology shall reign supreme. She paused for a bit before continuing. We failed in dominating Luchin City which was amongst our plans to push forth our objective but I assure you this is just the beginning. We won't stop until we've rid the world of mixed bloods. We are not terrorists. We are a liberation army. We are Genzotis. Sub greater than. Sub. 3 his. The footage ended at this point. This played all across the world the day after the battle with the infected ended. Gradier Xanatus voiced out. We were unable to trace its origin and pinpoint the location or uncover the identity of this person who is suspected to be the group leader. Gradier Xanatus added. So they were the ones responsible for the incident. 
Gustav voiced out. Yes but they had help. This group known as Genzotis were funded by Young Zhou in the past which is also one of the reasons why the ones we caught had sophisticated weaponry and technological suits. Gradier Xanatus explained. And I'm guessing that's also how they got this variant of Ashi infection. Gustav pieced things together at this point. Correct. They also had access to all his secret research bases where they stole a lot of items and became independent before we located those regions. Gradier Xanatus pointed out. Even after death. You're still a pain in the ass. Gustav shook his head as he voiced out. Young Joe's schemes were really deep-rooted to the point that the MBO might still take years before they managed to uncover it all. For someone with such a shrewd mind it was unknown if one of this plans that would cause another big catastrophe in the future was currently in its hatching phase. The Genzotis was another issue no one saw coming and now it would be difficult to get rid of them with their high ability to stay hidden. Young Joe had left another issue and Gustav was starting to wonder if he was truly dead. Hey. He's truly dead right? Gustav asked internally. You took his bloodline and killed him. What more proof do you want? The system questioned. Fair point. It's surprising the troubles one man without physical prowess can cause. If Genzotis has half of his shrewdness and intelligence then the world really has a lot to be worried about. Gustav said internally. On the bright side this whole incident has helped you increase your strength. The system pointed out. True. Every young Joe related encounter seems to have that effect. Maybe I should be happy his influence still remains. Gustav could feel his Yarki was now way powerful than before and he was sure he had gotten a big boost even though he had not checked. The MBO is really taking this serious. They have organized a special task force which sole objective is to hunt down members of the Genzotis. Gradier Xanatus revealed. As they should. According to you a small team of seven almost caused the fall of an entire city and thousands of MBO officers were slaughtered in the process. Yeah it should be taken very seriously. Gustav stated. It makes sense that they're all Slarkovs. Turns out they're not happy with the current world system and are looking to mold things according to their desires by any means possible. Gradier Xanatus had a contemplative expression as he voiced out. What happened with the culprits? Why were they not able to reveal information on the location of the others? Gustav inquired. Their heads exploded after we took them into custody. Gradier Xanatus responded. Oh looks like they already planned a way out. This is quite troubling. For the MBO. I have other things to worry about so I won't be bothering myself with this issue. Gustav recalled he had to investigate more on Sir Zil's research now that he had the full information on all of them. You still haven't told me what happened on the battlefield. You didn't pass out because you ran out of energy. Did you? Gradier Xanatus had a look of curiosity as he voiced out. No. I did not. Gustav said with a reminiscent look. Hours later Gustav sat in his room within the MBO tower checking out some things. He had changed out of the hospital wares and was clad in a black tank top with shorts. He had retrieved his possessions and the MBO were currently not on his case due to Gradier Xanatus. They had placed him into Gradier Xanatus's hand to be watched and kept under control. Host Attributes. Name. Gustav Crimson. Level. 82. Class. Parallel Being. Express. 135,045 million two hundred thousandths. HP. 99,099 thousandths. Energy. 64,064 thousandths. Attributes. A. Strength. 344. A. Perception. 343. A. Mental Fortitude. 339. A. Agility. 339. A. Speed. 371. A. Bravery. 341. A. Intelligence. 343. A. Charm. 119. A. Defense. 342. A. Vitality. 344. A. Endurance. 341. Attributes points. 81. Gustav checked his current host attributed data on the system. So I am now a parallel being. Gustav said with a tone of expectation. The system had specifically mentioned times without number how difficult it was to not only achieve cosmic superiority but also advance to the next stage after sub-parallel. 
Gustav had managed to get to the next stage in less than three years whereas it took lots of being centuries to advance. Although Gustav knew well that the main factor for this increase was due to absorbing Jisadinum's cosmic superiority. A parallel cosmic superior being is many times more powerful than a sub-parallel. Your situation with Jisadinum was different because of two factors. The system analyzed. Chapter 1013 The War. 1. Jisadinum getting reawakened and controlled by the Ashi infection prevented it from being able to use cosmic superiority in the manner Jisadinum would originally use it. It became mindless after all. 2. Your cosmic superiority is far from being normal and has attributes that let it contend with higher cosmic superior beings. The system listed out. It makes sense since parallel beings can tweak reality to a certain extent but Jisadinum never did that. Gustav said internally. You do understand that this has never been done since the beginning of time so be on the alert for Compel 3 Ications. The system advised. Complications. Internal complications like what was happening when I was unconscious. Gustav asked. No not that. I never warned that it was unstable to absorb it because it isn't. You have that absolutely under control after the three days spent unconscious. The system corrected. Then what type of complications? Gustav inquired. The type that comes with you attracting certain situations to yourself due to your fast growth. Like I mentioned at the time. That was the greatest defiance of the cosmos and it's understandable in your case but do expect complications in the future. The system added. Wow. You said a lot without saying anything. Gustav felt the urge to grab the system and give her a good spanking if it had a physical body. Sub greater than. Sub. Get used to it. The system responded with an unapologetic tone. The system would always mention things like this cryptically without giving an outright reveal. Gustav decided to keep this at the back of his mind for now since he had other things to worry about. Gustav reached into himself with his senses as he closed his eyes. Deep within himself he could now spot two oddly shaped things. The first one was the Yarki which still looked like a scarlet colored flame while the second was a diamond shaped ethereal looking item. The left part of it that made slight contact with the Yarki had some scarlet color while the other part was golden color. It looked like the diamond shaped ethereal looking item was still in color transformation state. That must be from Jisadinum. Why does it look like something else is shaping into existence beside it? Gustav could notice but one red dot beside the diamond but it looked like it was nothing. He was intrigued but he knew he would have to wait. Gustav really wanted to test out how powerful his Yarki was currently and check out more of the abilities he had unlocked with cosmic superiority but he couldn't do that here. He couldn't risk activating Yarki in the presence of the MBO since he didn't know how the extent of the new effects. They might see it as him getting out of control again and he needed to keep things under the wraps. He decided he would test it out later but very far from this location. It's about time I studied the rest of scientist Zill's research. Gustav muttered. System display the rest of the research. Gustav voiced out. How about I just send it to your mind instead? The system suggested. Sure. Gustav answered. In the next few moments information began to flow into his head in large amounts. Gustav was processing the ton of information very quickly that the system didn't have any issue displaying all of it in his mind. After a few minutes Gustav opened his eyes with a look of understanding. Interesting. He really went far in this research. Gustav muttered as thoughts began to appear in his mind. Time to continue the research in his stead. Gustav voiced as he stood to his feet. Violet colored glows coated his fingertips as he opened a spatial construct and moved in. Glalian Galaxy. Thousands of spacecraft could be seen floating above a planet with a mixture of gray and red. These spacecraft were shooting at each other a side having an unknown symbol on them and the other side bearing the MBO emblem. Theish. 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 Powerful shots were fired from every corner and spacecraft were getting blown up by the minute due to the battle between the two sides. As this battle went on. It became heated by the second. Zuri. A loud sound suddenly reverberated across the vicinity like space was being ripped through. Theish. A man with handsome young looks and black hair appeared in the middle of this battlefield. He was clad in a long dark suit and didn't seem like he needed to breath in space. 
his sudden appearance caused a big tension across the battlefield in space as an enormous stream of energy began gathering around him. The space all across this part of space began to tremble and even the stars far away were being pushed away. Concept of time. He muttered underneath his breath as his eyes glowed a white color. Zing. 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 Silver-colored chains wrapped around a ball of blue light began appeared around all of the spacecraft with a different symbol from the MBOs on their spacecraft. Every MBO opposing spacecraft was covered by this circular blue light wrapped by silver-colored chains and in the next instant. Muffled screams were heard as every affected spacecraft withered and turned into ash within a split second. Just like that. Thousands of spacecraft had been reduced to nothing. How dare you leave us to take care of other matters in the middle of battle? What insult! Jack of Earth! You destroyed more of our troops! Three massive figures in form of dark gases appeared with deep white eyes. Their energy seemed menacing and the spacecraft with MBO emblems in the vicinity began to speed out of this part of space so as not to get caught up in a brawl between these powerful forces. I'll deal with you three later. And it's Mac right now. Not Jack. His eyes squinted as he threw a glare at them. Jurin. He sped off again in another direction of space where a battle was ongoing. Get back here. The three yelled as they sped after him while also using their abilities to try to attack but it was all to no avail. Chapter 1014. Discoveries so far. Author's note. Unedited chapters. The three yelled as they sped after him while also using their abilities to try to attack but it was all to no avail. The same situation played out again as he arrived on another part. Outside this planet atmosphere in space. Zing. 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 Thousands of spacecraft withered and turned into ash once more. Mac kept wreaking havoc all around this planet as he destroyed up to 50,000 spacecraft in less than a minute. He stood above the planet and stared at it as the three dark cloudly figures chasing after him approached from another angle. It's time to end this. Has the machine not been found yet? I want to move in. He voiced out. Negative. That's what they want. We just had a team infiltrate. Wait till they get hold of the device before you swoop in. Sub greater than. Sub. A voice resounded from the communication channel Mac was currently on. Sure. They better be quick with it. I'm running out of patience. Mac said with a strong tone before ending the dialogue. Bastard. You destroyed all of the spacecraft. One of these three cloudy figures voiced out from behind. Mac let out a tired sigh as he turned around to face them. Okay now I have your time. Although this won't tail very long. He added with a disinterested tone. Yes because we will be ending your reign now. Another one voiced out as a star began to form above Mac. That's what they said. He muttered as he slowly stretched out his hand. One month later. Gustav sat in a room with a look of contemplation as three holographic screens were displayed in front of him. So it turns out the displacement has a pattern. So far it looks like things have slowly been disappearing in space within neighboring galaxies without anyone noticing. Gustav muttered as he stared at a footage showing on the left screen. In one moment a space rock was visible and in the next it had disappeared. The time of disappearance and visibility were different but the main point was that it did disappear. While it is normal for space rocks like asteroids to get melted and disintegrated completely from the heat of the sun. This particular one had not reached the end of its lifespan yet. It was initially very massive and such space rock would not just disappear in a week. The footage couldn't display how it disappeared because there was no time stamp for that so it was unknown what caused it. It could also be a supernatural since powerful beings like Jack were strong enough to even get rid of stars but Gustav had properly made his research. This wasn't only happening in one place. It had happened in so many other places in space and who knows about the others one that weren't even documented. Gustav had clocked in one several patterns as well as the theories he had gotten from scientist Zill's research but he knew well enough that all this was still not enough. With everything now. There's a high chance planet Humbud might have gotten swallowed up by warp demolator which may or may not be a spatial disrupting existence. The warp demolator is capable of transferring any object no matter the size to another place in space or another dimension entirely. It is impossible to predict and so far no people don't know it exists or how it came into existence. 
The government sure have heard of it since they confiscated scientist Zill research but I doubt they believe it exists. Gustav analyzed with a low tone. Remember you have to discover these aspect yourself. I can't in any way render assistance. The system voiced. Yeah I know. It's just almost like even with everything I have uncovered in the last month I really still don't know anything. Gustav let out a slightly frustrated sigh as he spoke. Space is endless so finding out when or where it's going appear next was near impossible but I can narrow it down to two galaxies on neighboring ends. But having to check out an entire galaxy pfft definitely a waste of time. Gustav added. On the bright side you did gather a lot of information though. Now you don't doubt that planet Humbid is still in existence anymore. The system stated. Yeah but a lot of things are still confusing. If it was never destroyed. Why did the Slarkovs come to Earth in the first place? And why did they lie that it was destroyed? Gustav voiced out. These questions were mind-boggling and if the truth ever got out it would upset a balance that had been in place for thousands of years. Everyone was used to the tale of the Slarkov's planet getting destroyed with them having to leave so they could escape its destruction. It would raise an alarm when people found out that tale had been wrong all their lives and it had been a deceit that was passed down from generation to generation. Gustav confirmed that truly planet Humbid wasn't destroyed with Sir Zill's research. A place within the fourth part had shown proof. Sir Zill initially funded his planetary dimensional displacement theory himself back when he started. Since he was quite rich he was able to send some scientists to space to do an energy reading of places where the warp demolator had appeared. Expectedly. The energy reading of these places were the same energy readings with the spot in space where planet Humbid used to be located. It had been thousands of years and the energy of the warp demolator there had decreased significantly but it was a match nonetheless. The location of planet Humbid had truly been shifted by the warp demolator to an unknown place and Gustav had to make sure he found it or he would never be able to complete one of his five-year quests. Why couldn't the Slarkovs just mention the true crisis was the warp demolator instead of saying their planet was destroyed? Chapter 1015. Five Years Quest Progress. Author's Note. Bonus chapter dedicated to Wolfitztemun. Your PayPal donation is much appreciated a degree a ascent i one half. Why was there a meteor shower of unknown parts from a planet which brought new energies to Earth and why did the Slarkovs claim that the meteors were broken parts of their destroyed planet? Gustav could not help but think that there was a hidden motive or agenda somewhere. A 3000 years agenda. What do they hope to gain and where would it lead to? No matter how much Gustav thought about this. He just couldn't come up with an answer that he was 100% satisfied with. Either way I have to attend IYSOP and make more research. Gustav added. They're starting a worldwide training next month. The system announced. I'm not attending. Gustav voiced as the holographic screens disappeared. I won't have the time. He added. From what I'm seeing. It's mandatory. The system stated. Sub greater than. Sub. Meh. I still have to make more research in the meantime. Gustav had made up his mind about not attending the training but he still wanted to be a part of IYSOP. Maybe I'll show up on the last week of training. Gustav added. You do know the training holds for six months which is also ending a few days before IYSOP begins. The system pointed out. IYSOP is in six months. Gustav said with a slightly startled expression. Yeah. I was informed IYSOP nearly six months ago didn't realize how much time had passed. Gustav said with a slightly worried look. Don't worry. You still have around three years before time's up to complete the five years quest. The system voiced out. Actually worry. You should be very worried. The system added. Shut it. Gustav voiced as he checked the status of one of his five years quests. Quests. Locate dimension six on planet Humbid. Duration. Five years. Progress. 39. 81 hundredths of a percent. 2 years. Become the most powerful mixed blood on Earth. Duration. 5 years. Progress. 34. Time elapsed. 2 years. Just 34% even after absorbing Jisadinum's cosmic superiority. Gustav made a low smacking sound with his lips as he voiced out. On the contrary. You should be commended for reaching this far. 
This fast. The system stated. If I were to calculate how powerful I will be by the end of this quest based on my current progress. I see myself failing this mission. Gustav voiced in response. Which is why you still have to work harder and use every means at your disposal to make sure you complete the quest. The system said with an edging tone. Yeah. I might have to do something a little extreme one of these days. Gustav muttered as thoughts began appearing in his mind. However. He decided he would only take such measures when he was getting closer to the end of the quest and his progression speed still isn't up to standard. Anyways I'm going to be spending my time on Earth making more research about the warp demolator before IYSOP arrives. Gustav said as he moved to a side to pick up his jacket. But of course. I can't neglect my training so I have to make sure everything is balanced. He added as he walked out of his room. The MBO camp. On a highly exalted platform. Thousands of feet above the ground. A battle was playing out. Boom. Bang. Bam. Sounds of heavy collisions and explosions rang out as the cadets here battled intensely with one another. One of them who was floating in mid-air with a big eye exposed on her forehead shot out a destructive purplish beam. Boom. The beam slammed into a part of this massive platform. Hitting one of the cadets here and sending him flying off the platform. Falco you're out. Someone yelled from the side. This person happened to be an instructor who dived down and caught Falco in his arms. Shut up dimwit. I refuse to be defeated by lower life forms. Dark Falco voiced out without regard for the instructor. Don't make me drop you from this height. The instructor voiced as he flew down. He dropped Falco along with others that had been blasted off the platform. I demand a rematch wench. Dark Falco yelled out with an unyielding expression but the instructor had already flown back up. On the platform. Only four more cadets were left. Elevora. Angie. E. E and Ildris. You go right. And I'll go left. Ildris and E. E voiced out simultaneously as they switched positions. Now E. E was standing opposite Angie while Ildris was staring at Elevora who was floating in the air up ahead. Now. Don't take this personally Angie. E. E voiced out as vortexes began to appear all over the place. I won't. Angie responded with a smirk as she dashed forward. Fui. She had instantly arrived in front of E. E who was still conjuring vortexes. But she suddenly felt a pull from every direction. Angie felt like she was sinking into mud as her figure almost paused while she moved at a snail's pace. You're fast but that doesn't mean I can't trap you. E. E said as he slapped his palms together. The vortexes suddenly turned into reddish color in the next instant as powerful energy spread forth from his figure. On the other side. Ildris kept dashing from side to side across the place as Elevora sent powerful and destructive purplish blasts from the eye on her forehead. The large surface floating in the sky had to do a continuous self-repair because just one of these four was powerful enough to destroy it entirely with their strength. Ildris's eyes opened as he closed in on Elevora, causing the color of the vicinity to dissolve into black and white. Elevora suddenly found herself getting more sluggish as this affected her as well. Ildris leapt up at this point and threw a punch forward. You've gotten stronger but, grab. Elevora suddenly grabbed hold of Ildris's fist midway, stopping it with ease. You're still not strong enough. She voiced out before turning him around and slamming him into the ground. Boom. Destructive waves spread forth as the vicinity regained color once more. Chapter 1016 Leaving Camp. Author's Note. Unedited Chapters. Boom. Destructive waves spread forth as the vicinity regained color once more. Adris found himself trapped in place with Elevora's hand around his neck. He made a low groan and shut his eyes from the pain which was what led to the environment returning to normal. That's not nearly enough to get rid of me. Ildris voiced as he grabbed hold of her hand and opened his eyes. However the moment he opened his eyes, Elevora covered his entire face with her other hand, restricting his eyes' abilities. Ildris grabbed onto her other hand and tried to rip it off his face but it was obvious Elevora's physical strength outmatched his. After Ildris failed to remove her hand, Elevora kept choking him in a bid to make him pass out. Ildris proceeded to let go of her hands and slammed his hand onto the surface of this platform. Bang. 
a loud sound of collision rang out as both of them to shot into air, causing Elevora to slightly loosen her grip. Adris raised his knee upwards with speed, slamming into Elevora's gut which finally caused both of them to separate. The eyeball on Elevora's head glowed immensely as she shot out a destructive beam at Ildris the instant he managed to separate from her. Zerin. As the vicinity turned into black and white once more, Ildris' surrounding twisted and he disappeared. Boom. The beam slammed into the platform and Ildris appeared right behind Elevora while sending a fist towards her back. Bang. She got blasted towards the surface of the platform upon collision and slid for several feet due to the immense force. Elevora quickly picked herself up and dashed to the side. Swoosh. Ildris had appeared right beside her with an outstretched leg which she managed to dodge after moving to the side. However. Ildris suddenly spread his legs. Sending forth another kick from his other leg the instant after she dodged. Bang. This kick slammed heavily into Elevora's side as she was sent flying towards the side once more. Elevora was usually faster but with the black and white surroundings slowing her down. Ildris could match her speed and even go faster under certain conditions. Boom. She shot out another beam from her forehead which was threatening to return the vicinity to its original color as it phased forward. Adris stretched forth his hand at this point. Causing the beam to be stripped off its color as his figure turned even brighter. Swoosh. He swerved to the side and dodged the beam before dashing forward. Bang. 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 They exchanged clashes a few times and Elevora could tell that with every exchange Ildris was getting stronger. All of a sudden. Bam. A figure slammed into Ildris from the side causing him to get blasted backwards. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, e. E and Ildris groaned in pain as they slammed onto the surface of this platform and slid across the floors. Goddamn Angie you almost broke my back. He yelled out as he stood to his feet. However just as he did this. Angie arrived before him and sent out a very fast punch. E. E mouth was still wide open as he had just finished his sentence but he was unable to follow her speed. Bang. The punch slammed into E. E's gut sending him flying across the platform edge. Angie had broken out of the hold from the vortexes initially from activating a small kinetic discharge that blasted E. E across the platform. This was what caused him to collide with Ildris earlier. E. E O U. Just as the instructor was about to announce E. E's loss. Jurin. A vortex opened up behind Angie and he appeared from it. Angie quickly spun around the moment she sensed his presence and was about to attack again when. E. E got pulled back into the vortex. Another vortex opened up behind her. Jurin. Angie moved quickly in a bid to attack once more but E. E didn't appear from it instead he appeared from another vortex on her right. E. E would disappear into a vortex before Angie could arrive there and a dummy vortex would open all across the place to fool her. Jurin. I'm here. Jurin. No here. Jurin. Over here Angie. Jurin. On the other side. Elevora had once more regained the upper hand and was slamming Ildris across the place to get him to pass out. Angie knew her battle with E. E would not end if she didn't manage to get him to lose consciousness as well. E. E could keep using his vortexes to return to the platform even if she threw him off it multiple times. It was the similar for Elevora. Ildris got stronger the more he drew power from things with color in his vicinity. He had also absorbed the color from her eye attack earlier which led him to getting stronger. About 30 minutes later. Only Elevora was left standing on the platform. Elevora wins. The instructor yelled out. All other participants had been blasted off this platform and she was the last one standing. What had just ended was a private training session between the ten. Elevora. Ildris. E. E. Angie. Falco. Rhea. Glade. Vera. Matilda and Timmy. They had been having personal training the past month in preparation for leaving the camp. During this time they had trained vigorously and had lots of team battles and individual battles like this one that had just ended. Everyone had improved and even Elevora who was seen as the strongest still had a difficult time winning. Anyways the training had come to an end now that they would be leaving camp the next day. They had all been waiting for this moment and it was finally here. 
their last day in camp which was why they had this individual battles. I almost had you e. e. Angie voiced out as they walked away from the premises where they had just had the battle. Haha <laughs> better luck next time. E. E chucked as he patted her shoulder. Are you excited that you're finally going to be seeing him again tomorrow? Chapter 1017. The Irregularity at the Edge of the Milky Way. Earlier. E. E had managed to get Angie off the platform by activating one of his Vortex's new skills while Elevora managed to rid the platform of Ildris. Unfortunately E. E was not a match for Elevora who was not even affected by the suction force of his powerful Vortexes. Besides that he had expended a lot of energy while Elevora still had lots revered. Elevora was still the undisputed most powerful cadet in their set after Gustav. As everyone grew in strength she wasn't stagnated either. She was most likely the only person who was close to Gustav's strength amongst their age group while Ildris was right behind her. One of the boons of this whole thing was the fact that they had improved strength as a group so if they ever fought together on a battlefield, they would be exceptionally coordinated. Gustav had wished they would be done with camp earlier because of this. He knew a lot of situations would have been easier to take care of if the gang were together with his. Are you excited that you're finally going to be seeing him again tomorrow? E. E questioned as the group walked together. HNMM. Angie nodded her head with an excited look. But what if we get sent to a different base entirely? Falco questioned. I'm sure Gustav is aware that we'll be out tomorrow. Timmy stated. It doesn't necessarily mean we'll see him. Who knows he might be busy with something and not have the chance to meet us before we get deployed for missions. Ildris said with a logical tone. Angie looked a little downcast as she heard this. She knew there was every possibility that happening. Don't forget our main goal will always be the MBO and saving others. Seeing Gustav can always wait. Elevora said with a strong tone. My boy must have gotten way stronger though. I can't wait to see him. E. E said with a light chuckle. The night went by very quickly and the next morning arrived when some of the cadets were finally leaving. The ten weren't the only ones who had ended their training and were leaving camp today. There were no less than hundred cadets who were now full-fledged officers. Also leaving camp. Some were already final years so it was long overdue while the ones from Gustav's set leaving today were around twenty in number. All of them were special class candidates and now full-fledged officers. E. E was so excited he kept taking pictures as they left camp. Yo mum. Your son is now a true MBO officer haha. He laughed with a joyous look as he his device flew along with them while recording. That's Angie. Angie waved as the Kamara appeared in front of her. This is Ildris. Elevora. Timi. Rhea. He kept moving from side to side so everyone could be recorded. They all waved with smiles and greeted E. E's mother whenever the camera floated to their front. Falco. Sub greater than new novel a, Hafters are published on Libred. Ka. M. Sub. Nice to meet you ma'am. Falco greeted with an innocent and respectful expression. TCH another lower life. Dark Falco suddenly voiced out causing Falco to quickly cover his mouth up. Sorry. Falco apologized as he moved to the side. He he no worries Falco. FCK you dark Falco. E. E voiced out before turning to face the camera again. Sorry mama. He adopted an innocent look as he voiced out. At this point they were on the massive floating platform where they would be taking a flight on one of the MBO spacecraft to an MBO base. A group of MBO officers suddenly approached E. E and the others. With the way they were dressed. It was obvious that they weren't pilots especially when one of them had a orange colored uniform like the MBO camp commander. Anything we can help you with officers? E. E questioned as they blocked the path. The highest ranking officer among this group of officers walked forward at this point and stood directly in front of E. E. You. 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 And you. He voiced out while pointing at five of them. You're coming with me. He added. Huh. E. E exclaimed with a look of confusion. Yeah I know they're arriving today. I'll have to head down to the second base if I want to see them. Gustav voiced out in his seating position within what looked like a boardroom and an office at the same time. I could send someone to get them. Gradier Xanatus suggested. 
Nah there's no need for that. Besides they also have to get one or two missions done before I can add them to my platoon. Gustav voiced. Is this going to be an issue? Gustav proceeded to ask. Getting them to join your platoon. Gradier Xanatus voiced out. Not that. This. Gustav voiced while pointing at the holographic screen displayed up ahead. Well for now it's just an assessment and it is still being observed so it is too early to tell if it's going to be a threat or not. Gradier Xanatus said while also staring at the screen. On the screen a part in space was displayed. What could be seen here were whitish lines that made it look like there were small cracks in this part of space. Apparently it was very little but it had only recently been forming at the edge of the Milky Way. I only showed you this now because I am aware of how strange things are with you and the manifestation of your abilities. So if you know something or sense something, don't hesitate to inform me. Gradier Xanatus explained. For now it truly doesn't seem like a big deal but no worries. I'll be sure to let you know if I find out something. Gustav voiced out with a suspicious tone. By the way has scientists been sent there to investigate? Gustav asked. Yes but they haven't discovered anything. It's not a rift because it doesn't have the same characteristics with a rift but it does emit a weird and unknown energy. Gradier Xanatus replied. Chapter 1018 Where are the others? Author's note. Unedited chapters. Do you know what that is? Gustav asked internally. It could be a number of things. It's too far away for me to come up with anything accurate. Trying to study it from here will just be me coming up with assumptions. The system responded. Hmm. I don't know if this is something we should be worried about. Anything related to space is now a sensitive topic because of the warp demolator but we can't tell if this is relayed or not. Gustav had a contemplative look as he said internally. Gradier Xanatus. Do keep me posted on this. I may or may not have an answer later. Gustav stated. All right. Gradier Xanatus stated. Gustav left after a few more seconds of chatting with Gradier Xanatus. He was now heading towards the second base. This would have taken time if he used one of the aircraft or MBO private jets but with the dimensional bracelet it only took a couple of seconds. Zing. Gustav disappeared from the MBO tower after choosing his location and reappeared back within the second base. The instant he arrived in the luxurious house within second base, he moved out towards one of the revetment. Gustav could already spot aircraft landing from in the southwest area. Hover has been activated. Swoosh. The base was always filled with MBO officers so he decided to fly. Gustav arrived there in a few seconds and upon landing, he could already spot cadets. Gustav was only wearing a tank top and shorts so no officer around here would even be able to tell what his rank was unless they recognized him. Where is that powerful presence coming from? Isn't that Gustav Crimson? Hey it's really Gustav Crimson. I could barely recognize him. He looks. Different. Better. Stronger. I wish we could have seen a fight between him and Rufus. The cadets who were now full-fledged officers conversed about Gustav the moment they spotted him. What is he doing here? The other officers who had been in the second base since questioned amongst themselves. Everyone knew Gustav was in the MBO tower in Plankton City so they couldn't understand how he suddenly appeared here. Gustav. A familiar voice was heard from up ahead causing a smile to appear on his face. A group of five could be seen approaching Gustav from up ahead. The hundreds of other cadets walking away from where aircraft were parked up ahead parted ways for this group because everyone knew well the only people Gustav moved with in camp. Falco. Gustav voiced out as he closed in on them. Crazy bastard you got stronger again. Dark Falco voiced out the instant he arrived in front of Gustav. Shut up. Falco voiced before reaching out to give Gustav a fist bump. Bump. Gustav returned the fist bump and proceeded to do the same with Timmy as well. Rival. Rhea yelled out as he jumped into Gustav's embrace instead of giving a fist bump. Yo Rhea. Gustav chuckled. Matilda who was about to hug Gustav earlier reached out and dragged Rhea by the hair. T-S-S-S-H-H-H. Ta-ta-ta. Rhea screamed out in pain as he got pulled away from Gustav. Don't be girly. She voiced out. What I and my rival share is beyond gender limitations woman. Rhea yelled out as he tried to get her to let go of his hair. 
Vera who was at the side smiled and moved to stand in front of Gustav. Vera. Gustav said with a smile before she leapt into his embrace. Gustav rubbed her hair a little and patted her like a pet. I missed you. She said with a cute tone as she disengaged from him. How have you been doing? Did you practice a lot like I told you to? Gustav questioned. She nodded cutely with a smile. I'm now at the third step falcon rank and I can control my ability better now. She disclosed. Gustav had a gratified look as he heard that but then a bothered expression appeared on his face. Where are the others? He inquired. So far he could only see. Timi. Rhea. Falco. Matilda and Vera. Falco stared at Matilda first before he turned to stare at Gustav. This is what happened. Minutes later Gustav had a contemplative expression after hearing what Falco had revealed. So they were scouted at the last minute for this unknown mission. Gustav inquired. Yes. Falco confirmed. The officers said they only wanted the five of them and the rest of us should follow the cadets to the base. Matilda explained. So you guys have no idea what mission they're embarking on? Gustav questioned. No idea at all. They were taken away in a different aircraft. Timi said while shaking his head. Gustav had a slightly worried expression but he knew well that the MVO wouldn't just send them on a mission recklessly knowing they had a lot of potential. They would only send them on a mission they were sure. The five could handle. Angie. Speed. Matilda. Destructiveness. Ee. -e. Infiltration and escape. Ildris. Power. Angie. Strength and combat ability. Gustav made analysis in his head. They are definitely sending them on a covert mission. Either they're meant to destroy, protect or acquire something secretly. Gustav voiced out. How do you know? Falco questioned. Their lineup makes it obvious. Gustav responded. Falco and the others had looks of confusion on their faces as they heard that. Never mind. Let's head to the house first. Gustav proposed. They proceeded to leave here and head towards the place Gustav usually stayed with Miss Amy whenever he was here. The instant they arrived at the house, everyone piped down and settled in even. They weren't too worried about the situation with E. E and the rest because they knew well that getting picked for special missions was normal especially when certain officers suited some types of missions. Rival you have to tell us all about your escapades in these past months. Rhea voiced out. The entire camp was always talking about you. You have a lot to tell us. Matilda stated as well. Chapter 1019. Mission in Planet Mendelagas. I will in due time. I don't want to have to repeat anything I say later when the others get back. Gustav said while helping them settle in. Right now you guys should focus on getting a mission before IYSOP training begins next month. Gustav added with a contemplative tone. Oh come on. Just a snippet. Falco was also interested in hearing all about it. I'll be back guys. Gustav stated as he began tapping on his left wrist. Huh. Falco exclaimed. Need to head back to the MBO tower in Plankton City. I won't be long. Gustav explained. Dimensional travel in. 3. 2. 1. Zing. A flash of bright blue light engulfed Gustav and he disappeared in the next instant. Gustav reappeared within the same boardroom he chatted with Gradier Xanatus earlier. The instant Gradier Xanatus saw him, he knew something was up. Gustav explained what had happened with the other five to him and Gradier Xanatus decided to help him check the mission they got drafted for. It's an outside planet mission. After some minutes of asking around, Gradier Xanatus finally had some information for him. They're off planet right now. Gustav was a bit surprised by this. Yes. It was impromptu but they are currently off planet. Headed towards another planet. Gradier Xanatus stated. Where? Gustav inquired. Planet Mendelagas. Gradier Xanatus revealed. Planet Mendelagas. Why? In an unknown part of the galaxy a massive spacecraft with the MBO emblem traveled at very high speed. Jirai WHH. It passed through several wormholes as it sped its way across the Milky Way. Within a group of seven could be seen seated across one another in space suits. Besides this group of seven, two high-ranking MBO officers who were also clad in space suits strapped themselves in different spots. It was already obvious that they weren't a part of the mission like the seven. 
I certainly did not expect this. Ildris voiced out from the side. That we would be on a mission to a planet several galaxies away. E. E questioned with a light chuckle. Yeah. Ildris replied. The mission. It's certainly one we can successfully complete. Angie voiced out as well. The generals say we just have to get rid of the device or steal it. Elevora said with a tone of decisiveness. Glade was also in their midst and they all began planning according to the information that had been revealed to them. They were all clad in dark space suits which covered the entirety of their bodies so it was hard to tell them apart but their voices made things easier. Just follow our instructions newbies. One of the other two were given the role captain and company captain of the squad voiced out. Sure sure. So long as you know what you guys know what you're doing. Elevora was not one that took to getting controlled unless the situation demanded it so she voiced out with a strong tone that depicted. She would disobey commands that didn't make sense to her. Are you assuming we're stupid and can't lead a squad? The one who spoke earlier. Voiced out once more. Don't put words in my mouth. Just lead right if you wanna be followed. Elevora voiced out once more. The officer was about to speak again when the other one interrupted him. Davidson. It's fine. We'll see what they've got when we land. I hope to God that you five are capable enough or we'll leave you behind. The captain of the squad voiced out. Don't be so quick to assume. Captain Spark. Who knows who will be left in the dust when we land. E. E said with a smile while turning to stare at Angie. If one thing the five had learned from Gustav despite being different from him was not backing down in the face of intimidation. They knew if they just left things without exchanging a few words with the captain and company captain. It gave these two the chance to push them around anyhow they willed. Are we all getting along? One of the generals voiced out from up front. Yes sir. They all yelled out in unison. Good. You seven will have to work fast in unity and complete this mission. Once you're done. Meet back at the drop zone and an emergency spacecraft will get you out of there. Remember you have to leave within the duration set or you will die there. The general voiced out with a strong tone. Is that understood? He questioned. Yes sir. They yelled out in unison once more. After the general went silent. The five went back to making plans. The second MBO base. Their mission is off planet. Falco voiced with a shocked tone. Yes. Gustav confirmed. How lucky. No off planet mission is below five stars. Matilda voiced out with an envious tone. Officers with off-planet mission success are more revered and even have chances of being amongst the group of officers that get sent on galactic missions. Timmy voiced with a tone of interest. Not even Gustav has embarked on an off-planet mission before. Vera said with a low tone. There was never an opportunity to. To many situations happening on Earth that I couldn't ignore. Gustav pointed out. While Gustav was speaking with Gradier Xanatus about the mission earlier. Gradier Xanatus revealed something to him. They already sent a team earlier but said team was wiped out before they achieved the objective. Only two of them are still alive so it's also a rescue mission because the MBO never abandons one of their own. Gradier Xanatus voiced out. Oh. That makes things more difficult. Doesn't it? Gustav questioned. They're your friends. Do you believe they are good enough to complete the mission? Grady Xanatus threw out this question as well. I do. Gustav replied. Then it's fine. Grady or Xanatus stated. Oh and by the way. They initially planned to send you on that mission. You ignored them. Grady or Xanatus revealed. What? Gustav had a look of surprise as he exclaimed. He then recalled General Sorkrad looking everywhere for him at the time he was creating a cure for the Ashy infection. Chapter 1020 I will be participating in IYSOP. Author's note. Unedited chapters. He then recalled General Sorkrad looking everywhere for him at the time he was creating a cure for the ashy infection. Oh. Gustav nearly facepalmed as he reminisced. Gustav mind reeled back to reality at this point. It doesn't really matter anyways. We'll be leaving for IYSOP in six months time anyways. Gustav stated. We. Falco voiced with a curious tone. You've decided to participate? Matilda asked with a slightly surprised look. Yes. I will be participating in IYSOP. Gustav disclosed. They all had excited looks as they heard that. 
But I won't be joining you guys in the training though. Gustav added. The training is mandatory. Falco stated. Not for me. I'll be busy with other things. Gustav said with an unbothered expression. By the way I got a mission for you five. Gustav added. Everyone gathered around him as they heard this. I will be able to add you guys to my platoon if you're able to successfully complete this mission so don't mess it up. Gustav pointed out with a serious tone. Sure. Just tell us what the mission is. Timmy voiced in response. My body is itching to finally be on the battlefield ha ha ha. Rhea said with an excited look. The day went by very quickly and Gustav had spent this time making inquiries. Passing information and preparing the other five for their mission in two days time. For E. E and the others. They were still cruising across the galaxy due to the distance of Mendelaga's planet. The galaxy in which Mendelaga's was located was quite distant and with the speed of the spacecraft it would take no less than four days of traveling to get there. This was a huge step up compared to back in the past when it would take many months for them to complete such a journey. This speed was made possible with the dimensional checkpoints placed in different parts of space that generated teleportation wormholes. They could beat time and travel way faster with these wormholes letting them appear millions of light years ahead of their position. This shortened the travel which made it possible for them to get there in four days. Even with these dimensional checkpoint constructed in different parts of space that made space travel faster. There were still journeys that would take weeks or months if they were way farther than Mendelaga's planet. The group was lucky this travel would only be taking four days. This would mostly be a crazy experience for them. While on this journey they noticed that they would occasionally stop at different locations. These locations in space had massive spacecraft that looked like mansions floating in space. They would be scanned by the officers from these massive spacecraft before they were given permission to resume flight. According to the generals in the spacecraft, this was usual protocol and was always needed to separate criminals from legal spacecraft. Space pirates were common in this age and since space was endless, catching these criminals was always difficult. However these space pirates knew not to every try to cross paths with the MBO or any other power intergalactic force in space so 99% of the times it was safe for MBO spacecraft. They rarely ever got attacked by any criminals in space. As the days went by Gustav still stuck to his schedule of making more research about the warp demolator while training also. Alright guys. Your mission will most likely take about two weeks to complete and I don't think the others will take too long to complete theirs either so we'll still be meeting back here after y'all are done. Gustav voiced out. Falco. Matilda. Timmy. Vera and Rhea all nodded as they heard that. Phew. Our first five-star mission. Matilda voiced with a nervous tone. Don't worry you'll do good. Gustav said while tapping her shoulder. I'll be one step closer to being powerful enough to go after Daria if I complete this. She assured herself internally. Gustav saw them off to an aircraft that was waiting to cart them away to their mission location. After a few minutes they were gone. Just met up after months and they're gone again. Gustav shook his head. Being a part of the MBO was truly no easy task. Gustav now understood why more than 80% of the MBO was without spouses. Even those who had spouses probably didn't have the chance to spend a lot of time with them. Missions were unending and there would always be one issue or the other. Jack and Mac were still unmarried even after living for over a century. Gustav was not even sure if they had ever dated anyone or had any romance with the opposite sex. He was sure he would have been the same way if Angie was not in the picture. MBO officers were truly lonely people in the aspect of romance but at the very least Gustav was trying to bring all the people he cared about together. If he managed to get each any every one of them to be a part of his platoon. It would make things less lonely since they would always be with him on any mission. Gustav proceeded to head back to the MBO tower after the five had left. He won't be seeing any one of them again till two weeks time and he was still a little disappointed he didn't even get to see Angie or E. E but he shrugged it off. It's just two weeks. Nothing compared to months. Gustav said internally. You really miss them. Don't you? The system questioned with a teasing tone. No I don't. Gustav responded as he walked down the corridors of the MBO tower. 
Poor Gustav. He misses his lover. Misses the kisses. Misses the bedroom actions. He he he. The system kept teasing. Shut up. I don't am I. Gustav. In the process of this bantering. A familiar voice called out to Gustav. Gradier Xanatus. Gustav voiced out as he spotted the figure that had just called out to him. Come see this. Gradier Xanatus said while leading him to an office within the tower. Chapter 1021. Checking up on Miss Amy. Upon entering. A large holographic screen could be seen on display. This holographic screen showed a part in space. It was the same area at the edge of the Milky Way where white lines resembling cracks were spotted. It has spread. Gradier Xanatus voiced out while hinting at the holographic footage. I can see that. Gustav responded while moving closer to the screen. It could be seen on the screen that these white lines were not only longer but had now appeared in multiple spots as well. Gustav's eyes squinted as he questioned. Have the researchers figured anything out yet? Nothing at all. Even after all the readings. They still believe this isn't a rift. Great Eat Xanatus responded. Can I get the data of the energy readings? Gustav questioned as he kept staring at the footage with a suspicious expression. It will take a while but I can get it to you. Gradier Xanatus replied. How long? Gustav inquired. A few days. Okay. Gustav went back to his room after a few more minutes of discussing with Gradier Xanatus. Just like he had mentioned before. It would be dumb for him to just make assumptions without properly looking at different clues to investigate the situation. Gustav couldn't put his thumb on why he felt a sense of familiarity from this recent happening but even with that he still had no idea what could be causing this. His gut was never wrong so he was sure that whatever discovery that was made in the future would be related to something he somehow knew. Gradier Xanatus had mentioned that whatever it was. The MBO had placed him and a few others in charge to make sure it was taken care of before it became an issue in the future. The MBO was all for prevention before cure. They didn't want to wait till it became an actual problem before tackling it which was why they were already taking some steps to neutralize the cracks. Gradier Xanatus just had to inform Gustav because he wanted to remain posted about this situation and it would help if Gustav knew anything about this. Now Gustav just had to wait till the data of the energy readings was gathered for him. After arriving back at his room, Gustav proceeded to sit on his bed cross-legged and began to channel his bloodline. Almost at the third step. I should be able to achieve it in the next two to three days. Gustav said internally as channeled his bloodline. He close to reaching the third step of echo rank at this point. Gustav still had one more bloodline rank boost pill. If he used this, advancing to the next step would have been instantaneous. It had been months already but Gustav wanted to advance to the next step naturally even though it was slower. He decided he would only use another pill in case of an emergency. I also have to check on Miss Amy today. Gustav decided he would check on Miss Amy by nightfall. It had been a week since he last checked up on her to be sure she was okay. Night arrived very quickly and Gustav stopped channeling his bloodline at this point. Upon opening his eyes, he activated God Eyes. Life sign tracking has been activated. He proceeded to use this ability and instantly picked Miss Amy's life sign in his mind. A scent. Zoom. His mind drifted into another dimension as his sight displayed a different place. Gustav could sight some flaky looking dust in the vicinity in a dark ground. Oh the fog is lifting. Gustav said internally as he noticed this. The other times he had been checking on Miss Amy. The fog in the area always made visibility so bad he had no idea where Miss Amy could be because of this. Unlike the last time as well. There was also a little bit of brightness in the sky. He could see through Miss Amy's forehead so view was limited unless she moved about. Gustav could only see in a particular direction and couldn't even see the sky properly due to this. Miss Amy suddenly tilted her head a little to the side turning Gustav's vision slanted. This made Gustav see into the sky better and his eyes squinted a bit as he spotted some strange things. There's are no stars. Moons or even a sun. So where is this dim lighting coming from? He wondered. Gustav couldn't find a way to answer this question since he couldn't look around more than he wanted to. 
he could tell that Miss Amy was currently seated somewhere on this dark ground just staring forward. He was unable to answer the questions plaguing his mind as Miss Amy lowered her head and stared down at something she just pulled out of thin air. Gustav's eyes widened as an holographic image popped up in Miss Amy's line of sight. It was an image of both of them. Gustav had his mouth wide open like he was yelling in pain while Miss Amy was seating on his back with a domineering loom. Gustav recalled this was taken during a training session where Miss Amy had totally dominated him. He gave up and was tapping out but Miss Amy refused to free him and kept seating on his back. A smile appeared on Miss Amy's face as she reached out to touch Gustav's face but her hand phased through the holographic screen. Jurin. It disappeared after a few more seconds and Miss Amy went back to staring into thin air. Gustav wished he had a way to pass a message to her. He wanted to tell her of all his endeavors and how he had gotten rid of the bastard that put her in this situation. Sigh Miss Amy. Just as Gustav said this internally Miss Amy turned her head left and right repeatedly. Did I just? I must be getting delusional now. She muttered while facepalming. She felt she heard a very low voice but not audible enough to make out the words so she was sure she just hallucinated for a bit. Chapter 1022 were close. Author's note. Unedited chapters. She felt she heard a very low voice but not audible enough to make out the words so she was sure she just hallucinated for a bit. If Gustav could hear what she was saying he would understand that his thoughts just traveled across galaxies into Miss Amy's mind even though it was barely audible. He would have tried better to make it work but Atlas. He had no idea Miss Amy heard a little bit of what he said. Must be because I expended too much energy today. But I'm breaking through so it wasn't a useless endeavor. She voiced out what she thought was the reason for her hallucination while looking around. Gustav could sense her loneliness despite Miss Amy being the kind of person that stayed away from people. At this point Gustav had to deactivate life signs tracking due to expending a lot of energy. The farther the location of the person's life signs that he was currently tracking, the more energy would be expended. With how much energy was being expended currently he was sure Miss Amy was very far away. He still wished he could find a way to tell her to come back to Earth since there was already a cure. However there was still no clue as to where exactly she was in the vast and endless space. It was even more confusing with what Gustav had seen this night. Another thing that baffled Gustav was the fact that she had been gone for months yet she doesn't seem to have spiraled out of control like the other infected. Her mind was still sane and she didn't feel the need to go on any rampage. Gustav had even spotted her hands and part of her wrists multiple times when he checked on her and from what he noticed. Her skin wasn't ashy. She still seemed a bit pale and it was hard to give a 100% accurate analysis of her skin looks due to the dim lighting in her vicinity but Gustav could still tell that her skin was not as ashy as the other infect fed. Doesn't she have any plans of fixing things Abed coming back? Gustav was quite worried that he might never be able to set eyes on Miss Amy in the flesh. There was no way to know how exactly she was faring but all he knew was the fact that she was currently alright. If Gustav had left life signs tracking active for a few more seconds he would have noticed something that would have helped since Miss Amy looked around after he deactivated the ability. They're never gonna find her if she doesn't want to be found. I guess I can only hope and keep looking for ways to actually contact her. Gustav thought. He went back to channeling his bloodline afterwards which he focused on for the entire night. In a flash three more days had gone by and on this day. Gustav planned to visit a particular research center. Cardinsville City. I'll be in and out before anyone realizes it. Gustav thought as he stood to his feet to prepare. He got into the bathroom. Took his shower and was out in a couple of minutes. Gustav wore a suit and a tie along with plain black pants that made him look a bit nerdy. To add the ultimate touch of nerdiness. He got a glass with clinical lens from his storage device and put on. Gustav moved to stand right in front of the mirror as his facial features and body size changed. Gustav reached a height of 7 feet as his body turned thinner and his skin a little paler. His hair became yellow in color as he adopted a very different but handsome young nerdy look. Gustav smiled with a tone of gratification after scrutinizing his current looks. Time to go. He said internally as he activated his dimensional bracelet. 
Gustav was currently heading to the secret research center where Amira's mother from the bureau was making research on scientist Zill's dimensional displacement theory. Despite knowing the location since over a month ago, Gustav didn't head there all this time. He didn't have much hope for this visitation but he wanted to make sure he checked a couple of things out related to scientist Zill's research completely before embarking on this journey. He was sure this wouldn't take long anyways since he would be visiting with the identity of a scientist from the bureau. It was a fake identity but Gustav had planted it in the database so even if this person did not truly exist, he would have no problem using the identity. Meanwhile, on a planet with with red sands and a grayish looking sky filled with green stars. A group of seven silently made their way across a silent pathway. This pathway seemed to be situated between what seemed like two massive pipe-like structures. It was impossible to tell that the two structures by the side were like pipelines if one was walking on this path due to their massive sizes. However if one was staring from above, far high in the sky, one would be able to tell that these look like massive steel pipes. The GPS says we'll have to turn right after crossing another hundred feet. One of the members of this group who was also clad in dark skin tight suit voiced out. They were all clad in this suit and had a dark helmet with red glasses on as well. This helped them in breathing within this foreign planet. Davidson. How far away are we from the designated point right now? The person who seemed to be the leader of the group inquired. 12,000 paces away. Davidson responded while staring at the holographic image the device in his hand was shooting out. We're close. At this pace it should only take us about an hour to get there. Ildris voiced out. We've been traveling for almost 12 hours. At least we're close now. Blade said with a tone of relief and excitement. Guys but how is it that we've not encountered any form of disturbance since we dropped onto this planet? E. He stated with a disturbed tone. Chapter 1023, 2. Do you know what that is? Gustav asked internally. It could be a number of things. It's too far away for me to come up with anything accurate. Trying to study it from here will just be me coming up with assumptions. The system responded. Hmm. I don't know if this is something we should be worried about. Anything related to space is now a sensitive topic because of the warp demolator but we can't tell if this is relayed or not. Gustav had a contemplative look as he said internally. Gradier Xanatus. Do keep me posted on this. I may or may not have an answer later. Gustav stated. All right. Gradier Xanatus stated. Gustav left after a few more seconds of chatting with Gradier Xanatus. He was now heading towards the second base. This would have taken time if he used one of the aircraft or MBO private jets but with the dimensional bracelet it only took a couple of seconds. Zing. Gustav disappeared from the MBO tower after choosing his location and reappeared back within the second base. The instant he arrived in the luxurious house within second base, he moved out towards one of the revetment. Gustav could already spot aircraft landing from in the southwest area. Hover has been activated. Swoosh. The base was always filled with MBO officers so he decided to fly. Gustav arrived there in a few seconds and upon landing, he could already spot cadets. Gustav was only wearing a tank top and shorts so no officer around here would even be able to tell what his rank was unless they recognized him. Where is that powerful presence coming from? Isn't that Gustav Crimson? Hey it's really Gustav Crimson. I could barely recognize him. He looks. Different. Better stronger. I wish we could have seen a fight between him and Rufus. The cadets who were now full-fledged officers conversed about Gustav the moment they spotted him. What is he doing here? The other officers who had been in the second base since questioned amongst themselves. Everyone knew Gustav was in the MBO tower in Plankton City so they couldn't understand how he suddenly appeared here. Gustav. A familiar voice was heard from up ahead causing a smile to appear on his face. A group of five could be seen approaching Gustav from up ahead. The hundreds of other cadets walking away from where aircraft were parked up ahead parted ways for this group because everyone knew well the only people Gustav moved within camp. Falco. Gustav voiced out as he closed in on them. Crazy bastard you got stronger again. Dark Falco voiced out the instant he arrived in front of Gustav. Shut up. 
Falco voiced before reaching out to give Gustav a fist bump. Bump. Gustav returned the fist bump and proceeded to do the same with Timmy as well. Rival. Ria yelled out as he jumped into Gustav's embrace instead of giving a fist bump. Yo Ria. Gustav chuckled. Matilda who was about to hug Gustav earlier reached out and dragged Ria by the hair. T-S-S-S-H-H-H. Ta-ta-ta. Ria screamed out in pain as he got pulled away from Gustav. Don't be girly. She voiced out. What I and my rival share is beyond gender limitations woman. Ria yelled out as he tried to get her to let go of his hair. Vera who was at the side smiled and moved to stand in front of Gustav. Vera. Gustav said with a smile before she leapt into his embrace. Gustav rubbed her hair a little and patted her like a pet. I missed you. She said with a cute tone as she disengaged from him. How have you been doing? Did you practice a lot like I told you to? Gustav questioned. She nodded cutely with a smile. I'm now at the third step falcon rank and I can control my ability better now. She disclosed. Gustav had a gratified look as he heard that but then a bothered expression appeared on his face. Where are the others? He inquired. So far he could only see. Timmy. Rhea. Falco. Matilda and Vera. Falco stared at Matilda first before he turned to stare at Gustav. This is what happened. Minutes later Gustav had a contemplative expression after hearing what Falco had revealed. So they were scouted at the last minute for this unknown mission. Gustav inquired. Yes. Falco confirmed. The officers said they only wanted the five of them and the rest of us should follow the cadets to the base. Matilda explained. So you guys have no idea what mission they're embarking on? Gustav questioned. No idea at all. They were taken away in a different aircraft. Timmy said while shaking his head. Gustav had a slightly worried expression but he knew well that the MBO wouldn't just send them on a mission recklessly knowing they had a lot of potential. They would only send them on a mission they were sure. The five could handle. Angie. Speed. Matilda. Destructiveness. E. -E. Infiltration and escape. Ildris. Power. Angie. Strength and combat ability. Gustav made analysis in his head. They are definitely sending them on a covert mission. Either they're meant to destroy, protect or acquire something secretly. Gustav voiced out. How do you know? Falco questioned. Their lineup makes it obvious. Gustav responded. Falco and the others had looks of confusion on their faces as they heard that. Never mind. Let's head to the house first. Gustav proposed. They proceeded to leave here and head towards the place Gustav usually stayed with Miss Amy whenever he was here. The instant they arrived at the house, everyone piped down and settled in even. They weren't too worried about the situation with E. E and the rest because they knew well that getting picked for special missions was normal especially when certain officers suited some types of missions. Rival you have to tell us all about your escapades in these past months. Rhea voiced out. The entire camp was always talking about you. You have a lot to tell us. Matilda stated as well. Chapter 1024 Arriving at the Mission Location Author's Note Unedited Chapters Guys but how is it that we've not encountered any form of disturbance since we dropped onto this planet? E. E stated with a disturbed tone. This route was said to be secure by scouts so this is a good thing. Captain Spark stated. Still. I haven't even heard any sounds of disturbance or anything echoing in the distance. E. E was still worried as they moved along. This feels like a huge waste of time. I could be in and out of there before anyone realizes it. Angie also voiced out. Besides the captain and company captain. Everyone else there knew of her capabilities so they didn't doubt this. We can't make use of our abilities just yet. We have to wait till we're in there. Did you forget the other team was wiped out because their bloodline energies were traced when they made use of their abilities before arriving at the location? Company Captain Davidson voiced out lengthily. I didn't forget but I'm faster than you think. Angie was confident in her speed in getting the device out of there before the aliens realized. No. It doesn't matter. We have to be careful with our movement and alarming them before we're at the location. Captain Spark voiced out. I agree with the captain. Angie I know you're fast but who knows if they have set standard precautions for someone with abilities like yours. 
Safer is better. Elevora said with a straight face. No one could dispute that there was sense in what this decision. Besides, even though Angie's speed might be unexpected, there might still be opponents that could find ways to stop her. On the bright side they were closer to the location of the device. In the next hour, the group of seven had arrived at the end of a pathway and they spotted a particular structure up front. A couple of feet away, they spotted the entrance of what looked like a cave below the foot of a massive 7,000 feet tall rock. The strange looking rock was greenish in color with glowing red lines spreading across it. As they looked up they could see that the rock had multiple holes in different areas. At the foot of the rock where they could spot the entry into one of the caves. Two dark cloudly like figures looking like silhouettes with white eyes could be seen. They were like guards standing at the entrance but they were not exactly standing. They were floating a little bit above ground. Both of them were at least 14 feet in height and still not close to half of the size of the cave entrance. The craziest part was. Every single cave in the massive 7,000 feet tall rock had two of these dark cloudly figures with massive white eye sockets floating right in front. With the size of the rock. One could see that there were no less than 200 from the bottom to the top just on this side of the rock. Let's do a quick scan. Company Captain Davidson voiced as they remained in hiding while scrutinizing the vicinity. The others squatted at the left side of where this pathway ended as they stared up front. The holographic map in front of Davidson changed as began scanning the structure in front. So those are the Mendelagas eh? They look even more scarier in closer proximity. E. He said with a tone that depicted he was more intrigued than bothered. Don't forget they have different abilities based on how long they have lived. The captain voiced out. Sensory manipulation. Holographic projection. Temporary possession. Psionic blasts. The ones over 500 years old can use every single ability while the ones below can only make use of three. Yes we still remember. Ildris responded. The smaller the size the older the Mendelaga. But this information is only useful if we get in a clash with them. We just need to make sure that doesn't happen. Elevora stated as well. I doubt we can get in unnoticed though. E. E said with a slightly bothered tone. I heard your vortexes also have spatial travel ability. Can't you get us in? Captain Spark questioned. Without knowing how the interior of this structure looks. We might appear anywhere within and we could find ourselves surrounded if we just appeared anywhere or who knows we could just end up appearing in a place that would spell the end for us. E. E felt it was too risky since they didn't know what they would be walking into. Davidson. Are you done scanning? Captain Spark inquired. In a second. Done. Company Captain Davidson stated as the rock structure in front of them appeared in holographic format. In this holographic format. It was like an X-ray displaying the interior of the structure. Now we're talking. E. E voiced as he stared at it. Wow there are still more than 500 of them within. Angie said with a look of astonishment. The device is just that important to them. Probably their last hope too since it could render someone like Jack useless. Company Captain Davidson voiced out. It turned out that this device they were tasked with destroying or bringing back was powerful enough to render someone like Jack useless. This was the main reason the MBO stopped him from infiltrating the planet all this time. The strength of Earth would he significantly reduced if they were to lose Jack. Especially right now when Miss Amy was missing. They couldn't send just anyone to get rid of the device since they had information on it and on the Mendelagas. The device would only react to great power or mixed bloods within a certain range of strength so these young officers had to be sent on the mission of retrieval or destruction instead of other stronger officers. If Earth was aiming to destroy planet Mendelagas, this whole battle would have ended already but they wanted to colonize it instead which was why it was taking longer. Chapter 1025, Creating a Diversion Jack could have destroyed the entire planet long ago but he wasn't allowed to and he wasn't allowed to infiltrate either because they couldn't risk it so he had to wait till they had gotten rid of this device. Can you get us in now? Captain Spark questioned. Getting us in was never the problem. E. He rolled his eyes as he figured Captain Spark didn't understand his initial explanation. From what I'm seeing. I can make us appear anywhere within now but as you can see. The entire place is swarming with them. 
We will be surrounded the moment we appeared within. E. E added while staring at the X-ray-like holographic footage. Captain Spark had a contemplative expression as he stared at the footage for a bit. We have two missions on this planet. Retrieving the device and rescuing the other two officers from the group that was initially sent here. He began voicing out. We'll be splitting up because the moment they know we're here. It's gonna be harder to find the other two when we're done completing the first mission. Captain Spark added. Oh. Okay so what's the plan? Ildris inquired. It's time for us to see how fast you are. Captain Spark voiced while staring at Angie. Angie's eyes squinted as she heard that. A few minutes later the guard standing in front of the cave entrance at the foot of the rock stared in a particular direction after sensing something. A pound percent less than greater than greater than a at carrot, the first one spoke in a weird tongue as the other one also stared forward with a look of suspicion. A figure walking towards them from up ahead became even clearer when the person began causing a certain silver glow in the surroundings. She had three horns portruding out of her forehead and her pinkish and silver hair could be seen floating in the air as she took steps closer to the rock. Plus plus equals percent and greater than at carat, carat, percent percent at carat at. The other guard who voiced out the same weird tongue which translated to. It's an alien. It quickly raised an alarm as Angie arrived close to the entrance suddenly. Boom. A burst of silver energy blasted forth from her figure. Slamming heaving into the massive rock and the dark cloudy figures floating in front. The two were instantly disintegrated by the sheer force of the energy that wasn't even accumulated to 100%. GBBHHLLGBBBB. The entire rock trembled vigorously but surprisingly that was the highest that happened. Despite how strong the energy was. It didn't even manage to cause a single crack on this massive rock. Loud voices in different tongues suddenly began to ring out from every direction as the other Mendelagas began flying out of the cave to confront the intruder. In barely a few seconds, more than 200 of them had appeared and surrounded Angie from every direction. The third horn that had grown out of Angie's forehead earlier rescinded as she regained her former look. Angie's figure suddenly blurred as she turned around and sped away. Swoosh. The Mendelagas who thought she couldn't escape because they had already surrounded her were shocked when she displayed immense speed and wriggled her way out of their formation. F. The yells in a different tongue was heard once more as they turned around and gave a chase. The over 200 Mendelagas gave chase to Angie as she sped further away from the rock structure. They had no idea she was leading them away so the others could have easier entry into the rocky structure. Angie would occasionally slow down so the Mendelagas could close in a bit only for her to speed up again. The Mendelagas shot out whitish beams from their face area as they chased after her but Angie was quick enough to dodge this projectiles as she led them around the place. Zoom. A vortex opened up within a hallway in the rock structure and the captain. Elevora along with E. E phased out of it. Davidson were in. Direct us. He muttered through the communication channel. Take the first left. Be careful there are guards patrolling that pathway. Davidson informed from a hidden location outside of the rocky structure. While the three infiltrated to get the device. Angie led the Mendelagas around with her speed. She felt she could do this all day because despite their flight ability she was still faster than them. Glade and Ildris had been tasked with finding the other two officers who were said to have gone into hiding after the unsuccessful mission. This second objective wasn't as important as the first which was why they wouldn't be blamed if they were unable to find these two but at the very least they had to try. Earth. Oh interesting. Truly interesting madam. A slim seven feet tall young man in glasses voiced out with a hearty smile as he spoke to a middle aged looking woman with blonde hair. Mr. Icepect. I truly hope the world government do not intend to pull their funding on this research. The blonde haired middle aged woman said with a pleading tone. It is to be debated Mrs. May. So far I have seen that there have been progress with the research so I will put in a good word for you. Mr. Icepect who was actually Gustav in disguise voiced out. Thank you so much Mr. Icepect. It would truly be a shame if the funding was to end and this research ends up being accurate in its topic. It could potentially save the world if more discoveries are made. Mrs. May responded with a tone of appreciation while explaining. I absolutely understand Mrs. May. 
Mr. Icepect said while staring through a glass wall where a lab full of scientists could be seen. An instrument with a circular top and thin pole-like glass extending from the bottom could be seen making some weird calculations. Are you sure you did not leave out any information or discovery? Mr. Icepect questioned. None at all. The data I passed to you is everything we have found out in the past few years. Mrs. May said with a tone of certainty. I guess this concludes my visit here today. Mr. Icepect said while smiling. Chapter 1026 Guardian's Consent. Author's Note. Unedited Chapters. Right outside the spacecraft. A burst of flames had been ignited from the bottom of this building-sized machine. The spacecraft lifted off into the air after getting cleared for takeoff as the rooftop of the MBO tower's last floor opened up. Zuri. Since they were already in space. There was no need for any part of the spacecraft to dislodge or anything like that. They flew across space. Traveling at a speed that was 1000 times faster than sound at the onset. As the spacecraft traveled further into space. It breached the speed of light generating a wormhole that increased travel speed. Originally it would take very long to get to the edge of the Milky Way. But with the speed of this spacecraft it would only take about a day. Gustav was already admiring space as they blasted through the wormhole before arriving at another part of space. In just a few minutes they had long passed Jupiter and were heading further into the Milky Way. Even if a spacecraft was moving at the speed of light it would still take billions of hours before it could get to the edge of the Milky Way. This was how vast space was. With the ancient spacecraft one would be spending millions of years traveling before they could get to the edge of the galaxy and humans never lived that long. If it wasn't for the technology of the Slarkovs that had been improved over the thousands of years, the time frame wouldn't have been decreased from millions of years to just a single day. At the moment the spacecraft was moving at 20 times the speed of light uninterrupted. They would occasionally cut through wormholes and have their journey decreased by up to 20,000 light years. The extreme jump wormholes didn't need to be used as they were only leaving for the edge of the Milky Way and not somewhere farther. It's more exhilarating than I expected. Gustav said internally as he looked through some of the small glasses in front of him. He couldn't count the number of times they had penetrated stars yet they came out unscathed without the star causing any damage to the spacecraft or the spacecraft destroying the star. It was impossible to truly follow the speed of a spacecraft which was why they were always clad in these black technological space suits which usually helped in increasing their reflexes and sensory ability. If something were to truly ever happen in space like an emergency with space pirates or any other issue, the spacecraft would have to stop or slow down because Gustav doubt anyone would be able to act with such speed. Gustav was counting down in his mind as they journeyed across space ready to complete his mission. The MBO camp. Endrick were letting you leave in good faith that you are ready to become an officer. One of the instructors voiced out to Endrick in the camp hall. I am ready sir. I have completed all training like you wanted me to and passed all the tests. Endrick responded with a respectful tone. We know that but in the end you're still a 13-year-old boy. Three years away from becoming an adult. We need a parental or guardian consent before we can make you a full-fledged officer without having to worry about the laws preventing a minor from working. The instructor voiced out. Endrick instantly thought of his parents but then he recalled the nasty household situation. They won't be seen as proper guardians since they're currently in the psychiatric ward. Can I have my brother give the consent? Endrick asked with a tone of curiosity. You mean, Officer Crimson? The instructor was a bit surprised as he voiced out. He recalled these two have had serious issues in the past and Gustav even changed his family name erasing his Oslov identity so he wasn't expecting this. Yes. Endrick answered. But he is no longer a part of your family. The instructor voiced out. He can fill in as my guardian. Does it matter? Endrick stated in response. Since he is of legal age and has ties to you then I guess he can. He just has to agree to go through the necessary procedures. The instructor explained. Leave that to me. Endrick voiced his reply. He was a little bothered but it was about time he met up with Gustav again especially since he had messages to convey to him. All right then. You can leave camp but don't forget to send me the consent application before next week or you will be brought back to camp and made to train till you're of legal age. 
the instructor voiced out before leaving. The lady at one of the counters passed Endrick some clearance data for leaving the camp as well before he headed towards one of the massive mirror pathways within the hall. Endrick should have left camp with the others earlier since he was also a special class candidate and had improved just like the others. Endrick had completed missions on the same level as the others and was ranked amongst the top 10 strongest in their set. Even ranked higher than Falco, Timi, Blade, Vera, Rhea, Angie and was said to be on par or more powerful than EE. It was still debatable as to who would win in an all-out fight between Endrick and Ildris but Endrick being this strong made him worthy of also finishing his training in camp earlier. The only problem was his age which would be a problem if he didn't get a parent or a guardian to give their final consent to him becoming a full-fledged MBO officer of the law. Right now Indrik's plan was to get that from Gustav since both parents were currently in the psychiatric ward and their consent would be invalid. Endrick made a low sigh as he finally headed out of camp. There was still a kind of tension between him and Gustav even though Gustav was starting to soften up to him little by little. Endrick wanted to use this as a chance to get closer to Gustav and slowly drive away that tension by doing all he could to make sure Gustav trusted him. Will you be passing the vest to him? Endrick asked internally as he arrived within an aircraft. His forehead glowed green a couple of times as he heard a voice respond from within. Not yet. He is still too weak to equip it. The energy of the vest will destroy him at this state. Husarius spoke. Then when will he be strong enough? Endrick questioned. It won't be very long. He is slowly closing in on that volume of power that will be enough to equip or use some of the items and when that time finally comes. The world will see a strength unlike they have ever seen before. Husarius stated. And more than ever they will need this strength to become their protection because if they were to ever betray the source of this strength a great catastrophe would be wrought unto the earth and the universe as a whole. Mendelaga's planet. Swoosh. Swoosh. A silver streak cut across a region of red sands as two cloudy dark figures chased after the silver streak. Unlike the multitude of dark figures that had been chasing after this silver streak for over an hour. These two dark cloudy figures were way smaller in comparison. These two were Mendelagas who were elders and they had finally decided to give chase. They would occasionally send out waves. That would blast across the vicinity and wreak havoc. Angie had barely been able to escape the few times they used this attack. So far she could feel like her mind was getting slower and slower in thinking capability and reaction speed as a whole. Angie knew these two were using a type of ability that would get the better of her if she wasn't careful. Guys. I hope you're done. They're all heading back to the rock right now. Angie voiced through the communication channel. We got the device. We're trying to outrun the ones on our tail right now. The captain voiced out through the communication channel. We haven't found the two officers just yet. You guys can head to the checkpoint without us. We'll meet you there. Ildris voiced out this time. I am currently trying to outrun two Mendelagas who are still giving chase. Angie reported through the comms. How big are they? Company Captain Davidson questioned. Six feet tall. Angie said while looking back in the process of running. You have to get them off your tail as soon as possible those are old Mendelagas privy to more powerful abilities. Use your highest speed and outrun them right now. Davidson voiced out with a tone of urgency. I am trying. Ugh. Angie groaned while still speeding across the sands. I can't activate my fastest form. Chapter 1027 Breaking Through. Author's Note. Unedited Chapter. I am trying. Ugh. Angie groaned while still speeding across the sands. I can't activate my most powerful form. She added with a look of difficulty. You can't outrun them. I thought you said you were fast. Davidson said with a slightly ridiculing tone. I can. If I activate my fastest form but it's like. I feel a mental barrier stopping me from being able to activate it. I can't move at my fastest speed no matter how hard I try. Angie explained. It's one of the older one's abilities. Angie you need to distance yourself further away from them as soon as possible or you'll weaken and get slower over time. Captain Spark voiced out. How do I do that? I can't outrun them right now. Angie responded with a worried tone. You have to do something that can help you get further away from them. Ildris spoke this time. Angie turned her head to the side and looked over her right shoulder. 
the Mendelagas were still chasing after her with the same speed and were only about 20 feet away. Angie turned to look forward and could see that they were approaching an area with rocky-like buildings everywhere. Her eyes squinted as she made a plan in her mind and sped forward. I still have a little spark. I could make use of it here. She said internally as she sped into the air of rocky-like buildings. Fooey. She leapt forward with her legs outstretched and kicked through a building. Bang. The Mendelagas quickly followed behind her but the instant they did, a silver-colored energy blast was triggered from within. Boom. It sent forth destructive waves that caused the entire structure to come crashing down along with the structures in the vicinity. The Mendelagas had cloudy-like figures so they weren't too affected but this slowed them down a bit. Especially with the structure collapsing and causing the air to be covered by red-colored debris. The entire vicinity had become clouded by the red dust everywhere so this made them lose sight of Angie for a bit especially with her intense speed. Nung. Angie groaned as she sped away from this particular area. Fui. She suddenly leapt into the air once more as another horn began growing out of her forehead. This time was a bit different as her legs transformed into a silver-like color with scales all over. From her feet up to her thighs. Had expanded in length and claws grew out of her toes. Angie suddenly felt intense power radiating from within as her horn began to glow up along with her pupils. I just reached the echo rank. She noticed internally. Angie now understood the reason for this her transformation. Bang. The instant she landed on the ground and took a step forward. Jerish. Her body bolted forward with intense speed. Sending a blast of shockwaves from her previous position. Fufkushish. Angie had never moved this fast in her life as she crossed over 600,000 feet in an instant. The Mendelagas behind were unable to give chase anymore as this speed was way beyond their limit and how fast Angie had been moving before. Even when they flew higher into the air, they realized she was long gone. Zoom. On another part of the Mendelagas planet, a vortex opened up and a group of four jumped out of it. I think we finally managed to get them off our tail. Company Captain Davidson voiced out. I made us appear way further from our initial location since you mentioned we could still navigate our way back to the checkpoint even if I didn't know where we would resurface. E. E voiced out. Guys this place is a bit. Elevora voiced out as he looked around. They all looked around as well and could see cracks on the ground. Purplish liquid flowed from the south to the north and it looked like they were on an open ground. The whole place looked a bit eerie. We're in a pit. Elevora stated as she looked around as well. A pit. Davidson voiced with a tone of disbelief as he turned around. There was a very high wall up ahead that reached more than 10,000 feet high. It was very rough looking and had cracks all across it as well. This wall extended farther towards the left and right. One could see that it kept extending as far as the eyes could see and at a point. Fog could be seen in the distance that made it difficult to tell where the wall ended. We could just climb over this. And the wall doesn't necessarily mean we're in a pit because of how high it is unless it surrounds this entire vicinity and I don't see it up ahead. Davidson voiced out. Well I do. Elevora said in response as she turned to stare at him. Davidson eyes widened as he spotted the horrifying purplish growing eyeball on Elevora's forehead. Where did that come from? He voiced out with a shocked tone. Elevora had pulled off the scarf covering her forehead the moment they arrived here. Elevora's eye ability helped her see through the fog thousands of feet up ahead so she knows what she's talking about. E. E voiced out. So we're in a massive pit. Captain Spark voiced out with a slightly troubled tone. Hold on. Davidson voiced out and checked the holographic screen appearing above the device in his hand. We have to go this way to get to the checkpoint. We're a bit far but we can get there in a day so we still have time. He added while pointing at the south. The wall they could see was right in front of them while they had to move in the direction of the one in the distance according to Elevora. Should I open a vortex? E. E questioned. Nah. It's unpredictable where we will end up spawning unless you want to take us back to the places you've already been like the target location. Captain Spark didn't have to continue before everyone knew it was a bad idea. Or can you take us to the route we traveled on when we were headed to the target location? Spark questioned. Out of range. E. E responded while shaking his head. 
It turned out it was too far from their previous location and opening a portal close to the area of the rock structure was a bad idea since the entire place would be crawling with Mendelagas. Scree. A loud screeching sound suddenly reverberated across the vicinity causing them to be on the alert. We're not alone. Elevora informed them. Mendelagas. E. E questioned. No. These are. Beasts. Elevora said while her eyes squinted. We have to get out of here. Company Captain Davidson voiced out. Not without getting past them. Elevora said while fully activating her bloodline abilities. In another part of space Gustav was seated in the spacecraft as he kept counting down. We'll be there in another 30 minutes. Gustav muttered. Your body should be durable enough to withstand part of the temperature but don't get too close if you don't have to. The system voiced in his head. Sure. I just need to get a sample after all. Gustav stated. Zuri. Maybe I should check on Miss Amy one more time before I head to my death. Gustav voiced with a low tone before activating God Eyes. Life Signs Tracking has been activated. He used Life Signs Tracking instantly and picked Miss Amy's Life Sign. Hmm. Is she asleep? Gustav wondered as he spotted a smooth pair of thighs blocking his view. He couldn't see properly but he could spot a little part of arms crossed and knees joined. It seemed like Miss Amy was laying on her knees with her head on her arms that were crossed and her arms balancing on her knees. Surprisingly Miss Amy was only wearing shorts so her smooth thighs were on display. Only to Gustav anyways because he was the only one that could see this. Cough cough I shouldn't be seeing this. Gustav said internally as he subconsciously closed his eyes. However with life signs activated. Closing his eyes would not stop him from seeing through Miss Amy's forehead region. After staying for a few minutes hoping Miss Amy would wake and look around. Gustav decided to deactivate God eyes after only seeing her twitch a little. At least she's fine. Cough cough I should deactivate this now. Gustav decided. Just as he was about to deactivate God eyes. Miss Amy's thighs began vibrating. At first Gustav was confused as to what was going on but then. Miss Amy woke up at this point. She separated her thighs and stared at the ground. Through this. Gustav was able to figure out that the ground was quaking which in turn made Miss Amy's body vibrate. Huh what is going on? A land quake. Chapter 1028 Suspicious Situation at Miss Amy's Location. Author's Note. Unedited Chapters. She separated her thighs and stared at the ground. Through this. Gustav was able to figure out that the ground was quaking which in turn made Miss Amy's body vibrate. Huh what is going on? A land quake. Gustav voiced with a tone of confoundment. The ground quaked even more intensely with every passing second and cracks began to spread out all across the ground. Miss Amy stood to her feet at this point and stretched her hands apart. Despite Gustav being millions of light years away and not knowing where Miss Amy was he could feel a particularly strange energy exuding from her. The cracks that had formed and spread across thousands of miles slowly began to mend. The ground that split apart in multiple areas began to merge back together slowly. The quaking that was initially becoming intense began to reduce as Miss Amy's hand remain outstretched. How is she doing this? Gustav didn't need to be told before he knew Miss Amy was the one responsible for this mending. He couldn't understand how she was doing this because he knew Miss Amy was unable to perform such a feat entirely. In a couple of minutes the quaking had stopped and the grounds had nearly merged completely. Gustav slowly stared at the sky area as foggy looking clouds began to path ways. His eyes squinted subconsciously as he could spot a white light extending as the clouds cleared. However at this same moment. Officer Crimson. We're here. One of the pilots voiced out. Forcing Gustav to deactivate life signs tracking. God eyes has been deactivated. Gustav's mind reeled back to his current position as his eyes retained their usual glow. We're here. Voiced out. Yes sir. We're here. One of the space pilots responded once more. Gustav turned to look through the glassy-like wall of the spacecraft up ahead and the glows from what he had been seeing all this time with great ear Xanatus were blinding to the eyes. The white cracks that had connected and spread across a large range of this part in space were even more scarier looking in person. Some of the glowing white cracks were as thick a person in width while some were very thin and they stretched across a large expanse of space. 
Gustav couldn't describe how he felt seeing this but it was definitely a phenomenal sight. His first time in space for a mission and it had to be something crazy that had never been seen before. The spacecraft slowed down at this point and Gustav unstrapped himself. His body began floating in the air as it seemed the outer hatch of the spacecraft had been opened. Zing! A cylindrical shaped metallic looking item with an handle appeared in his grasp. Gustav held onto this with his left hand and flew backwards with the use of the gravity. He passed through some layers within the spacecraft and doors opened for him and shut after he passed through. In a bit he had arrived at the final hatch and stood within what was like a small door area. Open the final hatch. Gustav voiced through the communication system. All right officer Crimson. Good luck. One of the pilots voiced out before an opening sound was heard. Sish. Gustav flew forward and finally found himself drifting through space. He could see violet dust in the distance and some stars very very far away from this particular area. He turned around and finally faced the direction of the cracks. As the energy from the glowing line of cracks spread across the vicinity. Gustav felt like he was in the presence of a higher power. He just couldn't understand why but now that he was here he felt a kind of familiarity with this energy. It felt like it was not only powerful but also mixed with an energy he had come into contact with before but he discarded the thought of it relating with the person that came to mind because he couldn't see how else it connected to that person. Crere. Right in front of Gustav's eyes. The cracks began spreading further into space. Where the spacecraft had stationed itself was a safe spot away from the range of effectiveness of the cracks. However as it began to spread even more, the heatwave hit Gustav causing the suit on his body to begin smoking. What the fuck? Gustav couldn't help but cuss internally as the suit began to steam. I'm still 92,000 meters away from the point where I can absorb part of the energy into the mini plasma chamber. Gustav muttered underneath his breath. If it was already this hot, then how hot would it be when he got to that point? This was going to be the most dangerous mission Gustav had ever embarked on. He already knew the suit wouldn't hold on to that point so he began activating some protective bloodlines. Sashashish. Iro silk grew out of his body. Covering the entire suit like an armor. On top of this. Gustav made use of a temperature bloodline to add frost to the outer covering of his suit and also made the surroundings around himself cooler. 3. Creaking sounds began to come from the spacecraft. It was quite faint especially since this was space but Gustav was able to hear them clearly. You guys might want to move the spacecraft a bit back. It's starting to take damage. Gustav voiced through the communication channel. He didn't want anything to happen on his way back as he wouldn't like to get stuck here. After the spacecraft moved further backwards. Gustav began to venture forward. Hover has been activated. He flew forward. Approaching the cracks as the heatwaves spread forth even more. Usually space would be freezing but in this situation it was the opposite. This part of space was lit up tremendously due to the infinite number of glowing white cracks here. As Gustav traveled forward. He calculated the amount of distance he still needed to scale before he would get to the point where part of the energy could be absorbed. At this point. He was still very far from reaching any of the cracks because despite how large they were the spacecraft stopped a bit far from them. If it moved any closer it would have sustained damage so this was the only option available and Gustav would have to scale the rest of the distance himself. I need a good angle where I'd be able to penetrate without making contact with any of the cracks. Gustav paused at this point after hover had been deactivated. God eyes have been activated. His sight zoomed across several thousand feet in an instant and kept moving further forward. The energy from the cracks were a bit penetrative to his sight despite being so far away but Gustav didn't back down and kept going further and further ahead. After arriving at a particular area he looked beyond some of the cracks and could see that there were spaces he could fit in but there were still issues due to lines still spreading further and blocking within the spaces. Gustav squinted his eyes as he looked from another angle. His current issue now was he was trying go get the right angle at which he could use lightning blitz from. With how far lightning blitz could take him. He could find himself in a concentrated area of cracks and making contact with any one of them according to Gradier Xanatus would result in annihilation. 
Lightning Blitz was even more powerful than before so it would take him beyond the area he needed to be which was quite dangerous. Either Gustav moved backwards to more than 100,000 meters so he could be able to use Lightning Blitz and arrive at the exact spot spot needed to absorb a part of its energy or he activated Lightning Blitz at the moment and go even further than 100,000 meters beyond the required area. The second option had the danger of him arriving in a concentrated area where contact with the cracks would be made. Gustav decided to pick none of them because the time he would spend heading back so he could make use of the ability safely would also be the same amount of time he would spend if he decided to head forward with his usual speed. If I wasn't checking on Miss Amy I would have told them to stop further away. Gustav noted this as a mistake. However at this same instant a thought suddenly appeared in his mind. How far away are you guys at the moment? Gustav questioned as he turned around. About a hundred thousand feet away from your position sir. One of the pilots answered. It was quite the distance and Gustav knew he would spend a lot of time trying to get there but he had a different thought in mind. Go further. Increase our distance by another three hundred thousand feet. Gustav instructed. Chapter 1029 Absorbing Energy from the Cracks. Author's Note. Unedited Chapter. The pilots had no idea why he asked them to do this but they obeyed. It only took about a few seconds before they gave Gustav the distance he asked for since spacecraft were extremely fast. After giving Gustav feedback of the distance they had left Gustav reached out to his wrist area and began to tap on the surface of a screen. Dimensional travel will be activated in 3, 2. The instant the dimensional bracelet finished counting down, Gustav disappeared from his location. Zing. He reappeared right above the massive spacecraft in the next instant that was more than 400,000 feet away. The instant Gustav arrived on it, a smirk appeared on his face. It's a good thing I made the spacecraft a checkpoint before I effed. Gustav said internally as he turned to face the direction of the cracks. Once more he was over 800,000 feet away and this was the precise distance he needed between himself and the cracks. Lightning Blitz has been activated. 3. Gustav instantly turned into a lightning streak that cut across space with intense speed. Arriving more than 120 miles away from its initial position. He had crossed all the distance required in an instant and arrived right in front of the cracks. Zachar. The instant Gustav reappeared his entire outer covering including the suit was set on intense flames. Nung. Gustav groaned as everything was disintegrated in barely a second by the intense flames. He pushed the cylinder item in his grasp forward and twisted the top. Open as quickly as he could. Fuum. A strain of energy began to phase into the cylindrical item with intensity while Gustav had already turned completely naked. Haya. As the energy was being absorbed Gustav screamed out intensely while also activating gravitational emergency container. Zoom. 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 Spherical blue orbs began to appear all around him and started absorbing the energy from the heatwave the cracks were bringing. They were getting filled instantly and taking a little bit off the damage Gustav's body would have received but at the same time. Gustav was barely holding on. He had not expected that it would be this powerful to the point that his strong body and regeneration couldn't keep up. Gustav decided to use his body as conduit at this point as the sample of the energy was collected completely. The dimensional bracelet. It's destroyed. Gustav said internally with a look of regret. His body would burn away and he wouldn't be able to get the sample out of here if he didn't find a way to heal up a little so he could get away. His body had burned to the point that he could barely make a move. Zaychahin. He began absorbing energy from the surroundings at this point to heal up. Gustav was worried about getting overfilled with energy and exploding which was why he was trying to absorb only a little but the instant he did. What are these? Gustav voiced out with a tone of confusion as he began to see visions. At the same time. Tririish. Triizja. The cracks in space began to expand crazily and faster all of a sudden. The heatwaves went up several notches in an instant while Gustav was in his trance-like state seeing visions that shook him to his very core. Haya. He screamed out as the energy was becoming unbearable while his flesh was ripping apart and mending at the same pace. 
the pilots who were on standby with the spaceship almost 200,000 meters away were instantly put on the alert as the ship's alarm system began to go off. It's expanding. We have to get further away from here. Both of them voiced out with tones of urgency as they spotted the readings of the energy and heatwaves approaching. What of Officer Crimson? The co-pilot asked with a worried tone. Look at that. The pilot shouted out as he pointed at the front. Three, three his. The cracks were speeding at a tremendous rate and the ship had began vibrating intensely and electrical charges were going off within it due to the powerful energy being spread across this part of space. Do you think anyone would be able to survive that? The pilot yelled out as he started up the spacecraft. Let me do a quick scan. He might be on his way back. The co-pilot voiced out while turning on some parts of the engine and tapping some commands in the control room. Jurin. We have to leave now. The pilot yelled out once more as he pushed a button and began navigating the ship. One second. The co-pilot yelled out too. At this point the cracks were closing in on their area and wasn't too distant from them anymore. No. The pilot voiced out. A radar could be seen scanning the surroundings of the ship and in the next instant it came up with a result saying there was no sign of life range. He's not there. The co-pilot stated before also playing his part and joined the pilot in navigation. Zoom. The spacecraft turned around and blasted forward at an insane speed as the cracks arrived at its initial position. Even with the protective shield in place. Part of the spacecraft ended up getting fried from the heatwave but luckily the pilots were able to get away unscathed. They couldn't understand what had just happened but they were absolutely sure that Gustav couldn't have survived from that. In one second everything seemed normal and the cracks were spreading at a moderate speed which was the usual speed they were aware of and in the next instant it was suddenly spreading at an insane rate. Before they knew what was happening it had spread across a radius of 100,000 meters in space within seconds. The heatwaves had tripled in intensity and things just generally got worse since they were unable to obtain the sample they came for. Deep within the spread of the cracks, Gustav had given out and was losing consciousness at this point. The heatwaves had destroyed his body from the outside and the energy he was absorbing had nearly destroyed him completely from within. His eyelids were close to shutting completely when he spotted something. The MVO tower. What do you mean by he didn't survive? Did you two wait for him? Did you even check? Gradier Xanatus yelled out with a furious tone as he spoke through a communication channel. Sir we did. Maybe you should try connecting to his comms. The pilot voiced from the other side. You think I haven't tried that? I can't contact him. There is no readings here and I can't see through the cams that were installed in his suit. All forms of communication has been cut off. Gradier Xanatus stated with a frustrated tone. I think we have to see things for how they are now sir. What do you mean by that? The situation was a completely unexpected one because when he arrived at the absorbian point, he was still very much okay but after what had happened, I doubt he survived sir. Shut up. He cannot be dead. I am coming there myself. Gradier Xanatus yelled out before cutting the call. He had never looked so mad and disturbed before as he kept pacing around the board room for a bit. It's Gustav. He cannot be gone. He's definitely still alive but he might just need help. Gradier Xanatus recalled that Gustav had managed to slip out of so many dangerous situations and hoped this would be yet another one he survived. I need to get there now. The situation has worsened. Gradier Xanatus voiced as he walked towards the entrance of the board room. However just as he got to the door, another call came in. Gradier Xanatus picked up as he noticed that the call was from the pilots. What is it? He voiced out as their faces appeared in holographic format. Sir a strange phenomenon is happening right now. Huh. Look at it sir. The holographic feedback changed and what Gradier Xanatus saw. Made his face beam with an even more confused look. It's changing color. Gradier Xanatus voiced out. Pretty much sir but the gaps in the cracks looks like they're closing up as well. I can see that. It is no longer spreading as well. Gradier Xanatus voiced out. Yes sir. We decided to head back so we could give a good report of the location after the weird situation when we saw this. The main pilot voiced out. That color. It's starting to emulate the look of. Earth's sun. The pilot completed Gradier Xanatus statement. 
Gradier Xanatus wasn't sure of saying those out because he felt he might be the only one seeing what this was starting to form but now he had no doubt that he was seeing correctly. Chapter 1030 Unbelievable Revelation Author's Note Unedited Chapters I am on my way right now. Gradier Xanatus voiced out as he quickly moved out of the board room. Darkness. This was all Gustav could see at the moment and he had no idea how long it had been but now he was conscious enough to know that this was because his eyes were closed. Gustav slowly opened his eyes, causing his sight to be blinded by brightness which made him squint them. He slowly adapted to the brightness as his sense of self began to return. As the blurriness died down he spotted a familiar looking face right above his. Huh. He voiced out in confusion as he finally realized his head was laying on soft tissue while the rest of his body was on the hard ground. You're finally awake. He heard this familiar feminine voice call out to him which proved he wasn't dreaming or hallucinating. This also made him realize the soft tissue was actually the lapse belonging to this beautiful figure who had just spoke. He stared at her face in dazzling gray-colored long hair banded together with a look of disbelief before finally opening his mouth. Miss Amy. Gustav voiced out. Oh good you can speak. I thought you had turned mute. Miss Amy voiced out in response. Gustav jerked up at this point and stared at her with his face still showing a look of intense disbelief. How is this possible? What are you doing here? Where is even here? Gustav voiced out these series of question as he jumped to his feet. Is this the thank you I get for saving your ass? Miss Amy voiced out. Huh. What even happened? Gustav voiced out with a confused look as he finally turned to look around. His eyes widened even more as he spotted the brownish plain grounds all around them. He looked up and could see white lines in the sky like cracks. However these white lines were already starting to change color in some areas. What is going on? Where is this? He voiced out one more as a dose of reality hit him. Take deep breaths first you were pretty damaged a while ago. Miss Amy voiced out as she also stood to her feet. It was you this whole time. Gustav questioned with a confused tone as he stared at her. Huh? What do you mean? Miss Amy questioned. The whole phenomenon in space. You were the one causing it. All those times I connected to your life sign to check on you. How did I miss this? Gustav voiced out as he connected the dots. It now made sense how this place that used to have low visibility now turned bright exactly around the same period the whole weird phenomenon began. He was never able to see the sky due to Miss Amy's head angle every time and the last time he checked on her he actually spotted a bit but he wasn't able to properly check because it was time for him to leave the spacecraft. I don't know what you're talking about kid but I'll tell you what I've been up to these past few months. Miss Amy voiced in response. Gustav stood in place with a look of curiosity as Miss Amy began narrating. After I got infected. I destoyed my seal on my way out of Earth to boost my speed. I was close to breaking through to the next rank days before the incident so in the dangerous process I actually broke through. Miss Amy paused a bit at this point. And that's when it happened. Miss Amy's mind drifted back to that time. In space she drifted forward with intense speed way faster than the speed of light because she had just broken through to the beacon rank. Due to being in a dangerous state she was unable to control her speed. At that point a phenomenon happened where a wormhole was opened but it was not the usual one the MBO had planted in different parts of space. This one was caused by the surge of energy Miss Amy was exuding as she sped across space. She was unable to control herself in time to stop and ended up flying straight into the wormhole. Unfortunately she found herself in an unknown dark dimension that was in between time and space. She had no idea where this was but she wasn't dying anymore from the ashy infection that made Earth and its surroundings unconducive for her. The only problem was. Miss Amy noticed she couldn't breathe because air didn't exist in this place. Herself. Jack and a few other mixedbloods who were considered the most powerful on Earth were able to travel across galaxies and breathe in space without issues even though oxygen was not supposed to exist in space. The problem this time was. There was no form of wind at all in this place. Miss Amy could however hold her breathe for a very long time so at the moment it wasn't an issue. The first thing she thought of doing was getting out of this dimension that was dark. Empty and in the middle of nowhere. 
It was like being banished to a place of nothingness. It was lonely and there was really no signs of life. Miss Amy decided to create something that would help her with the breathing issue instead since getting out of the place was proving difficult and impossible. The instant she tried to generate power, Miss Amy noticed. Her entire core was overflowing with over hundred times more power than before. She couldn't even imagine how powerful she was at the moment and yet she still couldn't find her way out of here. She suddenly felt the urge to stop holding her breath and did so. This was when Miss Amy realized. She didn't need to breathe anymore. She had transcended that aspect of humanity. She tried creating something and with a single thought it appeared. Hover bike. She voiced and in an instant a bright light appeared in front of her which turned into an hover bike. Chapter 1031 I created my own planet. Authora S. Note. The reason for the recent lack of updates is that E of A been editing the initial chapters. A -a 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 Miss Amy proceeded to call out different objects and items and they all appeared in an instant. Proving that she had way more power than she had ever had at this moment. The main problem was still getting out of here which was in the middle of nowhere but Miss Amy felt she could spend this time trying to grasp the full extent of her power. In a week more than a million things were floating in this space with her and most of them had been created instantly. Miss Amy just had to imagine whatever she wanted to create so long as it was a non-living thing and it would appear. There were skyscrapers floating across the place. Small buildings. Rocks. Appliances and so many other things. A vanish. A Miss Amy voiced out. H Z Z Z Z I I H H H H. Every single thing she created during this time frame suddenly disappeared. A my energy is finite but it is almost infinity I would never be able to deplete it even if I was to keep creating things for one year straight A Miss Amy muttered but at this point. A thought appeared in her mind. A I should try that as she muttered as the picture of a flying creature appeared in her mind. Jurinzen. A bright white light began forming in front of her and in a few seconds. A dove appeared. Aa Ida Workita A Miss Amy muttered with a look of disbelief as she saw the creature flapping its beautiful wings in front of her. Pla. 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 It flew around her beautifully and perched on her left shoulder. Ai Kana create life. A Miss Imia S head was still reeling in shock. She proceeded to touch the creature on her left shoulder gently as it made some bird noises. The place seemed less lonely as the dove brightened the mood up a bit. However, this whole scenario was short-lived as the dove began to make a weird pitched sound. Miss Amy did not understand what was happening at first till the bird began to flap weakly and began to fall from the air. She grabbed it and finally understood. A Ida S dying a A she voiced out. A no Ira A. The creature ended up dying after a few more seconds and Miss Amy allowed it to vanish as well. Jurizzecha. It turned into a white light and phased into Miss Imia's body in the next instant. This did not happen with the others so Miss Amy realized that she would only lose a noticeable amount of energy when she created something with life or something very massive. Miss Amy had another thought at this point and decided to create something that had never been done before by any mixed blood that ever lived. AA for living things to stay alive they need an environment that is conducive for Tama they need air. They need an ecosystem of Skia and Landa A as these thoughts appeared in her mind her eyes turned completely white and her body emitted a powerful discharge of energy. Jurinsnanish. Miss Amy could feel herself losing energy at this point but she knew exactly what was happening so she did not stop it. Out of nowhere rumbling sounds began to ring out as something was forming underneath her. AI started creating my own planet A Miss Amy paused her narration at this point. A you created this. A Gustav voiced with a surprised tone as he turned to look around. A yes it was not too easy and took a lot of time but I managed to get it done. A Miss Amy stated in response. Gustava's mouth was wide open at this point as he looked around. He could see some birds flying in the distance and due to his perception. He could sense flowing waters some distance from here. From what Miss Amy narrated he knew that the air he was breathing right now was also created by Miss Amy since this unknown dimension was void of air. It was a crazy situation to fathom altogether and Gustav was having a hard time taking it all in. A did you finish it yet though? A Gustav questioned. 
Hey I am not finished yet but I am done with the size and outlook. Just need to put a few other things in place. A Miss Amy responded. I said the phenomenon was because you were creating a planet and life within this dimension and it was expanding at a rate that was ripping the fabric of space apart A Gustav felt everything made sense now as he put things together. A it affected the outside world. A Miss Amy questioned with a clueless tone. A yes a we were worried something dangerous was happening a, a Gustav responded and then proceeded to explain how things had been recently. He told her about the phenomenon in space which was linked to her planet A's creation. A interesting a it started around the same time I started creating a soon a Miss Amy voiced out. A you were creating a sun. A Gustav stated in shock. A a planet cannot exist without a source of light dummy. A Miss Amy stated. A the heatwave of the sun she was creating is the true reason behind it. A Gustav pieced everything together at this point and turned to stare in a direction. A the cracks of they are re in the process of forming a soon a we were walking right into a sun. A Gustav nearly facepalmed as he spotted the cracks far in the sky that were now changing color and closing the gaps in between. A so it turned out I just needed to create a planet and a sun to burn through space and get out of here. A Miss Amy chuckled lightly as she also pieced some things together from Gustava's narration. A how did you even save me? A Gustav questioned. A I felt your presence A Miss Amy stated before proceeding to narrate what happened a few hours ago. A A A A A A A A A A Erg. A. While Miss Amy was on her planet in the midst of the creation. She heard a yell. The voice sounded too familiar for her to ignore. She turned to stare towards the western sky at this point where the sun was being formed. Thushish. She took off into the sky in the next instant. The novel will be updated first on this website. Come back and continue reading tomorrow. Everyone. 1032 I killed him. Author's note. Unedited chapters. She turned to stare towards the west sky at this point where the sun was being formed. Thushish. She took off into the sky in the next instant and appeared right in the midst of the cracks that still spread on farther than expected. She was unaffected in the slightest by the heatwaves. But as she traveled further she noticed the rips in the sky and a part of the area the cracks covered transitioning into a different place. Space. Miss Amy instantly recognized this to be space the further she flew. It was surprising to her because she had no idea the cracks had already breached through space from out of this dimension. She heard the yell once more and stared forward. This was when she spotted a figure holding onto a head-sized cylindrical object while floating in place with their body ripping apart and mending at the same time. Gustav. Miss Amy had a look of shock as she recognized the figure to be Gustav. He can't take any more of this. She noticed and quickly sped forward once more. The moment she arrived in front of him she noticed he was on the verge of losing consciousness. Ha. Miss Amy snapped her fingers and in the next instant a bright barrier covered the both of them up. Shielding him completely from the heatwave. The energy he was absorbing stopped flowing in at this moment and Gustav's eyes finally closed completely as he fell forward. Grab. Miss Amy grabbed hold of him. Hugging Gustav to her body. A beautiful smile appeared on her face. Which was a very rare scenario. Miss Amy proceeded to stroke his hair softly as she continued holding onto him while they descended from the air. Gustav was a head taller than Miss Amy but she still managed to hold onto him like he was a baby. She was curious about the whole space issue but she decided now wasn't the time to check that out and placed Gustav's head on her laps upon landing. She noticed he was badly damaged and most of it was from within which was the worst form of damage so Miss Amy began to transmit energy into him from herself. Coupled with his own healing ability. Gustav was able to heal quickly and regained consciousness I'm three hours time. That is what happened. Miss Amy finished narrating how they got to this point. So you had no idea. You had broken out of this dimension the whole time. Gustav voiced out. Yeah. So how is Earth? Miss Amy questioned with a slightly curious tone. I killed him. Gustav voiced in response like he already knew what Miss Amy was referring to with that question. Oh. A smirk appeared on Miss Amy's face as she heard this. So that bastard is finally dead eh? Too bad I wasn't able to kill him myself. Did you torture him though? She proceeded to ask. 
he he did more than that. Gustav responded with a slight chuckle. Tell me all about it. Planet Mendelagas. Slash. Bang. Bam. Boom. Sounds of explosion and collisions rang out as a battle between a group of mixed bloods and beast was playing out. These beasts had dark mist emitting from their eyes. Claws and skull but they were physical enough to take damage. There were more than 20 of them ambushing this group of four but these four were strong enough to hold their own and had been doing well so far in dealing with the beasts. Elevora swerved to the right in mid-air as a six-legged beast leapt towards her. She spun with her legs stretching out which in turn slammed into the back of the creature. Bang! Another one was sent crashing down. It slammed into a fellow beast and Elevora went on to fire a destructive beam from her forehead to finish them off. E. E on the other side. Conjured up multiple vortexes in front of these creatures sucking them in and letting them get tossed across the place. Bam! 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 These beasts kept slamming into each other as the vortexes were positioned in a circular format across the place making it so the beasts were pulled into another vortex the moment they got out of one. E. E would occasionally attack some using physical combat after incapacitating them with the pulls of the vortexes. Pan. Da n less than zero. B. L the captain on the other side sent out destructive circular waves with both arms. With every fist he sent out. A wave was blasted across the place that transferred the damage to the other beasts in the vicinity. He could focus on one beast and other beasts would be getting damage from the attack he was inflicting on the beast. The strange waves made sure to transmit the damage from the attack all across the place. Davidson on the other hand had transformed into a gorilla-like creature with golden-colored furs and glowing white eyes. His physical strength had been greatly improved and he could shoot flames from his mouth. He pounded these beasts from place to place while showering them with flames as well. In a few more minutes the battle ended and all that could be seen around them were multiple corpses of these beasts. This makes the seventh swarm we faced. E. E voiced out. What's wrong boy scout? You running out of energy? Davidson questioned with a slightly ridiculing chuckle as he transformed back into his original form. Far from it. E. E responded with an unbothered tone. He dealt with more of the beasts than you did though. Elevora voiced out as well causing Davidson's smile to fade. In the battles so far. There wasn't a doubt that Elevora was the most powerful here with the way she was finishing each creature with a single or two attacks. They were quite the power group but she had even taken care of creatures that attacked from their blind spots while still dealing with the ones in front of her so Davidson didn't want to get on her bad side. We're close. I can see the wall. Captain Spark voiced out as he looked up ahead. Let's keep moving then. We've been here for too long. Elevora voiced in response. Hold on. Since I can see the wall too. I can get us there. E. E voiced out before conjuring a vortex. Zoom. A purplish vortex opened up in front of them and they proceeded to jump in. In the next instant. Everyone arrived before the gigantic wall that was over 10,000 feet tall. We're here. Captain Spark voiced out. There are creatures lurking on the walls. It will be a battle if we're climbing up. Elevora stated as she looked up. Can you get us to the top? Captain Spark inquired as he stared at EE. He didn't want them to spend time trying to scale the wall while also having to battle creatures since they had spent a lot of time in this hole. I can't see the top but since I know how high the wall is then yeah. I'll just project my vortex that far. E. E voiced out before proceeding to open up another vortex. At the same time he did this. A loud beast cry reverberated across the vicinity. That's the strongest creature here. It has noticed us. Elevora voiced out as she turned around. How strong? Davidson questioned. Just get into the vortex. Elevora voiced out before pushing him forward. You go next. Captain Spark voiced out but before he knew what was happening Elevora pushed him in as well. At this same time the sound of beast paws stamping on the ground became increasingly loud and in the next instant a gigantic beast about 20 feet large appeared right behind them. Elevora and E. E were left but there was barely enough time. Elevora stared at E. Ian was about to push him in when the vortex suddenly turned red. Z is in. Both of them instantly got sucked in while the creature charged forward as well. Bam. 
that fell to the ground which was atop the wall and the vortex above them hadn't closed up yet. Gray. A loud creature yell was heard as the head of this gigantic creature poked through the vortex in the next instant. Idiot. E. E stared at the vortex and stretched out his right hand before clenching it. X Hin. The vortex closed up in the next instant and a massive decapitated head fell to the ground with blood oozing out. No matter how powerful a creature is, they're bound to die with that type of foolishness. E. E voiced as Elevora gave him a hand and helped in pulling him up. Did you really try to push me in and face it yourself? E. E voiced with a slight chuckle. If that is what is required to save you, I would do it again. Elevora stated in response without batting an eyelid. E. E who had always been confident looking suddenly turned shy at this moment as he stared at Elevora from behind who had begun walking away after saying that. Chapter 1033 Ildris and Glade's Situation. Authora S. Note. Unedited Chapters. A A A A A A A A E. E who had always been confident looking suddenly turned shy at this moment as he stared at Elevora from behind who had begun walking away after saying that. He proceeded to follow after them as well as they headed to the checkpoint. A A. A you have a been here this whole time. A Ildris voiced out to a yellow skinned lady in front of him. A yeah. It's been almost three weeks now. A she responded while looking around with a worried look. A we re here to take you back you ll be fine. A Glade voiced out. A he needs more help than I do. Since we ran out of healing supplements to help him. A the yellow skinned girl said while pointing at the other person who was laying on the ground. There was an unconscious guy on the floor with a red rocky like hair and multiple band-aid wrapped around exposed part of his skin. It was obvious that this person had been severely injured due to the multiple bloodstains on different parts of his body. Both of them were clad in MBO uniforms signifying that were officers as well. These two were none other than the officers from the previous group who were said to have met their end here while embarking on the mission. Glade and Ildris had managed to locate them after searching for a long time in an area called Land of Shadows. It was very difficult for them to get to this place but according to calculations from the co-captain. It was triangulated that this could be one of the areas where the only two who survived might be hiding out. They previously checked two other areas based on their closeness to the rock structure where the device was hidden but they didn't t find them there. Fortunately they were hiding in this dangerous land that was said to be overrun by shadowy creatures without physical bodies. A did you also run out of bloodline energy? A Ildris questioned. A yes and I am finding it hard to recover because of my injuries so we've a been hiding in this shed within the land of shadows all this time. A the yellow skinned female responded. A there will be a spacecraft arriving in T-007 hours. We just need to make sure we get to the checkpoint in time. A Ildris stated while moving towards the other male officer and lifting him onto his shoulder. A get on my back. A Glade voiced out to the lady who proceeded to do as required. A what about the mission? A the lady officer asked after getting on Glade a s back. A the others are handling it. We ll all meet back at the checkpoint. A Ildris voiced as they began moving out of this shed-like structure. The female officer had managed to build this when they arrived here and despite it being really lousy looking. It was good enough for them to hide within. A Glade. Lita s move. A Ildris voiced out before charging forward. Swowzish. A red aura-like energy surrounded Glade and in the next instant she also blasted forward with immense speed. Catching up with Ildris. This particular area had some weird-looking root-like plants growing out of the pitch-black ground. These roots were around 10 to 15 meters long which was practically the same size with trees on earth but they looked a lot different from trees. However one could consider this a Mendelaga forest with the way it looked. While Idleris and Glade sped forward across this land of shadows some weird black streaks could be seen moving from root to root. A1 on your 6. A Ildris voiced out. Glade suddenly spun around at this time as a 4 feet long red sickle appeared in her grasp. Fui. She swung it out and it phased right through a shadowy figure that just leapt from a tree. However the moment it passed through. A suction force came from the sickle which ended up pulling the shadowy figure into it as it repeatedly spun across the air. 
Blade had already turned right back around after throwing the sickle so she never stopped running forward. As they sped through the mist of these multiple root-like trees, more of these creatures attacked from every angle and Ildris who was able to grasp every aspect of his surroundings due to his heightened senses from closing his eyes, informed Glade of every position these creatures were appearing from. It was easier for Glade to deal with them as the lady on her back held onto her body so Glade didn't have to be bothered about her hands being occupied. Ildris on the other hand had to hold onto the unconscious figure of the male officer properly so he was quite handicapped in the situation of Thess attacking shadowy figures. Fortunately Glade was able to deal with every single one of them as they dashed across this territory. A be careful not to awake the big one. A the lady officer voiced out. A big one. A Glade and Idlris voiced at the same time with looks of confusion. In the next instant the entire vicinity began quaking heavily. GHHBB all HHBB. The dark roots vibrated intensely as this quake went on for a couple of seconds. A shit. A the lady voiced out. A what a s wrong. A glade questioned as they kept running. A you guys just woke it upa the big one. A she voiced in response. A what is the big one? A glade questioned. A look behind you. A Ildris stated. Glade turned around and could see dark strings pulling out of the ground in some areas as the ground spilled open. A massive circular-shaped shadowy figure with multiple dark strings attached to its frame that acted as arms and legs could be spotted reaching out from the ground. A move away. A Ildris yelled out as he leapt towards the left. Glade managed to leap towards the right in that same instant and a dark line cut through their middle before slamming into the ground in front. Bang. Creech. The ground instantly split open upon the collision and dark flames burst forth from the cracks. Both of them instantly felt the temperature increase by a couple thousand degrees. The flames had not made contact with them. Yet they felt like their skins were being cooked by the temperature increase it was causing. A you couldn't t tell us about the big one before. A glade voiced out with a tone of wariness as they kept running forward looking to escape this creature. A my bada there is yes, actually three of them but hopefully we only have to deal with this one. A she voiced with an apologetic tone. A glade. Jump. A Ildris yelled out once more. Both of them proceeded to jump upwards in the next instant and two dark strings from the creature yes, body slashed across their previous position below. It ended up ruining a couple of roots due to its powerful destructiveness and once more dark flames oozed out of anything the strings made contact with. A Jade. Can we beat this thing? A Ildris was starting to get mad from the intense heatwave. A UAD have to be at least kilo rank to kill Ida but you two are a rank below like me. A the injured female officer responded while shaking her head. A E L L take my chances. A Ildris voiced out before opening his eyes. Juzdzin. The vicinity instantly turned colorless. Leaving things transparent unlike how it would be before with everywhere turning black and white. A Glade. Catch. A Ildris voiced out as he leapt into the air once more. Towards Glade's direction and dropped the unconscious body he was initially carrying. Glade caught the body of the unconscious officer and leapt continued running forward as Ildris turned around. A E L L catch up with you later. A Ildris voiced out as his beautiful eyes stared in the direction of the circular shadowy creature. It made a weird squealing sound after seeing that one if it preys had stopped to face it. Moving forward slowly the creature stopped several feet away from Ildris. Sizing him up while also trying to intimidate him. After staying in position for a bit and seeing that Ildris did not buckle it charged forward once more. A color separation a Ildris muttered softly as he joined his index and middle finger together. As the creature leapt across the air towards Ildris while firing out its multiple dark strings towards him. He stabbed forward with his two fingers. A, a weird phenomenon happened in the next instant as a multicolored glow appeared at his conjoined fingertips while they stabbed forward. A -a, 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 a group of four in dark suits could be seen approaching an area behind a mountain. Three of them were males while the fourth was a female. A we they finally arrived. A e. E voiced with a tone of relief as they arrived behind the small green colored mountain. A took you guys long enough. A a familiar voice was heard from up ahead. A Angya as expected you got here first. A e. 
he voiced with a light chuckle as he moved towards her position. A been here for hours wondering when you guys would get here. A Angie voiced with a slightly frustrated tone. Chapter 1034 Something doesn't seem right. Authora S Note. Unedited chapters. A A A. Angie was currently seating on a small rock up ahead and had a slightly bored look. A you are re truly as fast as they say you are. A company captain Davidson voiced in surprise after finding out she had been here for hours. A how long till the spacecraft arrives? A Angie questioned. A one hour left. A Davidson responded. A what about Ildris and Glade? A she questioned while looking around. A they must be close by I should be able to contact the command from here and let them know of our status so we don't at have to spend any longer time in this dump. A company captain Davidson stated as he began tapping on the device in front of him. It turned out they were unable to contact the command since they had acquired the device or this whole situation would have ended already. This checkpoint was the only place that made it position for their connection to reach outer space so they could finally give a report. A why don't a t we wait for Ildris and Glade to be back with the other two first. A Angie voiced out. A because as soon as they know we have acquired device. Nothing stops them from taking further actions so the more we delay. The longer they have to stall. A Captain Spark explained. A hey it's actually connecting. A Davidson voiced as the call started going through. A they are re-coming. A e. E suddenly voiced out as he spotted figures approaching from the east area. Everyone turned to stare in that direction as they heard that. A hold oopa a. A something does not seem right. A. Elevora and E. E voiced at the same time. A hands off the communication device. A a feminine voice resounded from up ahead. A a. Uh, a Davidson voiced in confusion as the group approached. As they got closer. They could see that some unknown lady and guy had their hands wrapped around the necks of Glade and Ildris. AI have the life of your teammates in my hand and yes they are unable to access their bloodline abilities at the moment so don't T expect them to overpower me. A the yellow skinned lady voiced out. A arena T you two supposed to be from the other team. A elevora voiced with a confused tone. A they are long gone ha 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 foolish mixed bloods. A the lady voiced out as they moved closer to the group. AI and my subordinate took over their bodies a long time ago and deceived these two into bringing us here so we can take back what you stole from us. A the lady voiced out while increasing the grip on Ildris' throat. Ildris had a look of disappointment on his face as he heaved out a sigh. He felt like he had truly let the team down at this point. A they can't t fight back and none of you can get to us in time to free both of them before they are killed if you try any nonsense at least one of them will die. A the yellow-skinned lady voiced out. A come in retrieval squad. Have you completed the mission? A. A loud voice was heard from the communication device. A disconnect now or they die. A she voiced out once more while holding Ildris' neck and lifting him. The other officer who was also supposed to be unconscious all this time was actually okay. He was holding onto Glade who had turned all weak as well since they were unable to activate their bloodline energies. It was all a ploy and their minds had been taken over by unknown Mendelagas. It was obvious that the Mendelagas who took over their minds were elders since they were capable of doing such. A retrieval squad. Come Ia. A. The call was disconnected before the sentence could be completed. A pass over what you stole right away. A the yellow skinned lady voiced out. A dona t do it. A Ildris yelled out but her hand tightened around his throat more causing him to start coughing uncontrollably. AI have no sympathy for earthlings. If you foolishly wish for his death, then disobey. A she voiced out once more. A this is bad. This is very bad. A E. E said internally as he thought of a way out of this. They all had worried looks on their faces as they wondered how they would get out of this situation. They did not want all of their hard work to go to waste but at the same time they could not let Ildris and Glade die. There was no guarantee that they wouldn't t be killed here also after they gave them what they wanted. It was really a problematic situation. Earth. A breaking news. The space agency has uncovered a new discovery. A. A it has been revealed that a new planet has apparated in the Milky Way. A. 
It is totally confusing and unbelievable how such a thing just happened but currently the planet has been reported to be on the move. A. It is estimated to be on a collision path to Earth and will arrive within four days. A. A. Everyone is expected not to panic as the world government will be giving a statement about this situation soon enough. A. It is also expected that the barrier S-U-R-R-O-U-N-D-I-N-D the Earth will protect the Earth from any form of impact from the collision. A. a. However there has been a huge scare as it has been revealed that the planet is thrice the size of the Earth with a new sun that is four times hotter as well. A. a breaking news. It has been revealed that the planet is expanding further on its collision course to Earth as well as its sun. A. a. It just sprouted a new moon. A. A the MBO are said to be investigating the current situation and the world government will be addressing the situation soon. A. In the last three days the news had been mostly passing across this catastrophic information that was causing a big disturbance across the Earth. The Earth had just survived a worldwide cataclysmic event and now it looked like another one was about to happen. A lot of people did not doubt the capacity of the barrier surrounding Earth but at the same time the planet approaching was said to be three times larger. This was ringing warning bells in their heads. Currently the MBO was getting lots of queries and disturbing calls from the world government and even the people themselves. Space. A yes sir it just passed us by. A. A why have you not made contact yet? A. A we tried TOA the problem is not the speed. The problem is the energy waves it spreads across the vicinity. It makes it impossible to get close. A. A are you telling me you lots missed it again? What are you doing up there then? A. A sir. ELL send you a data of the energy readings. A. After a few moments of silence. A what? How is this even possible? A. A we need an alpha ranked mixed blood and no other mixed blood will be able to come close to this moving planet. A. A alright. ELL get back to you. A. A we need to be quick on this sir. In one day time it will arrive at Neptunea's orbit and no doubt destroy the entire planet with how fast it's moving and its size of that s if the planet sun does not even end up burning Neptune to a crisp and you know what planet is next after all the other planets have been raised through sir. A. A understood officer Xanatusa this will be settled in a bit. A. After this. The communication was cut and Gradier Xanatus was left standing in the spacecraft with a bothered expression. A it was not t till I arrived here before I realized it was a planet appearing out of nowhere with a recently formed Suna we have been sending researchers over to inspect a sun all this time. A he thought as he moved forward. A there is still a possibility the kid survived a he could even be on the planet I hope he is as unkillable as I think. A Gradier Xanatus arrived at the Pilota S area before issuing a command. A we re still going after the planet a but keep a considerable distance from it. A he voiced out. A yes sir. A the main pilot voiced out as the engine of the spacecraft started once more. They went on to turn around and sped forward. Zoom. Gustav had been gone for over three days but it was not until Gradier Xanatus arrived at space before the planet was spotted. Before they could approach. The planet began moving. No one understood the dynamics of this as it was moving just as fast as a spacecraft despite its size. Even with that. The planet should be affected by moving at such a speed. Yet it was still in a good condition according to the reports of the space agency inspecting all the way from Earth. The advantage a spacecraft had over the planet was being able to enter wormholes without issues due to size. The ones created by the MBO that would make them travel faster could not expand to the size of the planet so it could not travel as fast as the spacecraft. However some wormholes were still getting generated from its speed and it would be unaffected in the slightest even after going through those ones. It took some time but the spacecraft Gradier Xanatus was within began to catch up to the planet. Chapter 1035 A Goddess A massive blazing spherical structure could be seen moving at very insane speed. One could not actually tell how the, the planet looked from this direction due to how much it was blazing intensely but for some reason this blaze was not even damaging the planet. A I need to find out if the kid is still Olivia A Gradier Xanatus voiced as stood in a part of the spacecraft while checking out the planet from afar. A can we get a scope in that would get a picture of the planet in closer range? A Gradier Xanatus questioned. 
Hey, 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 hey. Hey, have you thought of a name though? Hey, Gustav voiced out while laying on a bed of flowers. Hey, nope. Hey, Miss Amy who was laying right beside him responded with an unbothered tone. Hey, want to help come up with a name? Hey, she proceeded to question him. Hey, nah. Yeah, I'm bad with names. Maybe you should name it after yourself a Amy planet has a good ring to it. Hey, Gustav voiced in response. Hey, you were a t kidding when you said you were bad with names. A Miss Amy said while shaking her head. Gustav proceeded to shrug casually as he stared at the beautiful scenario of large flying creatures playing in the sky. A so you are basically a god now. A Gustav voiced out with an astonished tone. A goddess ahem the term seems too religious but ell take it. A Miss Amy said in response. A but hey. Dona t you think people of earth will be worried with the planet getting closer to earth. A Gustav said with a slightly troubled tone. A nah I won't a t get too close a it will still be as far away as the sun is from Neptune a and then a l l position my own sun in the other direction. A Miss Amy stated. A how long will that take? A Gustav inquired. A in half a day we should get there. A Miss Amy responded. A you wanna eat something? A she proceeded to ask. A nah ia yeah, am good a hold on. A a thought appeared in Gustava's mind as he sat up and turned to stare at Miss Amy. A you can create anything a that means you can create food too but what happens when I eat the food you create? Will it serve its original purpose or disappear after reaching a particular point within my body? A Gustav questioned with a serious look that nearly had Miss Amy cackling. A I have no idea actually I haven a tea tested that since I don't a tea feel the need to eat any more to stay alive. A Miss Amy responded with a clueless look. Ahem. Does this make you the strongest mixed blood now? A Gustav questioned. A maybe. Maybe Noda I can tell Jack was holding back in his fight against me the last time because both our strengths was capable of causing the earth irreparable damage if the fight went on so I have never fought him at full strength even back then. I never knew the full extent of his strength and he never knew mine that time but I have a feeling he might have been slightly stronger at just a hunch though a Miss Amy stated out. A but I am a whole lot more powerful than I used to be I am no longer a normal mixed blood again since what happened. Still I can a t assume I am stronger if I never knew his full strength. A she added. Gustav had a look of contemplation as he heard that a. A if you are re stronger now. You may have ruined some things for me. A Gustav muttered. A huh. You cheeky brat you should take pride in the fact that your teacher is the strongest. A Miss Amy voiced out before grabbing his left cheek and pulling it. A ouch. Ow. Ow. A. A how am I ruining things for you by getting stronger you dollafeet. A. A no no I meant oh wonderful great master I am delighted at your newfound power. A. A that sounded so fake. A. Miss Amy pulled on Gustava's cheek even more and tackled him to the ground before sitting on him. Gustav was unable to free himself for a long time despite trying to wriggle away like a snake. After a bit they both started laughing again and one could tell that they had both genuinely missed each other despite not saying it outright. A does this mean you ll never step foot on earth again since you have your own planet now? A Gustav questioned. A since my body integrated with the infection. I retained the positivities but got rid of the negativity as so the earth will no longer be unconducive for mayhem maybe ell visit every once in a while. A Miss Amy said with a contemplative expression. A that would be nice. A a smile appeared on Gustava's face as he stated. A so how does it feel to be a goddessa? A. While the earth was reeling in fear and disaster of the incoming planet. Miss Amy and Gustav were here chatting and laughing unbothered. A. Hours later Gustav was sitting by a corner meditating and channeling his bloodline. At least that was what he told Miss Amy when what he was actually doing was checking some stats. A A A A A A A A A A A A Quests. Locate Dimension 6 in Planet Humbid. Duration. 5 years. Progress. 39. 81 hundredths of a percent. 2 years. A. Become the most powerful mixed blood on Earth. Duration. 5 years. Progress. 34 one hundredths of a percent. Time elapsed. 2 years. A. A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A
A how has it not changed? A Gustav wondered internally as he stared at his strength progress. He was expecting it to have reduced since Miss Amy had gotten to such a level of power which was why he mentioned earlier that she may have ruined things for him. A does this mean Miss Amy is still weaker than Jack? A Gustav felt it didn't t make sense because no matter how Miss Amy tried to downplay her strength nobody else in the history of mixed bloods had managed to create their own planet. It was no small feat and he had also been in the presence of both of them so he could sense an unfathomable level of power that wasn't t present initially in Miss Amy and never present in Jack. A hold on as she mentioned something about not being a normal mixed blood again after integrating with the Ashy infection. A this thought began to circulate in Gustava's mind. A does this mean a the stats don't t count Miss Amy as a mixed blood anymore so there are no changes? A. A looks like you figured it out. Uh, the system suddenly voiced in his mind. A so yeah am right. A Gustav stated. A partly a there are two reasons why Miss Imia's newfound strength did not affect the stats of first she is a different type of mixed blood after the integration with the ashy infection a secondly she created her own planet so that practically means she is no longer an earthlinga the system explained. A I guess that makes sense see a Gustav responded internally. He heaved a sigh of relief after this whole realization. His progress was not t affected and won't t be except Jack suddenly got a huge boost in strength. The thing about being weaker was the fact that his improvement rate was faster than theirs because the stronger they became the harder it was to advance. They were the strongest in the entire galaxy and even across the universe Miss Amy and Jack had always been considered amongst one of the strongest. Gustav was ecstatic about this as well because even though Miss Amy now had her planet and would be away most of the times, he now had someone on his side who was potentially the most powerful in the world. This was a huge win for Earth as well because Miss Amy having her own planet wouldn't a stop her from protecting Earth. A. A few hours later Gustav opened his eyes as he sensed something. He stood up and turned to look in Miss Amy's direction. A. Someone is coming. A. Miss Amy voiced out as she stood in place. A blinding bright light covered her in the next instant and she was clad in a long silver outfit. It looked majestic and overbearing as she stood in place like a true deity because that was what she was at the moment. Gustav who was still awestruck and about to ask who sudden spotted a massive blue glow in the northern skies. It looked like a massive beam. Penetrating the planet's atmosphere from space. It shot down with intensive destructiveness like it was ready to destroy the planet. Miss Amy looked up with a nonchalant expression before raising her hand. Jerizja. An invisible saucer-like barrier suddenly appeared hundreds of feet above them and blocked the attack. Bang. The sound of collision as it hit spread across the vicinity heavily and caused the entire environment to start quaking. Gustav could feel the immense pressure radiating from the attack and he knew this wasn't a the type of battle he could get involved in. He turned to the side as he sensed something. A Miss Amy. A he voiced out. A Dona T Warrior A Miss Amy said as she snapped her fingers. A dome suddenly appeared around Gustav as multiple invisible saucer-like barriers appeared all over the vicinity. Bang. 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 Seven more bluish destructive beams descended from above with instantaneous speed all slamming into the multiple barrier that Miss Amy had created all across the place. Chapter 1036 Sudden Attack. Authora S. Note. Unedited Chapters. A -a 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 Despite all these attacks getting blocked. The speed of the planet's movement had slowed down a little due to its intense power. Miss Amy looked upwards and began to float across the air. Her entire figure was still glowing intensely as she rose into the sky. A stop being a bother. A she voiced out with a light tone that surprisingly traveled so far. It reached space. The person responsible for the multiple attack flew across space. Following up with the movement of the planet. He heard the voice and his face squeezed up. He was clad in a blue jacket and hat. His eyes glowed blue completely and his body had a destructive aura oozing from it. A so you are the one responsible for this. Halt the movement of this planet right now or I will destroy it. A he voice out with a loud voice as well from the upper atmosphere of the planet. A destroy. You are a million years too young to successfully do so. A Miss Imia's voice traveled out from the planet to space once more. 
This mixed blood who was obviously an alpha ranked instantly got incensed as he heard that. A starlight enhancement. A he voiced out with a loud voice. Causing all the stars within range across space to start oozing out a stream of energy. These energies flowed towards him from every direction of space as his body glowed up with a more destructive blue aura. A massive blue circular like beam which looked as gigantic as the Earth's moon appeared below him. Zing. 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 That wasna t the end as multiple others appeared as well and surrounded the planet from every corner. In a few over 30 of them had appeared and one could tell that even a single one of these destructive circular beams was capable of wreaking immense havoc. A it would be unwise on your part to keep this up. Any further act to damage my planet will be seen as a maliable act and I will not hesitate to destroy you. A Miss Imia s calm but very loud voice drifted into space once more. The Alpha Mixed Blood totally ignore her warning and his hand that was raised initially. Swung downwards. Fui. 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 All of the moon-sized bluish beams hurled down towards Miss Imia s planet with intense speed. Ripping through space as they carried destructive energy along with them. Miss Amy planet suddenly came to a stop at this point as a whitish barrier appeared and surrounded the entirety of the planet that was three times the size of Earth. A as if that as powerful enough to stop my rain of destructive balls. A he voiced out as he watched the balls collide with the barrier and let out destructive energy. Boom. 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 Destructive ripples were spread across space upon collision as the massive moon-sized beams exploded with intensity. The man stood in place with a look of gratification as he felt he had handled the situation. However in the next few moments his eyes widened with a look of disbelief. As the destructive waves cleared, the planet was still whole without even sustaining a single damage. The barrier that had surrounded it at the last second was not even cracked in the slightest. Neither was there a scratch on it. He could not believe his eyes as he stared at the planet. A did I suddenly turn weak. A he muttered with a tone of confusion. A no fool but you are re weak against me. A he heard a feminine voice from right beside him. The instant he turned to the side with widened eyes. A hand had already stretched out to grab him by the throat. A did not I warn you to stop. Fred. A Miss Amy questioned as her hand tightened around his throat. A A I am me. A he had a look of disbelief on his face as he saw who it was. A how did she appear beside me without me realizing? Is not T she reported missing? How is she related with this whole emergency situation? A he had so many questions running through his mind at the moment. A I have no ties to you so I have no problem in destroying you right now but I am considerate enough to not cut down Earth's strength so ELL spare your pathetic life. A Miss Amy voiced out before letting him go. He breathed in and out heavily after she had let go of his neck. A how did I suddenly lose all my strength the moment she grabbed me? It does not t make sense see our strengths were Raina t too far apart initially but now Ida's like she has unfathomable power. A this thought ran through Frida's mind as he pondered on what could be the answer to these his multiple questions. A get out of here before I change my mind. A Miss Amy stated as she began to float downwards towards her planet. A wait a please wait. A Fred called out quickly before she was out of sight. A what is it? A Miss Amy questioned with an hostile tone. A no one had any idea that you were responsible for this they are just worried that this is a threat to Earth. A Fred tried explaining. A no need to be worried I have almost arrived at my desired destination before you interrupted the journey. A Miss Amy voiced before flying downwards. Zwi. She left him floating there with loads of questions still running through his mind. He was really interested in asking her but he knew better than to try and be invasive again after what had just happened. Fred was considered the third most powerful mixed blood after Miss Amy and Jack. It was always debatable about who was more stronger between Miss Amy and Jack amongst the MBO but Fred was undeniably third place. However he did not he used to be that much weaker than Miss Amy even though he was still weaker. He initially was not he on Earth but he was requested to arrive as soon as possible by the higher ups due to the impending doom they presumed was approaching. He had reached here as soon as he could especially after he heard Jack was still on a mission several galaxies away and Miss Amy was still missing. 
Chapter 1037 Overpowered. He was the closest alpha rank mixed blood to Earth so he answered the call and got briefed on his way here. The plan was to halt the planet before it reached Neptunea's orbit so Earth would be safe and since he powerful enough to destroy an entire planet like Amy and the others. This was definitely a mission he was capable of completing successfully. Unfortunately he had no idea that this was what he was gonna meet here. Jurin. The planet began traveling at insanely fast speed again right before his very eyes as he floated in space. In a few. It had completely disappeared out of sight despite its massive size and how it was blazing intensely. A time to head back. He decided to head back to Earth at this point to give them the report. Fwooshish. He turned and flew forward with intense speed as well. A. A an MBO officer. A Gustav voiced with a slightly disturbed look. A yes. A Miss Amy responded as she took her seat outside a small crystalline looking pool she created recently. A I told you they a d probably be bothered. A Gustav voiced out with a frustrated tone. He had warned Miss Amy earlier that. At the speed she was moving the planet with the area in space she intended to occupy. The Earth would most likely be worried a planet was approaching them. Miss Amy shrugged it off mostly because she didn't t really care and now this Alpha had incited a battle that caused residue destructive waves to blast him to smithereens. A don't t worry I handled it. A Miss Amy said with a nonchalant expression. Of course you did I hope you didn't t kill the poor dude. A Gustav said while shaking his head. A I was tempted but naha I pardoned his weak ass. A Miss Amy responded with a light chuckle. A you call that weak a? A. Gustava's eyes turned hollow as he voiced out. A then what would you call me? A Gustav questioned with a ridiculing tone. A my baby a the teacher a's pita my apprentice a super weaklinga which one do you prefer? A Miss Amy questioned. Gustav. A a a a fuck you Miss Imia e a l l become strong enough to overpower you one day. A. A sure. He he. A Miss Amy responded like she could read Gustava's mind. Earth. A are you saying the young miss had been behind this the whole time? A. A yes. I met her about 30 minutes ago and she protected the planet from all my attacks. A. A we noticed it stopped for a bit. Was that you? A. A she did that herself to face Maya Ia am not powerful enough to face her. A. A is she in hostile? A. A has she finally turned against Earth? A. A what exactly is her motive? A. Within a board room will multiple MBO higher-ups. Fred could be seen standing in front as he narrated his experience to them. A she Hasna T turned against Earth. She has almost reached her destination of the planet should stop moving soon. A. A so you are re-saying the planet belongs to her. A. A so she implied a A. A we should take this as an attack on Earth and deploy forces to stop her right away. A I agree. She must have turned and became an enemy of Earth now. A gentleman. Lita S relax a bit. According to Fred she Hasna T arrived at her destination. A. A will you take responsibility if we decide to wait and eventually she does not T stop at where she claimed she would. A. A will you take responsibility for slow inaction because the Earth might get destroyed before we re able to act. A. A there won't a T be any responsibility to take when we re all dead. A. A I don't T see any reason why she would want to destroy Earth in the first place. A. A can we just hold on and find out how long till she arrives at her expected destination. A. A Lita S take action right away. A. The board room turned rowdy as some of the higher up proposed for action to be taken immediately some decided to stick to waiting. A sirs. I believe the young miss had never acted nefariously against the earth before so yes she deserves the benefit of the doubt. A gradier Xanatus who happened to be in the meeting with them. Voiced out. He was allowed to join the meeting as he had been in charge of the investigation since the whole situation began weeks ago. However since he was still in space. He joined the meeting in holographic format. He was still watching over the planet. A officer Xanatus makes a good point. A Fred voiced out as well after seeing the higher ups argue all this time. Internally there was a reluctance building up especially after seeing how powerful Miss Amy was. 
He knew her personality all too well so he knew that if she was coming to destroy Earth she wouldn't a hide it. She would say it confidently that she wanted to do that because she wasn't a the type to fear anyone or lie about anything. It would be a grave mistake if they were to cross her with how powerful she was at the moment. Fred was a bit disappointed about the higher ups because their thoughts right now should be on how to make her more of an ally instead of a foe. A officer Xanatus. Do you have eyes on the planet at the moment? A. A yes I do. A Gradier Xanatus responded. A, and how fast is it moving? A. Gradier Xanatus went on to reply them with the data. A and that does not a T ring bells to some of you. She obviously has the intention of destroying us all for unknown reasons. A. A we need to act right now so Earth does not T suffer any crippling damage. A. The higher ups began to argue again about which step to take and they decided. More AFA rank mixed bloods will be sent to stall the planet S movement while more troops are gathered to take Miss Amy down. Since Jack was currently unavailable they had to gather multiple alpha rank to match his strength. They still did not believe Miss Amy was stronger even after Frida's narration. A Sursa A Gradier Xanatus suddenly interrupted their planning. A what is it Officer Xanatus? A. A the planet is slowing down. A he voiced out. A huh. Are you sure? A chapter 1038 unkillable. A yes. Ida S slowing down at the moment and Ida S still at least a thousand light years away from Neptunea S orbit. Ida S sun which was also traveling is 2000 light years behind it and is also slowing down. A Gradier Xanatus reported. A turns out the young miss was saying the truth when she mentioned she would soon arrive at her destination. A Gradier Xanatus pointed out as he noticed the awkward expression on the faces of the higher ups. He did not take care and just wanted to point out more things so as to leave them embarrassed about the fact that would have made stupidly drastic decisions under the guise of protecting Earth. A keep watching the planet and report to us the moment it comes to a stop. A. One of them voiced out. A yes sir. A Gradier Xanatus responded respectfully. After a few more minutes the whole meeting ended and they decided to watch out for when the planet would stop moving. Gradier Xanatus stood in his spacecraft as he heaved a sigh of relief. The spacecraft was moving at the same pace with Miss Imea's planet at the moment. They were keeping a safe distance away but Gradier Xanatus still made sure to keep eyes on them. A this means the kid is probably still Olivia A Gradier Xanatus muttered with a look of relief. With how Fred had narrated the whole scenario with Miss Amy. Gradier Xanatus was sure she wouldn't t let Gustav just die like that especially in a situation that she was related with. A you a re truly unkillable kid. At this point Gradier Xanatus just had to accept it. Gustav had been in so many life or death situations and no matter how much the favor was against him. He always managed to come out alive. Gradier Xanatus just hoped that whatever charm or luck was working for Gustav kept working because there was no doubt that he would be in more crazier and dangerous situations in the future. Earth. A I can actually spot it from here. A. A me too. A. A it looks like a daystar. A. A the MBO is definitely doing something about it so we don't a T have to worry. A. A group of five could be seen sitting atop a mountain discussing with one another. In the southern skies. A shining dot in the sky was visible. It seemed like this was the planet they had mentioned was approaching in the news. AEM surprised Ida S not just a moving planet but a moving sun as well we should be seeing two dots then but Ida S just one. Who knows which one is visible RN. A Falco voiced out. AEM guessing Ida S the Suna according to what E of A heard. Ida S twice the size of ours and four times hotter so definitely it will be shining brighter across space. A Matilda stated. A I know this is interesting and all but I can't a T wait for the next raid Ida S fun to be out in the field once again. A Timmy voiced out with a look of anticipation. A I know this is interesting and all but I can't a T wait for the next raid Ida S fun to be out in the field once again. A Timmy voiced out with a look of anticipation. AI will smash those Genzotus fuckers ha ha ha. Aria yelled out with a fired up tone. A shut up and stick to the team next time. We were almost killed because of you last time. A teamy said while landing his fist on Raya's head. A ouch. I just wanted to get rid of them. Aria said with a low tone. 
A stick to the formation and plan so they don't a TCR group is useless. A Falco voiced out as well. Uh, the next should be the last raid in this city of the Ria's nowhere else to check for now. A Maltita said with a contemplative expression. A Vera. You still have our backs during the raids right? A Timi questioned. A sure. A Vera responded with a slightly disinterested tone. They had been on this mission for about a week already and since the time of the start. They had been going on raids with other MBO groups. The MBO had received intelligent information about a location where some members of the Genzotis group seen as Slarkov's terrorists were conducting an operation. Since they arrived in this city, they had been conducting raids and flushing them. The MBO had stated that they preferred for the members to be captured alive but if killing was the only option available due to getting in precarious situations, they could take the action. However it was stated that you got more points for getting them alive instead of killing them. So far, Timi, Falco and the others had managed to get a couple of Genzotis members alive. This was very difficult as every member had sophisticated pieces of technological suit that wasn't a tea in the market. These pieces were unique and made their combat power and strength levels increase by a whole lot. Slarkovs were similar in strength to humans but these suits made them capable of going toe to toe with mixed bloods so the raid had been rather difficult and there had been multiple crazy scenarios. It was confirmed that this was a Slarkov terrorist group as every single member they had come into contact with was a Slarkov. The aim of this group remained to eradicate the mixed bloods on Earth so it was impossible for the MBO to reason with them without a scuffle breaking out. It was like the members had been brainwashed because every single one of them had immense hate for mixed bloods and would rather die than to leave them alive. So far more than a hundred of their members had been captured and over 200 killed. Even with this numbers, the intelligence the MBO received stated that there were at least 10 times more. Some of the major problems was not knowing the main base of this group and how they recruited members. Red Shadow. Gradier Xanatus and Gustav who were amongst the first to encounter this group were sure they didn't a T have high numbers at the time. Now the MBO intelligence had revealed that they were now numbering in the thousands according to an interrogation. Chapter 1039 Rating Genzotis Members Authora S. Note. Unedited Chapters, S. Issues Fixed, My Apologies. A -a 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 there was no doubt that Slarkovs and even humans existed with deep hate for mixed bloods mostly because those without bloodlines are seen as lower lifeforms. The issue now was how were they getting recruited? What secret channel were the Genzotis using to get across to potential Slarkovs and turn them into members? No one seemed to have figured this out yet and the world government as well as the MBO knew well enough that the longer it took to weed them out the more this group would grow in numbers. The population of Slarkovs and humans were not so high compared to Mixedbloods. They merely managed to occupy 10% of the world's population but if that 10% managed to band together with the crazy advantage in technology they had, it would be a great issue. It was already difficult to weed them out now that they were Reina T so high in population. One could wonder how insane it would be if they all came together. A should we join them on the next raiding mission after this one? A Matilda questioned with a curious tone. A as interesting as that would be. I don't a T think we get to pick our next mission ourselves. A Falco responded while shaking his head. A Gustav said something about how we needed to complete this mission properly so he could add us to his platoon. A Timi stated. A maybe after we do this and successfully get added into his platoon we could ask him to get us assigned for this type of mission again. A Matilda voiced out. A or we could do it with the full squad including my rival. A Rhea added as well. Vera eyes beamed up with interest as she heard Gustava's name getting added to the conversation. A according to what he of A heard from the other groups. He was involved when the whole thing started so it wouldn't a T make any less sense if he decided to get involved. A Falco stated. A didn't a T he mentioned he was going to be busy with something though. A Timi questioned with a contemplative expression. A also IYSOP training is starting in a month from now so we can a T be involved in this till the end. A Matilda voiced out with a tone of realization as well. Vera's expression turned sour once more as she heard that. 
they were lucky every single one of them got drafted for IYSOP so they could still work together in that aspect too. However, according to what they heard, there were still more than 100 potential candidates being drafted from all across the world. Not just from the MBO. At the end of the day, they would still have to defend their spots to be on the main team or being a substitute would split them up. A group 24. Gather in base for the next raid briefing. T minus 2 minutes. A a voice suddenly called out to them from behind. Everyone stood to their feet after hearing this and turned around. A Lita S go. A. Mendelaga's planet. A you all did well. A. A man in dark jacket reaching the back of his heel voice out to a group of seven standing behind a small mountain. A large spacecraft as tall as a three-story building could be seen stationed up ahead and a group of MBO officers could be seen placing a silver-colored circular object into a container. A but they are re both dead. A Angie voiced with a slightly disturbed tone. A it does not matter. If they were already corrupted. Without killing the Mendelagas responsible it's impossible to free their minds and you fledglings are too weak to handle a true elder. Talk more of two. Uh, the man responded brushing aside the fact that there were two bodies laying on the ground by the side. These two bodies belonged to a male and female and it was obvious that they were both dead. One had a hole in the chest and the other had been decapitated. A Ida S A Patia if there was any other method we would have taken it but since this was the only way out. There was really nothing we could do. A Ildris voiced with a slightly sympathetic tone. These two were none other than the other two left from the team sent on this mission before them. Unfortunately now the entire team had been wiped out because of the Intiel situation. A A A A A A A A A A A hand it over. Right now. A Jade yelled out with her hand wrapped around Ildris neck. Ildris stared directly at Angie at this point and did not utter a word anymore. A don't t do anything stupid or you won't t be able to save them both. A Jade shouted out once more. A A I could care less about what happens to Glade. A. Jade was unable to process what had just happened as she the voice she just heard sounded right beside her ear. Swoosh. It came with a burst of wind. The instant she turned to the side she spotted Angie standing right beside her but Angie was not just standing in place. Her right hand was stretched forward. A bleared fish. A jade vomited out a mouthful of blood onto Angie as she slowly stared down the hand that was halfway through her chest. She subconsciously let go of Ildris as the reality finally hit her. They were unaware that someone in this group was capable of moving so fast. Angie literally speed blitz her. Angie could move at over 300,000 feet in a second with her normal speed and they were only about 20 feet away. This meant Angie was able to arrive right beside her in practically an instant. No one was able to follow Anya's speed. The other officer instantly got the cue and tried to shatter Glada's windpipe but at the same moment the whole ruckus was caused by Angie a ring-like vortex had appeared around his neck. E. He had been secretly preparing this with his fingers swirling behind him so the moment Angie made her move. He allowed it appear. Jurin. The vortex shrunk and in the next instant. The other male officer had been decapitated. Chapter 1040 Angie's First Kill. Authora S. Note. Unedited Chapters. A -A, 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 A A A Angie turned to the side and noticed that Glade was still alive. A she got lucky this time. A Angie said internally as she turned to face E. E next. A good of you to save her ass. A Angie said before swinging her arm around to get the blood off. A what? Did you run all the way there without knowing I was gonna act? A E. He questioned with a suspicious look. A it was either her or Ildris and you know who I chose. A Angie responded while shrugging. Glade had a weird look on her face as she heard that. She was speechless and felt a kind of intense hate from Angie towards her. She had no idea why this was the case but at the very least she was glad E. E saved her. A what was that all about? A Captain Spark could feel the weird vibe in the air after the situation was resolved. They all ignored his question and Angie proceeded to move back towards the group as Davidson made a call to the generals. While it looked like she was okay on the surface. Angie was holding in the urge to puke. 
Hey, it feels worse than I imagined. A few, few, few. It's gonna be Finia. It was to protect my loved Onesa. A. She kept chanting internally as her right arm trembled from time to time. The first person to arrive where they were on the planet was Mac. A. 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 Does this mean we have completed the mission? A. Davidson questioned. A. Yes. A. Leave the rest to me, kids. A. Mac voiced out as he took a step forward. Fweeish. He suddenly disappeared from their sight. A finally. And now we can head back. A E. E voiced as he let out a sigh of relief. They all moved into the spacecraft in the new few moments and it took off into the skies. They were lucky Mac had arrived the time he died because the Mendelagas had clocked in on their position at the checkpoint and were approaching in droves. However the moment Mac arrived. His presence caused them to pause in theory tracks. The only item they had as leverage against him and against their planet falling were now in the hands of the MBO. They really had nothing to use against Mac who was more powerful than every Mendelaga elder on the planet. Mendelagas were considered pretty strong in the universe but compared to Earth with powerfully mixed bloods like Jack and Miss Amy they really didn't a stand a chance. They had breached the treaty that practically protected them from the invasion of more powerful planets with their initial actions so they couldn't a tea call for help. Earth had every right to do whatever they wanted to the planet since they didn't a start the whole situation. E. E and the others no longer had any business here. Mac and the others would handle taking over the planet and subjecting its people. They had played their parts. Although not without casualties. They were free to head back now. It had been a week since they were gone and it would take another three days of journeying before they got back to Earth. They were unaware of Eartha's current situation with the whole new planet issue but they would find out sooner or later. Uh, so this is where I get off I guess. A Gustav voiced out as he looked around. The scenery was a whole lot better than before. A few cat-like animals moving about. Lushy green fields and sparkling pool-like lakes. The clouds looked more beautiful than Eartha's and Gustav couldn't a help but admit the air here was fresher than that of Eartha's as well. And now that you can create life, do you plan on create any human lifeforms? A Gustav questioned. A not at all. A Miss Amy replied as she walked out of one of the lakes. Her entire body dripped of wetness as the white robes like cloth she was clad in. Glued to her body. Any man that stared at Miss Amy at this point with her beautiful but cold face and her glamorous looking body would definitely gulp down saliva. Her majestic bearing and alluring body was immensely hot but Gustav being Gustav stared at her with an unbothered expression. AI do plan to create other lifeforms but aside copying the looks of animals from Earth. I won't a t be copying any other lifeforms so a Miss Amy voiced out once more. A it will take some time before I achieve what I have in mind but nonetheless I will visit Earth from time to time and maybe even protect those idiots when they need my help. A she added. A I have to get off Haria I have things to get back Toa on Earth. A Gustav listed out with a tone of difficulty. A why the rush? A Miss Amy questioned. A Earth is still a bit distant from here and I have spent longer time away than I intended Toa A. Miss Amy cut Gustav off before he could finish. A they should be arriving at any moment so no need to rush. We LL go together. A she stated. A who? A as Gustav threw this question out the answer appeared in his mind. A the MBO. A he voiced out next. A they are re here already. A Miss Amy stated in response. Gustav eyes squinted as he wasn't t sensing anything from his surroundings but after a minute he stared at the eastern sky. Zoon, zoon, zoon. Several spacecraft suddenly appeared in the skies. Moving towards their location. A are you ready to go home now? A Miss Amy said with a smile as she turned to stare at Gustav. A A A A A A. Minutes later Gustav and Miss Amy were on their way back to Earth. The MBO officers had politely asked Miss Amy for an audience on Earth according to the MBO higher-ups. She wanted to use this opportunity to see Earth once more before she went back to focusing on developing her planet. She left a barrier surrounding her planet in the meantime just in case anyone tried anything shady while she was away. She would sense at the moment there was an issue. Chapter 1041 Back on Planet Earth. AI just knew you a DB okay kid. A Gradier Xanatus voiced out within the spacecraft. 
he had a look of relief now that he had truly confirmed Gustav was alive. Great Ear Xanatus was amongst the officers sent to humbly request Miss Imea's visit to Earth and his spacecraft was specifically the one bringing them back at the moment. A.U. did a lousy job of keeping him safe. A. Miss Amy voiced out from the other end. Great Ear Xanatus froze in place as he heard that. A. Erm Young Miss. Gustav is quite the trouble Findera he never listens. A. Great Ear Xanatus explained. A. I would have shred Earth to its very last atoms if anything had happened to him. A Miss Amy voiced with a nonchalant look. Her tone did not sound very serious but Great Ear Xanatus was well aware of how she nearly destroyed Burning Sands City because Gustav was missing. They knew just how capable she was especially now that she was way more powerful than before. A Ida S nobody s fault except mine. He tried his best but yes like he said. I wanted to investigate the situation despite its danger because I could sense a connection and I was right. A Gustav voiced out. Trying to calm Miss Amy. They glided through space for less than an hour before arriving back on Earth. By the time they did. It was already nightfall. There were tons of MBO officials awaiting their arrival the moment they landed. It had already spread all across the MBO that the person responsible for the new planet was Miss Amy. The world government had not made it public yet because they still wanted to have a meeting with Miss Amy before they could decide on how to proceed with things. A. The meeting began almost instantly and Gustav had to wait in a secluded area as he was not allowed to participate. It was only for MBO higher-ups and about two world government leaders were present at this particular location. Gustav did not mind staying out of it because he knew Miss Amy would be able to handle any situation herself. This meeting was taking place within the MBO tower in Plankton City so Gustav decided to move around after a while. A officer crimson. A someone called out to him while he was walking along a corridor. A yes. A Gustav responded while turning around. A there is someone looking for you. A the female officer who called out to him stated. A huh. A. A actually they have a been looking for you for the past three days now but you were off planet so I asked him to wait. A. A who? A. A A A. Within the board room where the meeting was going down. Questions were being thrown out occasionally. A just relax oldies. My planet poses no threat to earth. It will maintain its current distance from earth and there will never be a confrontation in the future. A Miss Amy voiced while rolling her eyes. A how did you manage to achieve such a feat? A. A will you still be a part of the MBO? A. A if you are re-asking if I would still protect Earth when I s necessary then nothing to worry about. My planet and Earth will be allies. A Miss Amy voiced out. A how about letting Earth commandeer your planet? We ll share the resources it has to offer. A. S i l e n c e e e e e e. A what did you just say? A. A sudden powerful pressure suddenly descended upon the entire place as Miss Amy voiced out. A. What did you just say? A. A sudden powerful pressure suddenly descended upon the entire place as Miss Amy voiced out. GHBBLHH. The entire MBO tower began quaking intensely as this pressure radiated from Miss Amy. Causing every single person to stare at her with looks of reverence. A. Well Irma your planet A. The higher-up officer who had just voiced that out stuttered he felt the immense pressure radiating from Miss Amy. They would usually not fear her since Jack Power was undoubtedly seen as the highest in the past but now it seemed like a different case. The majestic and ethereal aura Miss Amy gave off was truly like being in the presence of a deity. If she could create a planet now, no doubt she could make everyone here disappear in an instant if she wanted to. She was practically on par with Jack at the Alpha rank and now she had achieved the Beacon rank. What they did not know was Miss Amy was really restraining her presence at this point and releasing it fully would cause the destruction of Earth in an instant. A I think what Grand General Curtis meant to say was Earth would very much like to be in acquaintance with your planet. A. One of the higher ups quickly voiced out with a respectful tone. Causing Miss Amy to calm down. A better I like the sound of acquaintances. A Miss Amy said before standing to her feet. A this meeting is over. A she stated before proceeding to walking towards the exit. 
The higher ups sat in place for minutes with looks of relief on their faces as some of them bashed the other higher up. A Grand General Curtis are you crazy? A. A instead of showing Eartha as selfishness why don't a T you come up with better cooperation ideas? A. A she created a planet and is practically a goddess now. Best not to try and piss her off. A. Grand General Curtis had a disgusted look as he heard them speak. A Hypocritza didn't a T you all agree to attack her planet a few hours ago. Miss Amy had left to go look for Gustav at this point while the rest of the MBO officers within the tower were left to wonder why the entire building was quaking a while ago. A. Ahem. So you just need me to sign some documents? A. Gustav questioned. A. Yes or E. L. L. Be put back in camp till I reach the age of 16. A. Endrick responded. A. I denounce the Oslov name though so legally we re not related. A. Gustav reminded. Uh, then you can act as a guardiana please. A. Endrick begged. A. A. OK. A. Gustav finally gave in and collected the required documents from Endrick. It took a couple of minutes for him to finish but he proceeded to pass them to Endrick afterwards. Chapter 1042 Terrible Omen. A. Thank you. A. Endrick voiced in response after retrieving them. It turned out Endrick had been in the tower waiting for Gustava's return since he left on the mission off planet. Since he was an MBO cadet and Gustava's little brother he was very much allowed to wait here. A all right then we re done here. A Gustav voiced out as he turned around to leave. A I got something of yours recently. A Endrick stated before Gustav could take a step. A hum. A Gustav muttered as he turned around. A Ida s yours but you can't a t use it just yet. A Endrick added. A then what a s the point? A Gustav questioned. A just come with me a Endrick voiced out as a glowing green dot appeared on his forehead. A to where? A Gustav questioned. A Husarius. A Endrick called out and a bright green glow engulfed them in the next instant. Miss Amy who was approaching this area from the south spotted a glimpse of Gustav and Endrick before they disappeared. A o. Oh. Two to fix their relationship. A she voiced with a tone of amusement. A he really has grown in every aspect a especially mentally. A a smile appeared on her face as she muttered. The Gustav she knew would not let Endrick be within five steps of him and both of them would always be trying to kill each other. If would seem Gustav could let go of past grudges and she felt this was another thing that made him different from her since she couldn't a t do the same. A a a. A where is this? A Gustav asked as they appeared in an unknown plane. All that could be seen was darkness and green glowing strides all around. However up ahead Gustav spotted a golden plaited armor resembling a vest floating in mid-air. This vest oozed forth with a type of energy that caused this space to quake occasionally. Gustav could tell that it was sealed yet it was immensely powerful. A that is the cosmic armor said to be amongst the most powerful armors in the universe with multiple boons attached to it. A Endrick voiced out. A for hundreds of thousands of years beings from all across the universe have been trying to acquire it so they could use its power it is overly powerful and in the hands of the wrong person can cause great havoc. I managed to acquire it recently with Husarius help of course after a difficult and dangerous travel to another dimension. A Endrick explained. A hum and you say I to s mine. A Gustav questioned as he moved closer to it. A yes it is yours as you probably already know. You are not in any way normal. Your existence is a very abnormal one and despite this armor existing for as long as it has. It does belong to you. A. Endrick responded. Gustav stepped forward and stood right beneath the floating armor. A but I can't a t use it. A. Gustav stated. A no. Not right now you can't a t. A. Endrick replied. A. Ida s too powerful for me and Ia d probably be blown to bits if I tried to equip it. A Gustav voiced out. A precisely. A Endrick responded. A Sai is expected a Gustav raised his left palm as recalled Kahelia. Kahelia's power was still trapped within him and he was unable to access it despite them saying the power belonged to him. A so how many more items are left to acquire? A Gustav also recalled that there were supposed to be more of his things scattered across the universe. A for more a that s as much as I can tell you for now. I can't a t give you any more info beyond that. A Endrick clarified after answering before Gustav could respond. 
A sure sure. A Gustav stated as he raised his hand to touch the armor. A nice place you got here kid. A. A feminine voice suddenly resounded from behind. Gustav paused as he heard that and turned around. A Miss Amy. A he voiced with a tone of disbelief. A how did you get here? A no one was more surprised than Endrick. This was a space created by Husarius and even as a crystal Husarius was so powerful due to the sacrifice of all his kinsmen. This place practically existed in a private dimension. A does not tea matter. A Miss Amy stated as she moved forward. Jin. A green glowing crystal phased out of Endrika's forehead in the next instant and floated to Miss Imia's front. A this one is no longer a normal being a her existence has surpassed the threshold of every supernatural existence on earth a. And this is not even her highest potential. She has the capacity to become even more powerful than this a Husaruus voiced out lengthily as it floated in front of Miss Amy. A a it's too bad she saw a. A what are you supposed to be? A Miss Amy said with an intrigued tone as she stared at the floating talking crystal. A that a s Husarius a he used to have a body and be a it's a long story but he is in league with Endrick and he revealed a bit to me about my true identity. A Gustav voiced out. A true identity. You have a really been holding out on me a kid. A Miss Amy responded with a suspicious tone. A e have a been out of camp for months but you were a wola if not I would have told you everything. A Gustav said while shrugging his shoulders. A what is that? A Miss Amy questioned with a curious tone while pointing at the armor. A Ida S very powerful. A she added while scrutinizing Ida S appearance. A it is said to be amongst the most powerful tools in the universe and according to them. It belongs to me but I can't equip it just yet. A Gustav stated in response. A uhu another thing you have a gotta tell me in great detail at least you and the other kid are getting along now. A Miss Amy stated after arriving beside Gustav. A we re nota hea s nota ida s just a necessary partnership. A Gustav voiced out. A o oh, is it now? A a smirk appeared on her face as Miss Amy questioned. Endrick was turned into a third wheel here as Gustav and Miss Amy began to argue back and forth with each other. A are they fated? A Endrick questioned. A intertwining fates yes a but I sense a terrible omen. A Husarius tone sounded heavy as he spouted out. Chapter 1043 Low Chances. Authora S Note. Unedited Chapters. A A A A A A A A what do you mean? A Endrick said with a troubled tone. A something has changed a tide has been triggered and we are now arriving at an intersection that branches in different paths so only one of these paths leads to a future without tragedy as for the other so not so much. While some are not filled with so much tragic events. Just a single tragic event could cause so much catastrophe in his life which could eventually lead to a dark awakening a Husaruus voiced out lengthily. A it's confusing. A Endrick stated in response. Of the fates always area a Husaruus heaved a low sigh. A what are the chances of following the path without any tragic event? A Endrick questioned. A a few minutes ago a it was 0.3% but it has decreased even further now a ida s 0.1 and it keeps decreasing by the minutia a Husarius answered. A what? A Endrick could not help but voice out in shock. A what is it? A Gustav voiced out as he turned around with a confused look. A keep it from him or anyone else or the situation will worsen. A Husarius quickly cautioned. Oh nothing I was just practicing for something. A Endrick voiced in response. Gustava's eyebrows creased as he heard that. His face shone a look that made it seem like he was saying a a bit weird to be practicing such in a place like this a but Gustav brushed it off and turned back around to keep observing the armor. A what is causing this? There must be a reason why it keeps decreasing. A Endrick questioned with a low but concerned tone. A there is but I haven't a t figured it out a if I was to guess e a d say it must be the same thing that caused multiple future branches to appear originally there were only two paths but now there are more than ten of tama would ever cause the branches to increase is also reducing the possibility of following the non-tragic path. A Husarius explained. A what can we do about it? A Endrick asked. A for now. Wait. One thing about the fates is. 
The more you try to influence according to your desired outcome the worse it's most likely to be Kamea there are beings in the universe such as myself capable of not just connecting with the fates but tampering with them as well but we all make sure to refrain from doing so because there will always be an inescapable future consequence. A Husarius voiced in response. A -E -L -L, keep checking for now so just wait until I have something for you but I must ask you are you ready to get your hands bloody for the sake of your brother? A Husarius questioned. Endrick stared at Gustav from behind at this point as memories began playing in his mind. Playing as kids to growing up as enemies and him really being amongst the villains in his big brother's life. AI have failed him in the pasta I will do everything to atone for all the wrong I have committed. So long as I am able to keep him safe and away from pain ELL do anything. He has suffered enough already. A Endrick said with a sentimental tone. A Hama all right then. Prepare yourself because you might have to do some really troublesome things to keep that motive. A Husarius added. A H N M. A Endrick nodded in response. A hey when am I going to be strong enough to equip this? A Gustav questioned internally. A U A D have to be close to the alpha rank A, the system responded. A damna that a s still very far away a is there even any item I own that I am can use with my current level of strength? A Gustav questioned. A hum just one. Up the system replied. A which is? A Gustav questioned once more. A good tria you know I can a t reveal that until we arrive at the time frame where they are recovered one after the other. Up the system responded. Gustav. A t c h. A. A lita s go. A Gustav voiced out as he turned around. A too bad you won't a t be able to make use of it in the meantime but Ida s gonna destroy this dimension eventually cause this place is not strong enough to hold it. A Miss Amy voiced out. Ahem. I can sense the space trembling as well. A Gustav paused his movement as he turned around once more. A it needs to stay here till you are re strong enough to equip it or every single crazy being looking for it all across the universe will come after it. It's like putting a target on our backs cause it lead us off a signature energy that will help them in pinpointing its location. A Endrick explained. A hum I see. A Miss Amy said with a tone of understanding as she snapped her fingers. Ha. An invisible field of energy was instantly erected around the armor. Gustav instantly sensed the powerful energy spreading from the armor decrease drastically. AI just put a barrier around Ida this space will be able to hold it without problems now. A Miss Amy voiced out. A oh. Nice. A Gustav exclaimed before turning around once more. A E A M participating in I Y S O P A E A L L join you in retrieving the rest or at least help. A Gustav said as he approached Endrick. A that would be a great help but I believe you have some other matters to attend to after Iwisopa there are other things you have to scour the intergalactic space for but if you can help. There will be one where I will require your assistance. A Endrick's statement made it seem like he knew everything about Gustava's plans even though Gustav hadn't t mentioned anything to him. A he definitely knows about my five years quest. A Gustav thought. A the Crystalla Husarius knows everything so it's normal that Endrick does as well. A the system responded. A which one am I supposed to join you in retrieving? A Gustav questioned. A E L L tell you when the time comes you need to be with your entire team too. When the time comes they will be of great help and receive some boosts known as the entitlement. As the time candidate I need to make sure everything goes according to plan. That is my duty. A. Endrick said with a decisive tone. Chapter 1044 You wanna add me to your platoon? Gustav had no doubt about Endrick being on his side at this point. Everything that had been happening so far along with the system and Husarius also making some revelations proved that Endrick was committed to helping him prepare for whatever was to come. The kid had truly become capable in the past year. At the same time Gustav could sense that Endrick was closing in on the third step of Echo rank which was pretty strong and fast. A how powerful do I have to become before I can equip the armor? A Gustav questioned internally. A U A D have to be close to the alpha rank A, the system responded. A damna that a s still very far away a is there even any item I own that I am can use with my current level of strength? A Gustav questioned. A hum just one. Up the system replied. A which is? A Gustav questioned once more. 
Hey good Tria you know I can't t reveal that until we arrive at the time frame where they are recovered one after the other. Up the system responded. Gustav. A T C H. A. A Lita S go. A Gustav voiced out as he turned around. A too bad you won't a t be able to make use of it in the meantime but Ida s gonna destroy this dimension eventually cause this place is not strong enough to hold it. A Miss Amy voiced out. Ahem. I can sense the space trembling as well. A Gustav paused his movement as he turned around once more. A it needs to stay here till you are re strong enough to equip it or every single crazy being looking for it all across the universe will come after it. It's like putting a target on our backs cause it lead us off a signature energy that will help them in pinpointing its location. A Endrick explained. A hum I see. A Miss Amy said with a tone of understanding as she snapped her fingers. Pa. An invisible field of energy was instantly erected around the armor. Gustav instantly sensed the powerful energy spreading from the armor decrease drastically. AI just put a barrier around Ida this space will be able to hold it without problems now. A Miss Amy voiced out. A oh. Nice. A Gustav exclaimed before turning around once more. A E M participating in Iwisopa E L L join you in retrieving the rest or at least help. A Gustav said as he approached Endrick. A that would be a great help but I believe you have some other matters to attend to after Iwisopa there are other things you have to scour the intergalactic space for but if you can help. There will be one where I will require your assistance. A Endrick's statement made it seem like he knew everything about Gustava's plans even though Gustav hadn't t mentioned anything to him. A he definitely knows about my five years quest. A Gustav thought. A the Crystalla Husarius knows everything so it's normal that Endrick does as well. A the system responded. A which one am I supposed to join you in retrieving? A Gustav questioned. A E L L tell you when the time Komisa you need to be with your entire team too. When the time comes they will be of great help and receive some boosts known as the entitlement. As the time candidate I need to make sure everything goes according to plan. That is my duty. A. Endrick said with a decisive tone. Gustav had no doubt about Endrick being on his side at this point. Everything that had been happening so far along with the system and Husarius also making some revelations proved that Endrick was committed to helping him prepare for whatever was to come. The kid had truly become capable in the past year. At the same time Gustav could sense that Endrick was closing in on the third step of Echo rank which was pretty strong and fast. Endrick was not in any way weak. He never was even when he was younger and now that he had received training Gustav didn't t doubt his capability. A uh, maybe I should add him to my platoon. A Gustav had this thought in mind. Although Miss Amy was that fast it still couldn't t be compared to Gustava's speed as he was still practically a new officer yet he was already at the major rank. Gustav was still a 19 year old young man so he still had a lot of potential as did Miss Amy but now she was no longer a part of Eartha's forces. She was now beyond a world letter as she was a creator a goddess and she could make changes to whatever she wished to with a flick of her wrist. They chatted for some time as they had dinner and after they were done. Miss Amy stood to her feet. A Ida s time to go. A she voiced out as she moved towards the balcony of the building. A you are re leaving already. A Gustav questioned like he had forgotten he spent the last six days with Miss Amy. A E L L be back to see you every once in a while and you can also come visit from time to time A Miss Amy said as a glamorous smile appeared on her face. A we both have a lot to do anyways. You need to focus on your plans and missions and I need to develop my planet better. A she added. A you have a sure been smiling a lot these days. A Gustav said with a suspicious expression. A did I ever tell you how lonely it was for me in that dark dimension I was trapped within. A Miss Amy said as she moved closer to Gustav almost making contact with him. A I never thought I could feel loneliness I thought those emotions were fleeting. Long gone and I would only feel numb for the rest of my days since after my mother's death A. A A turns out I was wrong the first person I thought of was you A Miss Amy said as she placed her reached out and placed her right hand on Gustava's left cheek. 
AI used to think I really had nothing to lose in this life anymore but I couldn't be more wrong you Gustav have become more important to me than I ever thought was possible and while I was away I wished for nothing more than to see this cheeky face of yours again a eh? chapter 1045 emotional goodbye author s note bonus chapter dedicated to Wolfie's Temun. your PayPal donation is much appreciated a degree a ascent I one half AA and I was concerned it would never happen if I didn't find a way to leave. A Miss Imia's smile turned even more radiant at this point. A Sedona T blamed me for smiling this way after seeing you again because it was all I wished for at a certain point in time. A she rubbed Gustava's cheek even more affectionately before turning around. A alright time to go now for real a see you soon kid. A Miss Amy didn't even wait for him to respond before she blasted off into the sky. Gustav was left there looking awestruck for a couple of seconds before his mind trailed back to reality. A see you soon Miss Amy. A his face had turned a bit red as he reached out to touch the same part of his cheek Miss Amy caressed. The bond between both of them was way higher than Gustav realized and he honestly couldn't imagine how things would have gone if Miss Amy never found a way to return or if he never found her. Miss Amy had become so important in his life that she was no less than family to him just like Boss Danzo was. They really loved him the way family never was able to and he couldn't t deny the fact that he loved them as well despite portraying the non-emotional expression most times. Gustav stared at the sky for a few more minutes after Miss Amy had gone before heading back into the apartment. It had already been revealed all across the world that the planet initial heading for Earth had stopped in a part of the Milky Way. Not a lot of people on Earth knew Miss Amy but when it was revealed that the planet was created by a mixed blood. The people of Earth were astonished. The mixed bloods. Humans and even Slarkovs were finding it difficult to believe that piece of information. Not only was the mixed blood able to create an entire planet with a little bit of life but also moved the planet from the edge or the Milky Way to another location. It was unheard of and really left people wondering if this was a good or bad thing. A lot of them felt this was good since Earth would have an extra place to stay if anything ever happened to Earth and they also felt since one odd their own was this powerful. Earth would have extra security and protection. Meanwhile some felt it was too much power for one person since she was literally God now. What would happen if she suddenly went crazy? It would be so easy for her to wipe lives off the face of planets. At the very least the government managed to stop the spread of panic and announced that they were in collaboration with the new goddess and she had ensured she would remain a friend to earth and offer help or protection when needed. Miss Amy had done a little video recorded announcement where she addressed the world because she didn't want to be interviewed by any press. She still hated being around people. The whole hype wouldn't be dying down anytime soon as all media outlets were talking about it and it kept trending across social media platforms. It had also been revealed during this time that Miss Amy was the teacher of Gustav and this further boosted the ideology that she would never turn against Earth since Gustav had saved the planet on more than one occasion. A it's been a week now a time to get back to the equipment I was building. A Gustav muttered as he cleared the dining table. A Ish my dimensional bracelet is destroyed a transportation would be a lot more difficult now. A Gustav said with a frustrated tone as he recalled his dimensional bracelet got destroyed by the heatwave. A E L L need to get another level 7 I guess I'd s time to call in a favor. A Gustav muttered as he moved back and forth. The dimensional bracelet was a level 7 which was the rarest of all dimensional bracelets on earth. At the Gustav acquired it. Grand Commander Sheehan had mentioned only five were manufactured since the time of its creation since the materials used in creating a level 7 was super rare. Gustav knew he wouldn't be able to get it again if he decided to check any of the MBOS weapon vaults in the different MBO bases. His plan right now was to cash in the favor Grand Commander Sheehan owed him and asked for another level 7 dimensional bracelet. A you really want to use the favor on this? Up the system questioned. AI really need my flexible means of transportation back it has saved my life so many times. Especially since I can a T move as far in an instant. It is a great tool. A Gustav voiced in reply. A not disputing the fact that it is. Ia am saying look for other alternatives to getting it or at least try to see if you can get it to be recreated or something. 
instead of cashing in your favor like this uh, the system explained. A yes I already thought of that but just in case it does not work out e d have to cash in my favor a c. Grand Commander Sheehan would do whatever it takes to get me another one but till then I guess. A Gustav voiced as he took care of the dishes in the kitchen. A I should get back to creating the space equipment in the meantime. A after tidying up the entire place. Gustav decided to leave. This part of the city was quite secluded from the open parts of the city to make sure Miss Amy enjoyed her stay here without disturbance from anyone. Now that she had left Gustav would have to relay this to the higher ups since they still thought she was on earth. A A. Minutes later Gustav was back in his room and proceeded to open the spatial room where he kept the sacred jewel before leaving earth the other time. Chapter 1046 work continues. Authora S note. Unedited chapter. A a a a a a a a good boy. You have a done well. A Gustav voiced as the he rubbed the shiny surface of the jewel after it floated towards him. A yeah you really would have been a great help if I took you with me but it was an impromptu mission at least I am back in one piece. A Gustav kept rubbing its shiny surface like it was a pet while voicing out. This was because the sentience within the sacred jewel was growing stronger as the light within its translucent circular frame kept getting bigger. This was why communication between both of them was better even though the sacred jewel could not speak. Gustav could understand it quite well and it could understand him as well. AI have something for you. A Gustav voiced as he snapped his fingers. Zing, 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 zing. Multiple whitish glowing orbs appeared all around Gustav in the next instant. They exuded so much energy. The space was slightly affected due to that. The light within the sacred jewel began to blink repeatedly as it spotted the glowing white orbs. From the looks of things, it was excited. A go on. Enjoy the meal. A Gustav said while tapping it a few more times. The sacred jewel proceeded to fly towards one of the orbs and began to absorb the energy within. These orbs were filled with the energy Gustav had absorbed during the expansion of the cracks in space. The sacred jewel was only compatible with some types of energy and this type of energy happened to be amongst the energy it could consume. It would only get stronger the more it devoured energy so Gustav made sure to feed it when he acquired energy that suited its taste and luckily these ones did. Gustav proceeded to move towards the equipment they were building so he could continue from where the sacred jewel had stopped. A. Time passed by very quickly and the next day arrived. Gustav wanted to remain in this space for all time till he was done with what he was working on but the gang was arriving today. E. E. Ildris. Angie. Elevora. Glade. Falco. Vera. Rhea. Timi and Matilda were all arriving back at the second base. Gustav would have to go over there eventually. Especially when he had not even set eyes on E. E. Angie and the others for months. Luckily Falco and the rest who went on the Genzotus raid mission were also done on their side. It would have taken longer but as soon as the group was notified of the Mboa's arrival in the city a lot of them fled. The MBO officers sent there were still able to get some of the Genzotus members so the mission was not a total bust but with the information they had acquired so far. Things were gonna get even more difficult in the future. Endrick had gone on a solo mission two days back and probably would not be arriving back within two weeks to a month time. His situation was similar to Gustava S. The higher ups had seen his stats and knew what he was capable of so they did not hesitate to send him on missions higher than a normal new MBO officer could handle. A Ida S been a while since I visited my house a so maybe I should take them there. A Gustav voiced out loud. Gustav had gotten a very large mansion from the world government back then when he saved the earth from Young Joe Clutches. This house was located in another city because Gustav did not want it to be anywhere close to Plankton City. If that happened, the world would know where he lived and he knew staying in his house privately would be impossible. There would always be paparazzis or tons of fans at his doorstep each day which would be a major turn off for him. Gustava S. House was located in another city close to one of the largest deserts in the world. He knew this way. He would have privacy and since he would not go there every time it would be very difficult for him to get spotted by anyone. AI should probably get a private aircraft too. 
A Gustav voiced as he moved out of the space. He didn't t know if he was rich enough to buy that because he hadn't t checked his account balance in a long time. All this time the MBO had been providing everything he needed and he didn't t need much. Gustav took out his device at this point and checked his bank account balance. A those are a lot of zeros. A Gustav muttered with a surprised expression. A 427 million rads. Uh, the system voiced in his head. A yeah it's more than I expected. Last time I checked it was less than 50 million. A Gustav voiced out but then he realized it was normal for him to have this much. Not only did he have his crimson hunting agency that had now expanded to other cities he also had a business collaboration with one of the richest in the city. Sir Gon. As so money was streaming in from more than one source. Besides this. The pay for being a major ranked MBO officer was not little so he did have multiple streams of income. A Dom. Ia am really a multi-millionaire. A Gustav said with a tone of realization internally. This made Gustav remember when he wanted money so much back then and now that he had it. He was not spending much. AI should really take a day off to spend as much money as possible. A Gustav knew just how much he usually got busy with one issue or the other so he knew he needed to take a vacation sooner or later. He realized his life had gotten too serious to the point he was not having enough fun despite having all these much benefits. A but the Ria s the equipment I have to build. Investigate more on the planetary displacement. IYSOP. The Rhea S. The items I have to join Endrick in recovering a. Chapter 1047 Reunion. AA help Matilda find that princess and who knows how many more issues Ia D encounter along the linea A. Gustav was incapable of having an headache anymore but he felt he would be if he was human. The list of things he had to do was choking and he realized this was why he might never have the time to enjoy the wealth he had gathered. A I agree Ida S A long list of what will you do? Uh, the system questioned. Uh, even if there is no time I still need to find a way to create time a one of these days E L L have a vacation. Problems are unending so if I keep pushing my time to relax backwards it will never happen A Gustav voiced out in response. A but for now. E L L still have to push it backwards. A he added before walking out of the room. Gustav was heading to the second base at this point. The dimensional bracelet would have made everything way faster but now he had to use an MBO aircraft. AI need to get another one as soon as possible. A Gustav said internally. He decided he would talk to the Grand General at the second base when he got there. A. Two hours later Gustav touched down on the second base and proceeded to head to the house that was usually reserved for him and Miss Amy. While approaching he gathered a lot of attention as usual from the officers in the vicinity and many of them greeted him with respect. Closing in on the house. Gustav could already hear the voices of everyone within. He chuckled a bit as he approached the door. A looks like everyone ya s in. A. Seishish. The front door slid open as he arrived before it. A Gustav. A. A Gus. A. A yo Gus you sure took your sweet time he he. A. Uh, the major is back. A. Hey. They all yelled out from within as they spotted Gustav. A hey, hey guys. A a smile appeared on Gustava's face as he walked in. Angie who was seated on the left side of the living room suddenly jumped to her feet and arrived in front of Gustav before anyone else could. Gustava's found himself in the warm and soft embrace of a feminine body. Anya's sweet smelling fragrance drifted into his nostrils as she latched onto his upper body with her legs wrapped around his spine area. His face buried into her chest and her arms wrapped around the back of his head. Both of them were embroiled in a passionate hug right in front of everyone. A cough cough explicit display detected. A E. E voiced from behind with a slight cough causing Matilda to pinch him. A ouch. Come on now. A E. He mumbled with an unjustified look. A you are re ruining the mood. A Matilda said with a slight chuckle. A Anya A Gustav voiced out as she slowly released her grip from his head. Her face had turned beet red at this point as she did not think she was capable of doing such in front of everyone. Her body had reacted before she could think. She let go of Gustav and dropped down quickly before speaking. A welcome back. A she said with a cute and shy tone. A can we welcome him like that too? 
A.E. He questioned with a look of delight. A.E.L.L. cut it off if you do. A. Angie voiced out with a threatening tone while adopting a face full of smiles. A. Cut what off? A. E. A. S. face shone a dreadful look as he inquired. A. Try it and find out. A. Ang S. lips curved upwards even more as she stated. A. He he I don't a t think I wanna find out. A. E. E. response caused everyone to burst out with laughter as the atmosphere turned even merrier than it already was. Ildris moved over to give Gustav a fist bump as well as a hug and so did E. E as well. Vera moved towards Gustav and gave him a long hug too like they didn't tea just see each other about a week ago. Gustav thought nothing of it as he proceeded to take a sit and started catching up with E. E. Ildris and the others. The gang was back together now and how they would move progress from here was totally up to Gustav. They went on to catch up on everything that had happened so far. The mission out of the planet and what had happened on Earth while the others were away. E. E on the others were told about the planet and how it ended up being Miss Imia S. Everyone was very astonished and couldn't a imagine how powerful she was now. They found out Gustav was with Miss Amy for days and asked him to tell them how everything went with her. Gustav had to narrate a lot as well as Ildris. E. E and the others because their off-planet mission sounded exciting to everyone. A lot of officers were interested in off-planet missions for so many reasons. It was also later revealed that Angie killed a person in the last mission to save Ildris. This revelation shocked the rest of the group as they never expected she would cross that line soon enough. Being in the MVO. Murder was inevitable but everyone here knew how Angie would always hesitate when it came to taking that step. While it was inevitable that she would eventually have to kill someone. They thought it would still take longer than this. A is she okay? A Gustav wondered internally as he glanced in her direction. Angie looked absolutely fine but Gustav was still a bit disturbed and feared that she might not be completely fine internally. A probably just hiding how she truly feels but she ll eventually get over it. There will still be way more deaths by her hand in the future. A the system responded internally. Ahem I guess so A for Gustav he never really felt bad about his first kill because to him it was warranted. It was not only a mistake but it was also initiated by the second party who had bullied him for years and made him nearly commit suicide so he felt no form of pity at the time. Chapter 1048 Spend Time With You Authora S Note Unedited Chapters A A A A A A A A A he also felt every other death by his hands after that was very much necessary as well since they were evil beings. The problem with Anya S situation was the fact that the person she killed was another officer Woe's mind had been taken over by one of the aliens. Not only was this person supposedly on their side, it was possible for them to be freed from the hold of the alien. Besides this Angie was someone who was not so open to hurting others so killing this person out of circumstance to save Ildris might have caused for internal issues for her. These factors put together made Gustav a bit worried and he decided he would speak to her later. The gang spent hours chatting and Gustav eventually moved to the kitchen to prepare a meal for everyone. Some of them joined to assist but Gustav did not allow them to do much because he did not want the flavor of any food he cooked having a different taste than he intended. A. Time went by very quickly and before they knew it. Midnight had arrived. The house had more than 10 rooms so everyone could pick their sleeping space without any issues. They had spent the entire day catching up with each other and telling some interesting stories so it was finally time to sleep. Everyone besides Gustav was just returning from a mission so they really needed to rest. A all right bud. Till next morning. A. A yeah guys later. A. They fist bumped each other before heading to their rooms one after the other. Gustav proceeded to head to his room as well and sat on his bed. He still had work to do with the equipment he was building so he was thinking of opening the spatial construct so he could continue it in the middle of the night or he would channel his bloodline. He was currently at the third step of the Echo rank and everyone else was either at the first or peak of Falcon rank. Endric and Elevora were the only ones whose rank were close to Gustava S. Endric was ranked in the seventh place when they were still in the MBO camp but no one was actually aware of how strong he truly was. 
Endrick never tried to challenge the cadets above him on the ranking and only battled openly when others below challenged. He never showed his true prowess yet he always won against the challengers. After meeting him the last time Gustav felt Endrika's strength was most likely amongst top three in their group and did not doubt that it rivaled that of Elevora's. It would be foolish to underestimate someone who does not show his full prowess because Gustav knew very well of how enemies that underestimated his strength in the past met their end. Gustav moved towards the bed and sat on it. He was thinking of going into a few months of seclusion to properly Chanel his bloodline so he could get to the peak of the fourth step before IYSOP began. However he decided he would only do this after creating the device he was currently working on. Calm. 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 While Gustav was in his world of thoughts. He heard the sound of soft knocks on his door. Ayo. A he muttered as he realized who was knocking. Gustav stood to his feet and went on to open his room door. A Angie. A. A Gustav. A. They both voiced with tones as they stared in each other's eyes. A can I come in? A she questioned after a brief silence. A sure. A Gustav moved to the side to let her in. After closing his door. They both moved towards his bedside and sat on it. A it's late. You should be asleep by now. A Gustav voiced out. A pass. ELL do that lotter A Angie responded while moving closer to him. A what I want to do now Isa A her face closed in on his till her two little horns made contact with his forehead. A spend time with you A as she finished saying this she locked lips with Gustav. Gustav slightly parted his lips and proceeded to passionately suck on Anya's lips as well. She reached out and wrapped her hand around his neck as she pulled his body closer to hers. Gustav hands moved towards her waist and he proceeded to rub his fingers across her slim waist down to her butt area. Angie pushed her body on his and Gustav fell on his back as they kept kissing each other passionately. The low sound of lips locking kept ringing out in the room continuously for more than five minutes. Angie was currently in a tight khaki shorts and blue tank top so her smooth back was currently on display. This gave Gustav the chance to trail his fingers across them as they kissed each other. He proceeded to move further downwards and grabbed Anya's butt. He could not understand why but at this time he felt they were bigger than he remembered. Gustav began undressing Angie from her shorts. To her tank to and she helped in pulling off Gustava's singlet as well. Revealing his broad chest and well chiseled body. They stared at each other for a bit with looks of desire and fascination before locking lips once more. In the process of beginning another passionate round of kisses. Gustav unhooked her bra, freeing her medium-sized boobs and causing them to press onto his chest. He pushed her onto the bed once more and grabbed them with both his hands before proceeding to feast on them. Gustav placed one of her nipples in between his lips and started sucking on them. He would occasionally switch and then swirl his tongue around them causing Angie to moan in pleasure. She could feel her nether regions getting flooded as Gustav continued to leave trail of kisses and sucking across her entire upper body. At this point, Gustava's member was raging hard and kept poking Anya's lower belly region.